Oh my god, it's been so long, but here is Bookwalker. Very excited to pick it up again. It's been a very long time, I know, but it always stuck in the back of my head. Like, I wanted to know more about this game. I wanted to see more. The world that they built um, and what I've seen so far is so interesting. I gotta play more. So here we are. Hmm. What's that? Factory wasn't here yet back when they put up our building. Yeah. So much review, huh? Um, the suitcase, if you remember from the first episode, it's been a while, is holding currently the item that we needed to steal from the book, and a courier should be waiting here for us so we can hand it over. Put the briefcase in the doorway. Do not step outside the door. All right. Here you go. Is it? I'm gonna. Yes! Mystery man! Oh, here's your payment. We will be in touch. Thank you. I need to go get some sleep now. I'm exhausted. Oh, I thought the dude said that. It's like, I did all the work. Oh, phone call! Hey, we have mail. Close the door. <laughs> Hello? What did you deliver to me? The potion of immortality, just like you ordered. No, this is half the potion of immortality. And it's in an old soda bottle to boot. I just thought... But it's still the potion though, right? I just wanted to make sure the alchemist could... You're fired. Damn. Well, so much for doing that. What's this letter here? Was this here before? Mr. Etienne Christ. This is a reminder that you may begin working off your sentence at any time by registering with a licensed publishing agency. In the event your work uh, in the event you work off the full sentence, you will be released from the shackles imposing writer's block. Oh yeah, we have re uh, read that. So since we're tired, should I, oh, what's that? A pencil. Should we just go to bed? To another day. Oh, hey, the lantern. Mm -hmm. You can live here for now, partner. Oh, tasty. And now this is where I should have ended the episode, but oh well. I feel like I didn't get enough sleep. Isn't that just everyday life? Sorry. I have like a really annoying... I know I shouldn't. I shouldn't chew on my fingies. I know it's a problem. Okay. Do you think they're so desperate they're... Oh yeah. Giving us a new job. I jotted down a few ideas for my skills. Ah, cool. Shield, absorb damage. Okay. Nice. Two damage shield for one turn. So it shields me from two damage, or does it do two damage in return if someone tries to attack my shield? That's enough for today. I'll try again another day. Oh. Hello. Oh, you finally... Mr. Quist? Etienne Quist? Yes. I'm calling from the writer's police department. <gasps> this is a scheduled call. Oh, okay. Have you selected the publish publishing agency where you will serve your sentence? Not yet. I'm still deciding. You do plan to begin working off your sentence, right, Mr. Quist? Yes, of course. I just wanted to take a little break before. We urge you to choose a publisher quickly. We also recommend Morak as the most suitable publisher for you. Sure, of course. You have the opportunity to shorten your sentence to 28 years if you can prove yourself to the management. Have you associated with any other writers since your arrest? No. Very well. One last question. Have you engaged in any illegal activity in the past month? Of course not. Noted. Do you confirm that your responses have been truthful? Yes. Thank you for your time. Oh, I feel so bad lying. Goodbye. Bye. New book announcement. Andre Duval wanted to live a quiet life. 
get a good job. Jeez, so mm -hmm. can I read the paper or what? Mm. Hello? Hi, Rich. Can you take another order? Oh, it's you. Another order? I'm ready. Ah, you're not rich. Sorry, wrong number. <laughs> Andre Duval wanted to... Hmm. I want to read. You know, it's not a big one, so I guess I can give you one more chance. Thank you. Besides, I haven't been able to get in touch with my most incompetent walker. You'll make a good replacement for him. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Your order's at your door. Okay. S stop! Andre Duval wanted to live a quiet life. Start a family, build a small house in the suburbs. We're good? But suddenly, he finds himself involved in a deadly game of survival staged by aliens, and the prize for winning is no less than the elixir of immortality! A brilliant novel full of live action that literally spills off the pages right into the reader's face! Stella Quinn. So does that mean that someone used the elixir of immortality that I stole from a different book? So they stole the idea, right? And then mm -hmm. used it for a different book. Mm. Which one is the... Etienne, please ensure you are at home tomorrow from 8 until 8. The furniture you ordered will be arriving door to door. The order has been paid in for in full. Mr. Quist, I'm writing this letter to express how deeply grateful I am for your books. In all of modern li literature, I never thought I'd find such interesting, truly lifelike characters with unique flaws and virtues. But in your novel, I don't even have the words to describe what it makes me think. I just give it to all my friends and insist, no, demand, that they read it. The world of books is truly worse off without you, and I hope the misadventures you're experiencing won't dull your desire to write. Our whole little book club is waiting expectantly for new works from you. Sincerely, gratefully, and with love, Edna Rabier. But... I guess my sentence isn't public knowledge. Because if I have writer's block for 28 years at the minimum... Honey, you're gonna wait a long time for my book. What are we doing this time? Strange note. The contractor agrees to infiltrate the spark of a hammer by Torben Zakinski and extract an item, the Hammer of Thor! The client agrees to pay the negotiated sum upon fulfillment of the contract. Oh god, we're gonna steal Thor's hammer? Solid work even though it seemed like it would have the imprint of a pure publishing project. What else would you expect from a heap of myths wrapped up in a sparkling coat of a new look? I confess, I couldn't even have imagined that some bright mind would be able to pick out even a shred of relevance from such ancient material. Ah, here we go! New book! Yes! So excited to play again. Oh my god. <gasps> Ooh, snowy road. Oof. Damn, sure is icy here. You there, Roderick? Oh, you there, Roderick? Yeah. Listen, about the alchemist from the last book. No, don't worry, I get it. You writers never pull your punches when it comes to characters. That's not it. It's hard to explain. I wanted to apologize. It was rude of me. Rude isn't quite the word I would have used. Oh, stop it. That's The alchemist was a literal murderer. All right, let's agree that we won't hurt any more characters. None at all. Right. Deal. What are we doing in this book anyways? I need to find a hammer belonging to someone named Thor. Thor? Yeah, some kind of special hammer, I guess. Hopefully we'll learn more soon. Then let's get going. Who this robot? A strange sight catches your eye. A robot hanging from a tree with a noose around its neck. The robot's limb creaks slightly as they sway in the wind. Hmm. Tilts its head to the side. If you think about it, why would someone hang a robot? It's not... Oh! Hello! What the... Hi there, robot. Correct! I am a robot! My name is Modi. Can you confirm that you are a human? Well, for the most part, yeah. 
Sensor accuracy increased to 89%. Thank you, human. What are you doing in the tree? I'm hanging. <laughs> you laugh and look at the robot. There's an awkward silence. I mean, how did you get in the tree? I was installed in this spot by several humans. I am 74% certain they were mad and on their way to destroy the power plant. Ooh, that's not good. Do you need help? You point at the rope around its neck. Thank you, human, but I will be perfectly fine. Are you sure? When you first walked over, you were hanging there unconscious. Oh, with 27% certainty, I detect care in your voice. Is he saying you're only 27% caring? <laughs> Don't worry, I put myself in sleep mode to save battery. Do you think I can find a new battery somewhere? That's 100% care. <laughs> the robot tilts its head to the side and blinks. The human continues to demonstrate care, 16% this time. Don't worry, I'm operating on a fresh battery and it should last a while. Also, I can find more at the power plant once I regain freedom of movement. Hmm. There's a power plant near here, right? That's right. Just up the road, you'll find my workplace, Thor Power Plant. Fantastic. Have you heard anything about them having a hammer? The hammer of Thor! Just this morning I checked that it was intact, like I do every morning. How is it? Your eyes dart from side to side and you rub, you rub your hands together. It's 100% intact. Well then, let's head for the power plant. Are you alive? Modi is unable to answer this question, selecting standard introduction. I am Modi, a robot, model SASGD6, produced on special order at the Sindri and Brocker, Sindri, Brocker Group Factory. I am pleased to serve you. Okay. How about I take you down from there, Modi? I wouldn't mind that, but I also wouldn't want to be a bother. Take you down. To be honest, I have no idea how to get you down from there, but I'll just... You look at the robot, and then at the branch, then at the rope. A knife, a ladder, a truck, and a hacksaw will be useful, but all you have is your own two hands. Hang on the robot. Uh, I feel like I would hurt myself. And maybe the robot. What are you planning? You approach the rope, connecting the robot to the tree and carefully touch it. The ink seeps into the rope. Several fibers change color and start to fray. I don't have the strength for the whole rope, but a few fibers should be enough. Human, I don't understand what you're... A loud crack and a crashing noise drown out the robot's mechanical babbling. Oh, where'd that kitty come from? As though nothing happened, the robot starts petting a cat that has jumped out from a nearby bush. It doesn't seem to care about anything else. <laughs> I'm the robot. <laughs> Are you okay, Modi? No damage? Thank you, human. I'm fine. Now I, too, am performing care. Stray cat purrs contentedly under the robot's hand. <laughs> Billboard banner says, Thor's batteries will keep your fridge charged for three whole days. Okay, inventory's back to empty. I don't know why it has the... It has an exclamation mark on it, but I don't really know why. Um, okay, so the factory's just up ahead. Let's go have a look. Or power plant, panel, lever, anything else? It says bench. Do not remove battery if bench is occupied. There's an empty battery compartment under the label. Where do we get a battery? Well, you know. What do you mean I know? Where? From the robot. Is it battery operated too? Yep. You said we weren't doing any more killing. We're not killing it, we're just turning it off temporarily. Hmm. What about this panel? A metal panel labeled power plant. There are two battery compartments. There's a label at the top, power plant. Below that is some text. Activates and deactivates the power plant's anti-avalanche defenses. Lever is locked and doesn't budge. Okay. For now, okay, I can't go off the path don't see anything else here to interact with. So let's go south first. Maybe we don't have to steal. The robot's so busy. Well, we don't need to go there. Why is that? I want to see what's down the road. The book says, further down the road was the town that the angry mob came from. A town sounds perfect. Somewhere to explore and I bet it's not that damn cold here. Not 
that cold there. You shiver as a weak gust of wind blows across your back. No, I mean, what I just read is the entire description of the town. Oh, so the author didn't write it. Right. We can't go to a place that doesn't have a detailed description in the book. Fine, let's head north then. Hmm. Too bad, so there's literally no other way. We have to get it from the robot. The robot is petting the cat as though nothing happened. So we can't get inside the power plant without the robot's battery? I don't see any other way in the book. Besides, it's not murder. We're just turning it off for a little while. Then we'll turn him back on, right? Yeah. I promise. Then that's that. Just turn me around, okay? I don't want to watch. Fine. <laughs> You look at the robot. The battery hatch on its back is easy to find because it's glowing and has a huge handle. The co cover comes off surprisingly easy. Does the human want to perform care and change my battery? Don't worry. I'm at 81% certain that I will manage to reach the power station and charge it myself. I just want to spend some time with this wonderful cat. The cat meows happily. You touch the battery. It's firmly seated in its socket. Please be careful with my battery. If it comes out, I'll plunge into eternal darkness. I really don't want to plunge into eternal darkness. <sighs> this is actually really hard for me. Can it be? You're starting to actually feel something for these characters. But without batteries, we can't. Modi turns to look you in the eye, still petting the cat. You shut your eyes and s sharply yank out the battery. Ah! Why? Why? Modi's eyes go dark. The battery is yours to do with as you wish. The cat under the robot's frozen hand also pauses, then starts to sniff at it. My god, let's get out of here. No more murders. No, the kitty's just standing there. No. Okay. Put the battery in. Does the plus sign go on top or bottom? I can never rem remember. Isn't it different for every little thing? I would say plus on top. Nothing happened. Then plus bottom. <laughs> oh, hello. Whoa, what? Frozen man in a briefcase. You see an unmoving man covered in a layer of frost. I think he's already... I see that. With some difficulty, you open the man's frozen coat and take his wallet out of the coat's inner pocket. Business card? Edward Rodingsgard, Chief Inspector, Specialization, Industrial Real Estate. He kind of looks like you in the photo. A little bit. Hey, wait, you don't know what I look like. That was a joke. <laughs> a small wad of bills with a few crumpled discount coupons tucked between them. Are you not going to take the money? It's not like he needs it. If you're trying to test my morals, no, I'm not going to take his money. Can't use it in the real world. I know, I know. The notes would just dissolve like everything else that comes out of the book. That's not the only reason. They say pounds instead of pound, pound, pounds instead of pounds. There's a law that says all author, authors have to write them like that in their books now. So that it means there must be some way to take them out of the book. You shrug. Interesting. It's like copyright. <laughs> A lonely, worn-out briefcase sits by its owner's frozen right hand. The briefcase has a combination lock on either side of the handle. Are we gonna... Bang. The lock pops apart when you slam them against your knee and you open the briefcase wide. Okay then, anything interesting in there? A strange box. Thor Power Plant logo on it. The box has words on it. Sale. Buy 10 batteries and get one free. Free battery cannot be resold. <sighs> Get a free battery. What's a sale? You open the box and take out a battery. Don't worry about it. You start rifling through the frozen traveler's papers. Bunch of bureaucratic nonsense. Looks like reports, inquiries. The Commonwealth of Nine Countries will review the situation concerning Thor and Jorman, Jorman Gander individually. Thor and who? Reading face press close to the text, Jorman Gander. Who's that? Thought you, I thought you were the one with access to the book's text. Do, do you not know? It's not easy to search for the entire text for one single word. Let's see, what else? 
President Odin has ruled that blah blah blah. Read it carefully, there might be something important in there. Oh, here we go. As Chief Inspector, you will need to visit the now defunct power plant to assess it, it and draw up a deed of sale. So it closed down. We have a potential buyer. The German Gander Group will send a representative over soon to sign the sale and purchase agreement. Some kind of local bureaucracy, I guess. Anyway, I'm about to freeze to death standing out here. Let's get going. Okay. Uh, so take the battery out again. Do not remove battery if bench, bench is occupied. Take it. Clunk. Bye, bench. Uh, now let's put in two of the batteries. Think it's working. Finally. The light on the lever turns green. Let's try it. Whoa. Whoa. What? Thor's power station. Damn, that's cool. Can I take the batteries out? Doesn't budge. Looks like the locking me mechanism is tied to the position. Too bad. Oh, so many robots. Broken robots. Take them. Nothing on them. Damaged robot. Can that one still talk? What the happened here? Someone really had a grudge against robots. And that, let me guess, that was the door leading to the hammer? We'll have to find the back door. Check out that one. Robot with an axe sticking out of its head. Well, it looks like a hammer to me. Do you think it's, you know... Get close and take a look. As you get closer, you see that the axe is deep enough in the robot's head that it also went through its body. There's no battery in this one. We could have used it since everything in this book seems to be battery operated. Someone sure went to town here. We look at the robot's back to read the tag on its neck. This one was Thrud. If you find an extra battery, I think you should wake this one up. Maybe I can tell us something. There must be a battery around somewhere. This one was Uller. Uller is beyond our help, but it looks like something's inside. Battery, running on emergency power. Not bad. Yeah, check them all. Keep going. Oh, that's down here. Check these. Robots are completely destroyed. No hope for fixing them. Entrance to the power plant is blocked. Okay. Take all of those. Um, junk. Contains ink. Right. Okay, so we can either go left or right. Let's go left first. Ooh, okay. We need two more batteries. There is a tightly closed crate laying in the snow. Break it open. Okay. I need a crowbar. Christine's snowy landscape is interrupted by two metal legs sticking out of the snowbank. Another robot. That means another battery, which wouldn't hurt to have. Just do it quickly. All right, cold, quick, unfeeling work. That's right. Start digging into the snow. Snow is resistant and your hands rapidly start to freeze. Damn, snow's too frozen. I need a shovel. You gonna ask your neighbor again? You look around, not a soul in sight. Well, there's no one else to ask. Okay. I'll wait here for you. I'll be quick. Who would have a shovel? You would think you could spend a little bit of money to have some basic tools in your house, seeing as you do these kind of adventures. This is the guy who helped us last time, right? Who's there? It's me again. What's that? Speak up. It's Etienne, your neighbor! Ah, yes. Did you bring back my sledgehammer? Do you know what happened to the downstairs neighbor? Your downstairs neighbor, there were strange noises coming from his apartment last night. Downstairs? I don't know anyone downstairs. No one's lived there for a hundred years. Do you have a snow shovel? Snow shovel? It's summer. 
Also, where's my sledgehammer? I'll get it back to you soon. I'm still struggling with that nail. Right now, I really need a shovel. Ugh, damn you. There's a shovel in the building storage room downstairs. Get it yourself. Thanks a lot. I'll still be waiting for my sledgehammer. I'll bring it back this week, I promise. <laughs> oh god, I would hate to borrow. If I borrowed something from someone and then broke it, I... I would definitely just buy them a new one immediately. Oh, that's a rusty, a rusty shovel. Hopefully it'll do the trick. What's in here? Need a key. A mystery, I see. Ho ho ho. Okay, let's not bother any more people. We're already hated around here. I got the shovel, let's go. Back into the book. Okay. Let's try to dig. You brandished a shovel like a knight's sword. Okay, then get cracking before it snows again. Shovel bites deeply into the snow. You made good progress. The robot you dug out seems to be asleep. All you hear is quiet mumbling coming from it. Listen. Once I finish working, I can play. I'm 15% sure, certain that I can build the perfect snowman. Magni will be so jealous. Uh, I don't want to go to sleep. I'm sorry. I built a snowman. Um, so we have one full battery and one on emergency power this needs two i'm guessing but i'm gonna go check the other side first just in case i need more batteries or whatever we could power up the the robot in the center but it feels like a waste of battery there's a factory crate sticking out of the frozen snow dig it out with a shovel Start shoveling the snow away from the crate and knocking chunks of ice off it. Ooh, coins! Pieces of metal. Nice. Is this a workbench? Can we make a crowbar? Yes! Okay, I need two more crowbar parts and then we can do that. We can extract from this. 69. Nice. Got that. And what is this? Panel with three battery slots. Back door to the facility. That's right. I'm assuming this panel lowers this part of the power plant. Okay. What is this here? Can we get in this vehicle? An enormous car is sunk into the snow. Right underneath it is a blue puddle. Someone's gonna have a rough time fixing this. It's a good thing we don't need to drive it anywhere. Well, actually... Oh, come on! Look over there. One of the robots drove off. I just found it in the text. And a robot means a spare battery. Damn. It wouldn't take an expert to see that there's no way this car will run right now. It's leaking some kind of blue liquid and the leak needs to be stopped. Any ideas? One of the transmission valves is shot. Does that tell you anything? Okay, so... Hmm, the valve. That means... Roderick's cage vibrates impatiently. All right, I have no idea what that means. <laughs> then we need to go under the car and check. Your coat is gonna get dirty, but there's no other choice. With a grunt, you lie down on your back and use your feet to push yourself underneath. The hole should be here somewhere. You see at least a dozen thick tubes. They're all covered in a thick layer of dirt and oil residue. I see a bunch of tubes. Okay, feel around and find the one that's broken. Are you serious? That's gonna take... Oh, there's something written here. Words are messily scratched onto the bottom of the car. Deal with your own crap yourself, Thor. How controversial. Too aggressive for the robots. It was a human. It says his name was Thialfi. Okay, how are we gonna do the car? 
I think we... Yeah, we can make a car repair kit. Let's see what we need for that. Hmm. Nothing here. Maybe we can just find one. But it looks like we can't go off screen here. So we're gonna have to take that elevator. Okay. Kinda wanna talk to them. Let's see what happened. Ninety-five percent certainty. Launching countermeasure program. The robot turns to you, its robotic hands open and close threateningly. Damn, I guess that axe really damaged it. Be careful. Pretend to be a robot. Remember the robot's name. Thrud, that's your name, right? That's right, I'm Thrud. Worker robot at Thor Station. How about we just calm down and talk a little bit, okay? After all, I brought you back to life. I will no longer believe the human. My only response is retaliation. It's gonna attack! Ooh. Okay. How about I stun it first? It, although I want to drain it. Did he hit me? I, I think he. Oh, he's about to hit. Two, three damage. So we hit each other. Ooh, hurt me for two. Sweet, I did three damage. The robot falls heavily into the snow. Urgent repairs needed. Fortunately, the battery survived the fight. Ooh, and I got the parts I need. Oh, let's go, crowbar time. I think I can refill this, and I should have some healing items on. No, I have nothing on me. Never mind. Okay, craft that crowbar. Extract. How do I get this? I think I just need to find like apples and stuff. Um, but now we do have a crowbar. I think it was the box here. Break it open. You hook the crowbar into the lid and break the lock. Nice. Tools and burnt papers. The label on the panel says storage. No time for words. <laughs> there we go. Panel buzzes and lights up. Cool. Now let's do that. Wow! I thought it was gonna be a little elevator. I guess I'm not going down, I just brought everything up. <laughs> Cool! Oh my god, so cool. Broken panel. Unpowered robot. Let's not wake him up just yet, but maybe he has something. In the corner of the room you see an unresponsive robot covered in a layer of frost. Nothing in the battery hatch. Hey look, there's something in its hand. The robot, robot's one intact hand is clutching to a piece of paper. You pry apart the metal fingers and unfold it. Is this a map? It shows part of the factory. There's even an X marked. Looks like we found a treasure map. What kind of treasure could robots possibly have? Batteries. Put the paper in your pocket. Can I... Examine it? No. Old photo of some section of the factory. Oh, I see a fence and a panel. One snowbank is marked with a red X. Hmm. Maybe we can dig in the snow. Panel needs a battery to power it. Oh, we're out of batteries now, aren't we? Let's check that toolbox. Of course, locked. I'm so goddamn tired of this. Everything's always locked. That's it. Take a deep breath. <sighs> no, I'm not gonna going off looking for lockpicks again. I've had enough. Oh, you do it anyway. The shackles around your wrists give off burning coldness. Ah! Don't you think you're using ink a little too often? 
Isn't it dangerous to control someone else's book? What was that? I didn't expect one drop of, drop of ink to cause so much resonance. You're risking rejection if you keep that up, and then we'd be... I'm sure it was just a coincidence. You open the toolbox and take out a repair kit. You move the box off the table. This is a solid table. We could put together something useful here. Okay, there's nothing else here. Oh, right. That's it. I need to find an empty bottle before I can actually... Okay. So we have two pieces of metal here. Three needed here. So we need one more. We need to find a rag. Empty bottles. But now... We do have a toolkit. So that might be what we need for the car. Okay, that one's broken and the battery won't help. Cliff. Hold on. What? Don't you think we should take the battery from the panel? Oh, yeah. Yeah, you're right. It's probably... Yeah. I need to do this. Bye, building! <laughs> See you later. Take out both. Clunk, clunk. Cool. Okay. Oh, robot meeting. Where'd you guys come from? Two robots are studying the robot with the axe in its head. Analyzing incident. My verdict? Killed. Treacherously. With an axe. Affirmative. Find the guilty and inflict punishment. The robots notice you. Excuse me, but do you have any idea what happened here? I was just passing through. Probability that human is lying 54%. 32. You may pass. Thanks. Okay, let's see if we can find maybe the stuff from the treasure map. Hmm. I was thinking maybe it was here, yeah. Nothing here. Dig it up. An eternity later, your shovel clangs and hits metal. Open it! Ooh, coins, mushrooms, and chalk. Chalk, coins, and a mushroom? Looks like the kind of treasure a kid would hide. Even robots must have things that are precious to them. I'm sure you're right. Okay, let's go. There's nothing more for us here. Some treasure that was. Man. Hmm. Oh, these are... I can extract these. Oh, at least I found it. Let me just go here. See if I can fix the car now. That one needed three. Yeah, two batteries. Okay. We can extract some of this. Um, look at the car. Use the repair kit. Yeah! Get ready to get your hands dirty. Fine. So you said I have to feel around all the tubes? An hour later. Overall, it was much easier than you expected. That was horrible. I hope I never have to work on a car again. At least it was informative. Oh, robots. Two unpowered robots in the back of the car. Examine them. You lean one of the robots forward away from the seat and look at the battery hatch, but it's empty. All you see is a cable leading from the robot to the car's control panel. Oh, do the robots drive it? Mm, yes, apples. Ooh, empty bottle. Rags! Great resources. The control panel is covered in a light layer of frost. Do you know how to drive? You remember the crash you were in with the alchemist. Roderick unfortunately thought you did it on purpose. <laughs> Examine the glove box. 
small booklet. Tangrisnir military off-road vehicle operating instructions. Military? You continue to study the cover. Below the title, you notice a small logo and the words Approved for use by the Minister Wartir Wotansson. I guess this is no toy. Maybe we shouldn't mess with it. There's a stamp on the back. Decommissioned from service. Looks like it's being used for other purposes now. Phew. But we should still be careful, just in case it still launches rockets. Open the charging port cover. You see two standard battery slots under the port cover. Hmm. I'm gonna buck out first. I wanna like prep my little things before I head out. Craft this bottle and pliers. Sure. Could be handy. You never know. Do I say paper? No. How about we give the robot... Oh, I can't. Okay, let's just put the batteries in then. Uh, put one in. Need another one? Put one in. Panel buzzes and lights up. It's working! You suddenly hear a screeching noise coming from the back. Ah, so they were tied to the car. Hello! Hello! Damn. Who are you two? Modi too. Modi III. Copies of that robot we found hanging in the tree. Either that or Thor wasn't all that creative when it came to names. We're just gonna go for a little ride. We can't allow that. Can't allow that. State the purpose of your use of the vehicle. Uh, there's a sale going on nearby. There is actually, yeah. Access denied. Oh, come on. It was just a joke. Calculating. 0 0.07, 0 0.04. <laughs> Commencing countdown to trespasser elimination. What? 10, 9, hold on! I said I'm going to help a robot. 7, 6. Tell them about Thor. Thor wants me to go see him. Thor? Thor? Yeah, he called me. He looked sideways at Roderick in search of hints. He called me and told me to go see him. Can I take this car? Of course! We are obligated to do anything Thor says. Whew, I'll be on my way then. Have a nice trip! Follow the robot's tracks, take out both. Follow the tracks. Didn't you say you don't really know how to drive? No time like the present to learn! If it's just a straight line, it can't be too bad. Are we there yet? I don't know. We've been driving for half an hour. I'm just following the tracks. How should I know how far it goes? How about you talk to me to pass the time? Me? You still haven't remembered anything about your book? Just a little. I'm remembering living on a busy street. That's not much help. I need more details. Names are ideal. Why do you need details? As soon as you finish all these jobs, I'm gonna try and find your book. Is that even possible? Well, it's unlikely, but I think it's worth a try. In any case, I have to pay you back for all your help somehow. As soon as I get my powers back. Oh, I'll be unstoppable. Watch out! You miraculously avoid a chunk of ice. Whew, that was close. Why don't you tell me more about your books? Well, were they about evil corporations too? Or power plants and robots? No, I didn't focus on the setting much. The characters were more important to me. I want to create characters that feel truly alive. That's my ultimate goal. Oh, that explains it. Explains what? Every character written by someone else is automatically hollow and soulless, right? That's why it's so easy for you to do bad things to them. That's not true. Well, partly. I don't hate them, it's just when I see their lack of depth, it's not realistic. Depth? During a conversation, it's easy to tell if a character is capable of thinking for themselves or if all they can do is recite the lines they're given. What category do I fall under? I think you were written by one of the original authors, and I don't question their work. Which will actually help narrow down the search for your book, since there aren't many work by original authors left. What's an original author? They lived before our time and created the most iconic stories ever known. True masters of the pen. I've even heard they couldn't jump at the books, so I have no idea how they managed to create at all. 
Hmm. But not a single one of them have kept writing after the war. I don't know why. Now we have this new generation of writers where everything is rewritten or reworked. Oh, hold on. I think we're here. See the car over there? Yeah, slow down a little. Just gotta figure out how. Let's take the batteries. Okay, done. So where are we? Hmm, there's the other car. Let's look in the crate first. In front of the frozen car, you see a crate with a steel cable wrapped around it. Hmm, I can cut it with the pliers. Yeah. Woohoo! Can we go inside? Stall vehicle that the robot arrived in. Frozen door. Hmm. So the robot came all this way to make a snowman? The robot raises a hand and waves at you. Snow falls from the clamp at the end of its arm. Wave back. The robot's eyes blink. Hello, human. The leak in the water supply pipe has been fixed. I will return to the power plant soon. However, I have something I need to complete first. An odd-looking snowman made out of two large snowballs. A third smaller snowball is lying at the robot's feet. This is a 73% perfect snowman. I have never achieved such a wonderful results before. Ask about the pipes. Why were you insulating the pipes if there's nothing flowing through them? I was not insulating them. I was fixing a leak. Eventually I will figure out what it was that disabled the heating system. I think it's because the power plant closed down. Leaks probably don't have anything to do with it. Calculating sarcasm. I'm serious. Calculating joke probability. It's not a joke. They closed it down after Thor died. <laughs> Calculating probability of insanity or other ab abnormalities. <laughs> Fine, do whatever you want with your pipes. It appears to be a co perfect copy of Modai again. This nameplate says Magni. Oh, I can't help with the snowman. The robot nods to you, then returns to building the snowman. It bends awkwardly as it carefully pushes the snowball around with its robotic arms, trying to keep it from falling apart. Just make it quick. Maybe we should let it finish building the snowman first? That's what I was thinking. It hurts. The robot freezes, arms extended towards the snowman's head as if hoping to finish it before it plunges into eternal darkness. Finish it. You navigate around the robot as you roll a snowball. Snow is nice and sticky. It only takes five minutes for you to construct a decently round head. Placing it firmly on top of the odd snowman, you use your fingers to add two eyes, a hole for the nose, and a smile. That really is a 73% perfect snowman. <laughs> Can you put the battery back in? No! No, he can't see his result. Robots tools. I guess that's all we're here for. Oh, maybe I should heal, actually. Um, yeah. Good. Mmm. Store is a hundred. I'll wait a little longer for that. I guess there's nothing else to look at here. You guys are still awake, even without the batteries? Go back. I was just here. I'm Etienne. I brought you here on Thor's orders. <laughs> They're getting on my nerves. Autopilot button. Uh -huh! Don't even need the steer. That's good news. I'm gonna take a little nap. Hold on, I thought maybe you could tell me about the original authors. Hey, Chin. Hey! Sleeping already. He's asleep. So are these robots talk to each other paying no attention to you? How come everyone else gets to go outside except us? Why? That's what I'm asking. Why? That's what I'm asking. <laughs> Let's not bother them. Okay. So now we have three batteries. Mm. 
Let's check one more time before we put them in here. Ooh, we could also go to the other side and open those. Ooh, yeah, 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 yeah. Let's do that. Okay, I need two more pieces of metal for the lockpick. Okay. Here we are, and let's see what they have. Let's put a battery in panel number one. Anything good? Two bottles, nice. I think that's it. Panel number two. Panel number three. Come on, come on, come on, come on. A box. On the shelf is a small box with a lock. Oh, I can't break it. I don't think I picked up anything for a lockpick. No. I could have made it if I didn't make the pliers. Well, we'll have to remember that. As soon as we have a lockpick, we'll come back here. I'm glad it moved me, because I didn't think about that. Could have died there. Now, let's get in through the back door. Upper. Middle. Lower. And open sesame. Sweet. Cool. Let's go! Okay, boys, we're in. Conveyor panel. And a regular panel. Looks like this panel is linked to the conveyor belt. Do we need batteries for it? I don't think so. All the lights are on already. I wonder what'll happen if I push something. Panel starts beeping loudly. Ooh, a box. <laughs> Ordinary cardboard box with a T H O R logo on the side. Sticker on the side that says bin F734 personal items. A sad looking apple inside. Have a good shift, Roskva. I think you found someone's lunch. They wouldn't need that anymore. Now what? Should we go back to the panel and see if we what else we can order? Sure. The buttons you were hitting madly turned out to correspond to different letters and numbers. To the right of them you see a booklet labeled Operation Instructions. Looks like there are instructions for operating the conveyor belt. On the back of the instruction booklet you see a logo made up of two symbols and the words produced by the Sindri and Brocker group. Can we use it to order something? Start entering open instructions. General information. Each item can be identified by a four-digit index XXYZ. XX is the warehouse number, Y is the row, Z is the bin. Okay. Note. Indexes got mixed up again in the last shipment and some materials are now in different warehouses. Here are the changes. Oh, if only I had my... Remarkable. A7 is F7. Okay. Ooh, god. Repair kit indexes. I guess for this I just... I'll take a picture. I just need to know when I need something. Seems like that's the only thing, though. Like, we can get repair kits, but not really anything else. So we probably need a repair kit for this, actually. That's a bridge control panel, or at least it was. It. Examine it. Panel has a serial number on it. There we go. So T hi tail fee. Two eight. Got it. Okay. So with that logic, let me look at the picture. TL fee is D four. 1, 6, but D4 has changed to B3, so we need B3, 1, 6. Hey. 
<laughs> oh, I love this kind of stuff. So fun. Thank you. Now we repair this. No one ever fixes this panel in the book. They only break it. I can't find instructions for you. Let's just see how bad it is. You open the panel and start digging around on the inside. You're almost certain you lit everything right. You flip the switch and something inside the panel starts humming. It's working! Compared to fixing the car, this was nothing. Okay, let me see one more time. There's nothing I missed here. No. No, I don't think so. Let's go then. <laughs> wow! Some dire state. We're gonna roast in here. Could whoever killed the robots have done this? No time to chat. The whole building's gonna collapse. Oh dang, we need to hurry. Thor's office. Workshop gate. Go, 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 go. Can you climb that? I need to clear the way first. How are you gonna do? Oh, can you dump them over the side? Nice. Perfect. Let's go. Oh! Fire everywhere! We should hurry up with our search before the fire spreads. Okay, papers, quick. <coughs> oh, letter. Anything interesting? Hasn't been sent. It's from T Thor to Odin. Let's see. Part of the text is burnt and illegible. Since Sol was the first company to go when, shortly after being acquired by the Skull Group, it declared bankruptcy and disappeared from the market. Company is under a continuous threat of acquisition by Jarmagander. I expect this will lead to a similar outcome. All chairman and all ruler, if only I was still at the helm of the military production facility. My actions would be decisive and I would not have to write letters like this. But as I am needed here and must act according to the laws of competition, no matter how hard it may be for me, I ask you something. But he never sent it. Okay, that's that. More papers on the desk. Profit reports and charts. These ones look pretty simple. Report on Thor's profits compared with Jorgaman. Jor Jory. It looks like Thor took the lead at some point and stayed ahead for about nine days. The reports end there, though. I see. Let's get out of here before he choked to death. I see some blueprints. Looks like our hammer. The Mjolnir project. <laughs> cool. What a strange name for a hammer. That's it. I can't survive another second in here. Ah, oh, but the locker. Let's go out. Take a breath of fresh air. Fresher air. Hopefully we don't die. Cool, now go. Nice. The workshop gate. Oh shit. Um, they can't see me, can they? Because I don't look normal. But there's also nothing else I can click on. They're gonna attack me. Some men are unsuccessfully trying to break down the door while the rest of them stand off to the side. Oh yeah, they're putting the beams in between. Our plan will not be complete until we can be sure we've destroyed the entire factory. There must be something important in here. Why else would they have hidden it like this? Ahem. <clears throat> Ten or so pissed off men turn to face you. What's this now? He doesn't look like a robot. Are you from the village too? No. Are you here to help us burn down this damn power plant? Nope. Then what the hell do you want? Lie. Your boss sent me. He said you need to stop all this right now. No, just help them. I'm the leader here, and I definitely don't remember saying that. Damn. Listen, I just want the hammer. Men glance at each other. What hammer? That's what you're trying to destroy, right? The hammer of Thor. It's behind this door you're trying to break down. 
Ah, so it's the hammer making those sounds. That makes sense. See, I told you. Hush. We don't need your help. We can deal with the hammer ourselves. Be on your way. And don't try and lie to us again. I'll need the hammer. I'll be taking it. Listen, guy. Whoever you are under that mask, there are ten of us here. So if you think you can take us, you're out of your mind. Just explain what's going on here. Maybe we can find a compromise. We'll take care of things ourselves. Extra manpower wouldn't hurt, boss. This door really won't budge. There's nothing to explain. This piece of sheet here, he points to the door, caused an avalanche that buried our village. We won't stand for this. Time to take action. It's time for Operation Blackout. Blackout! We'll burn it all down. We'll leave nothing standing. Yeah! Come on, think! Pretend you know something they don't. I shouldn't lie again, though. Offer trade. Let's make a deal. I'll open this door for you if you let me take the hammer. They whisper to each other. What do you mean, take the hammer? Are you going to take it to another factory and make us burn that one down, too? I'll take it out of the country. Bring it where? What country is this? Helheim, Asgard, Midgard... I guess the Helheim would make sense. I'll take the hammer back there with me. The men turn to you in shock. Even the leader who had remained calm and collected until now. You're from Helheim? Yes. I bet that's why his face looks like that. Makes sense. What do we do? Damn, I've never actually seen someone from there before. Let him take it and be gone. We don't need any more problems. Alright. Very well. Go and take your hammer, Helheim denizen. What has them so scared? Something special about that country, I guess. <laughs> All I remember is Thor's rival is from there. Okay, let's try and open the door. Code panel. As you examine the door, you can feel the rioters piercing stairs on your back. There's a panel here. We need an alphabetic code, so we need to guess the word. Something like that. Any ideas? Thor, what word would he have used? Mjolnir. The hammer's name, yeah. Correct! The door opens. Easy! The man behind you look at it in shock. He wasn't lying. Just like I said, no trouble at all. <laughs> Is that it? The hammer? Wow! Wait, so the hammer is like single-handedly powering the whole power plant. I didn't expect that. It's huge. I have to figure out how to get it down from there. Should hurry before the fire spreads here. We need to stop it from hammering. <laughs> There's no way we can take the hammer unless we stop the mechanism. This weird head. Hello! Ah, oh, human detected. 67% certainty. Running if function. If the human is Thor, initiate standby mode. If the human is not Thor, launch self-destruct systems. What? Hold on. I'm Thor. Everything is fine. It's me. I just came to check on my hammer. German again. No, Mjolnir. Right, Mjolnir. Similarity to Thor is 14%. That's not much. To the right, you see two cables attached to the robot's head. Oh god, left or right? Um, the factory was on the right side. That hurts! My god. Ah! <laughs> Robot shuts down. Wasn't what I expected to happen. Poor robot. I thought he just shut down. Sweet! Take it quick. Looks like your hammer stopped moving. Okay, I'm going. You examine the massive hammer. Up close it looks more like a piece of factory equipment than a hammer, but I guess there's some resemblance. Listen. How about I come back later and fix it? Right, why even bother? It's only a robot, just a character. Not this again. Nothing changed after all. We're ending this book on the same note we started. First it was the alchemist, now the robot. 
I don't have an answer for you. I know. Oh, that one's sad. Oh, big hammer. Big compartment. Damn, does it even fit? <laughs> Ooh, what's that rock in it? Well, if it's any consolation, the hammer or the world seems very empty and already kind of messed up, so. They wanted to get rid of the hammer anyway, so we helped them out. And no compromises this time, so they'll get exactly what they wanted delivered to them. Don't mind me, everyone. Nothing suspicious here. I am just traveling nowhere with my suitcase because I am under house arrest. I did get it, yes. Hmm. Don't throw out your back carrying it. Here it is. It's very heavy. Be careful. Mind your back. <laughs> He's strong. Here's your payment. We will be in touch. Thank you. I'm whispering because I'm doing shady business. Need to get some sleep now. Woohoo! Did it! Another case done. <gasps> Phone. Hello? I got your case. Good work out there. You're slowly starting to become my favorite walker. Don't call me that. Don't don't like your new line of work? Stay silent. Too bad. It's far more profitable than all your scribbling. Alright, I'll be in touch. What a cool cucumber! God, why do people call so quickly? Hello? Etienne, is that you? Oh, hey, Vince. How's the work going? Not bad. Thanks again for getting me set up with that client. He's not the world's most pleasant person, but I know a guy who finished working for him literally yesterday and got his shackles off right after that. Lucky guy. That's for sure. We're thinking of writing something together now. You seem to know a lot of people who end up in shackles. Well, the laws these days, you know. Maybe you just gave them the same helpful advice you gave me? Hey, I told you what you were supposed to do. Police weren't supposed to get wind of anything. And I did everything exactly as you said, but the police got wind anyway. To the tune of 30 years for me. Listen, I just told you what I heard. All right, I'll call you back when you're in a better mood. Bye. Can I go to sleep? No more calls? No more calls. It's time for a snack. Hmm. Sorry. Complete book two. Hmm. A week later. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Time to get up. <laughs> My little buddy. <gasps> Phone. Good timing. Hello? Silence. I have a job for you. I'm ready. You'll need to be even more ready than you usually are. I have a new partner, partner, and if we pull this job off without a hitch, you can't even imagine what opportunities it will open up for me. Happy for you. So we need to make the client happy. If he's happy, I'll be happy. And if I'm happy, a little of that happiness might trickle down to you. Get my drift? Like I've said before, I'm not doing this for the money. It's for my shackles. Client sent me an advance payment and I spent it on my new office. Get ready and don't let me down. I love that it's like some, someone sprinting off. Okay, I have a couple things I need to do. Let's put this away. What book is it? Cornelius Paradox. Cornelius? Cornelius. I said it Dutch. Cornelius. Excerpt from an article. Several readers reported the incident to the writer's police who immediately began investigating the situation. Spark of a hammer all have now been taken off the shelves. Damn. 
From the publishing agency. Rumors of your situation have reached us, Mr. Quist. We assure you that everyone at H Harmony sympathizes with you and wants to help you in any way we can. We invite you to serve your sentence with us. However, unfortunately, our resources are quite limited, so payment is out of the question. We remember just how good your books were, and we want you to get back to the creative process as soon as possible and write fantastic mm. new material. This letter confirms that you repaid your water bill debt. We ask you to please refrain from future late payments. Mm. Okay, at least I'm, paying, I'm paying my bills. Technological team that has been developing the system known as television is now defunct. This motion picture system was developed by Steve Drurick, who died last month. High development costs and complexity of use forced the board of directors to abandon the project. Weird. Ooh, upgrade. Increased damage, additional damage to all enemies. Yes. Nice. One damage to others. Perfect. Okay, so what's the target for today? Contractor agrees to infiltrate the Cornelius Paradox by Oleg Sergeev and extract an item. Cornelius's magic wand. The client agrees to pay the negotiated sum upon fulfillment of the contract. It certainly expands the universe, but new books in this series are published so rarely that this expansion seems more like mockery. However, I must admit, I am intrigued. Let's go. Let's have a look. Looks like a Harry Potter wand. Which I guess just means it looks like a wand. <laughs> Lobby. People. Uh-oh. People. I don't think that lady over there noticed me, but that guy definitely saw me land. You there, Roderick? Like always. Figured out how I can convince you that I'm not cold and cruel and heartless. Well, and unpleasant. Someone who couldn't care less about anyone else. Alright, fine. Keep it down over there. Sorry. So here's my plan. Not only am I going to not... Not not going to hurt any characters, since you've done such a good job with that up until now. I'm actually going to help them. All of them. We're gonna help every single person we meet in this book. Sounds good? We won't abandon anyone. Sounds suspicious. Oh, come on. I'm a completely different person deep down inside. You'll see. We'll start with this guy over here. Hi. Do you need help? Me? Uh, no thanks. I'm alright. Well, that's one less we have to help. I said keep it down. Let's go find more characters. Hold on. What are we actually here in this book for? Oh yeah, I need to find the Cornelius wand. A magic wand? Most likely, yes. And it's a rush order, but I think we'll still have time to help everyone. Okay, but I'm keeping an eye on you. You're acting really strange today. I won't let you down. Let's have a look. See a message board packed with information. It's divided into several sections. Schools, job posting. Part-time receptionist. Female, 50 plus. Not quite a fit. Seeking system administrator, hourly rate offered. What kind of administrator is that? This one's perfect for you, janitor. Guess I have to try. School motto. Uniting our differences and overcoming challenges. Headmaster Robert Lemanchier. I feel like I need to know this. Educational license number 0023. Robert Lemantier. Complaint. Oh, 8 to 8, 430 to 5. You take the slim, worn book from its folder on the wall. There are insults written all over the cover. The locals don't like wizards very much. Stop taking up so much space in our city. We could have built a huge park here. No one in this cursed neighborhood can sell their houses. It's all your fault. Big deal. Hmm. Okay, we have a teacher. Image on floor. And outside. Is Can I go outside? Is it written in the book? Hmm. Boxes, boxes, boxes. Musty boxes on damp ground. A big box with clothes written on it. Boxes sit on the ground ready to be shipped out. They're wrapped up in plastic ties. You look at the movers. They won't see you here. 
the ties with the pliers. Okay. So we need pliers. Caution. Fragile. Row of boxes. That's nothing interesting. Loaded boxes. Books. Nothing inside but full boxes. Two movers are sitting on cardboard boxes and smoking. The boxes are bowing under their weight. So you eavesdrop on them. My back's about to give out from lugging all this junk around. Told you to wear a belt, didn't I? The lanky mover flicks his lighter lazily and brings the flame closer to a tiny metal seal holding the cardboard box closed. In an instant, the melted seal falls off to the ground. What do we have here? He rummages among the paper-wrapped school equipment in the box. Oh yeah, the lanky, <laughs> the lanky one takes something out of the box. It's glowing and made of glass. What do you want with that piece of crap? I don't know. Keep it as a souvenir. Light up my house. Hey, put that back. Who the hell are you, ugly? I take what I want. I spent the whole day dealing with these boxes of yours here. I deserve a little present. Put it back. Last warning. <sighs> yeah, just leave him. Okay. So we want pliers. Who are you? What do you want? Receptionist doesn't look at you. Her attention is fixed on the small TV on her desk. Something I can help you with? You? Help me? She raises her eyebrows in surprise, but you your words are still not enough to draw her attention away from the TV. I've decided to try and help everyone I meet today. Well, isn't that nice? Now I asked you, who are you and why are you here? I have urgent business with the headmaster. Did you make an appointment? Don't believe so. What do you want? You can hear the irritation in her voice, but you don't know if it's because of you or because the team of in the football game on TV just missed a goal. Uh, show her the job listing, yeah. You're looking for a janitor and I'm looking for work. Ah, we've been looking. Why are you wrapped up like that? Is that paper on your face? I was in an accident. I'm very sorry. She isn't. The receptionist opens the desk drawer and, with a sigh, pulls out a stack of pink, yellow, and green forms that puff out a cloud of dust as she drops them on the desk. Is this going to take long? Name? Etienne. Any allergies to cleaning products? I thought you were all wizards. Answered the question. No allergies. Excellent. You're hired. Just like that? Here's a bucket and a rag. To the right of me, you'll find an entrance to the library. Wipe the dust off all the bookshelves and come back here. I'll get it done. Cool. I'm in. Three crests. They must be the school's guilds. So, creepy face, green cross, and a red flower. Restroom, library. Let's start here. Oh, so dusty. Okay. Sweet! Dusty bookshelf that looks even dustier than the others. I need to find water. Okay. So we actually need to dust these. Gotcha. Old books in boxes. Probably in the restroom we can get water. Oi! This doesn't look too good. The tap, I can't see anything else. Splash! Nice. Now, dusty shelves. You sigh and start wiping the dust off the shelves, but stop when your rag catches on something. Something scratched into the shelf. These look like runes. No, they're words. It says second shelf, third book from the left. All right, this one's done. Let's get started on the next one. Second shelf, third book from the left. Okay. I mean, we'll probably find it eventually. Eventually. 
Oi, okay. Nothing. The bookshelves aren't going to wash themselves. They just had to be the biggest bookshelves I've ever seen in my life. They don't let just anyone passing by go into the main hall. The wand isn't the only thing in there. What else? All those characters you said you were going to help? Oh yeah, right. I advise you to keep pretending you beat your janitor. Yeah. Okay. Second shelf, you notice a piece of paper. It must have fallen out of the book. Looks like someone's notes. There's a barrier that exists around our solar system, a wall covered in symbols. Each symbol allows us to use one spell. It is believed that the wall protects us from external threats due to the fact that it is constantly being assaulted from the outside, causing the gradual destruction of the symbols on it. What will happen to us when the symbols are destroyed? Hmm. Don't worry, we won't be around to see it. This bookshelf is clean. Okay. Nice. The biggest bookshelf in the room, covered in a thick layer of dust. Boring work and your eyes start wandering over the shelves, coming to rest on an old-looking folder. You brush the dust off, which is decorated with a man's head crest and inscription. The Baratus Guild. Nothing but dull documents in the folder, and nothing catches your eye at first. But then you find a handwritten letter in the very back. Dear Maricus, I am asking you to please accept another guild into your ranks. I know you will protest, but I am unwilling to discuss that. I assume you've read the report already. However, there is a religious aspect to it that I left out because I wanted to tell you about it off the record. They use wizards solely for military purposes. According to their beliefs, wizards must use their powers to destroy the armies of the enemies, which of course is, in this day and age, is quite difficult. But all I'm asking you to do is to pay attention to each of these students, because once they finish their studies, they will be going straight to the battlefield. The Baratus Guild. Hmm. Okay, everything's clean. Let's go upstairs, though. Hmm, maybe a secret corridor? Something interesting here. Yeah, second shelf, third book from the left. Here, click. Secret staircase! <gasps> awesome! They were given five years to prove the theory that the appearance of magic in our world was due to divine intervention. The theory was eventually discarded. Damp books. A writing desk. An elegant writing desk under the staircase. It's seen better days. There's a small lock on the desk drawer. Ooh, a lock! That must mean there's something valuable inside. Tuck at the lock. Okay. The lock may be old, but it's still shut tight. I'll need some kind of tool. So there's two things now we can do with pliers. And that's it here. Good. <laughs> Let's go back. I kind of want to explore there, but I don't know if she'll allow me. Hmm, it's locked. Okay. Finished dusting. All done. We'll see you about that. Receptionist groans as she stands up and goes to check your work. Hmm, not bad at all. Happy to help. <laughs> Get going now, you have a new task. I wanted to ask about the wand. No time for that. Go straight to the headmaster. There was a spill in his office that needs cleaning up. Straight down the hall, then to the right. I unlock the door for you. Thanks. Hmm, portrait hall. Oh, there's one missing. You see an opulent, though slightly shabby altar, with a magic wand sitting on a pedestal in the middle of it. I didn't think we'd get to it so easily. 
That's Cornelius's wand, the one you were supposed to find, remember? Oh, right. Well, I guess I'll just have to help the characters in the next book. There's nothing but a thick glass pane separating you from the wand. A heavy lock hangs below the panel, keeping it shut. Look around. Not a soul in the hallway. You can hear some people arguing loudly behind the door on the right. You can continue scanning your surroundings and you eventually notice a surveillance camera watching you from the ceiling. Is that thing working? The thing is watching us, recording everything that happens. What do we care if it records? I think you should break the glass, grab the wand, and get out of the book already. What's the holdup? I've never seen a lock like this before. The hole looks more like a spiral. I don't think a lock pick will work. Break the glass. I don't want to make a lot of noise. What's gotten into you today? You're being so cautious. I told you I'm not really a bad person. Hey, are you our new janitor? You see a middle-aged man in the doorway. Yes. I'm the one who called for you. Come into my office. I really think we should just break the glass, grab the wand, and... The man starts to reach for his belt where his own wand sits in a holster. Smash the case. No, 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 no. Can you not hear me? Sorry, I was lost in thought. That wand is just so gorgeous. Oh, headmaster's office. The old, an old man who was also in the office nods briefly at you. <laughs> you found us through the job posting? Yes. It's not very often you hear something like that from a non-wizard, but you don't really look like an ordinary person either. Anyway, we have a few stains to clean up here. Spill the potion. I only spilled it because you distracted me. Don't pretend it was my fault. In any case, clean it up, please. Okay. Better not to ask too many questions. You start wiping at the first stain with a rag. The potion doesn't really budge. I heard you plan to sell everything from the geomancy department, too. The geomancy symbols were shattered last year. Why would we bother keeping all that? Why indeed? That's our history. Hmm. Let history stay in the past. The stain is finally gone. You can start on the next one. The second stain is bigger than the first and there's someone already stepped in it. Cleaning bookshelves, clean the floor. What's next? The toilets? Just keep going and get it done. Once you finish, we'll go back for the wand in the hallway. The hand in the hallway. The wand you have out in the hall is so interesting. The old man starts breathing angrily and sends a vicious stare your way. Uh, indeed. Enjoy it while it's here. What do you mean, while it's here? Headmaster tenses up. Seems like he's about to make a very painful decision. Oh yeah, by the way, I wanted to warn you, Maricus. We found a buyer for the wand. Is he talking about your client? I don't think so. The old man drops his teacup on the floor and it shatters, splashing one more potion onto the floor under the desk. You must be joking. You put the symbol of our school up for sale? I actually put everything in the school up for sale. No one wants to buy most of the old junk, but a few people from the capital expressed interest in the wand. How could you? Hold on, you should probably sit down. The wand. Cornelius's wand. Are you listening to me? We'll get enough money for it that we can go another six months without government support. Bang! You're gonna regret this. I'll call a meeting of the school council to challenge it. The old man hurries off. He's gonna take the wand. We need to stop him. Don't worry. He's gone crazy like that about ten times this week already. Besides, one only I have the key to the case. <gasps> he pauses for a second, clearly regretting telling you that. While you were busy with the conversation, you seem to have finished wiping up the stains. Looks like I'm done here. Can I go? Yes, thank you. He turns to the door. You can hear voices coming from the other side, getting louder and louder. Now, what's going on out there? Hmm. We can snoop. All sorts of junk with tea spilled on it. Nothing here? Damn. I was sure there was going to be something. Okay, let's have a look. Oh my god, he did take it! What's going on here? A crowd of people has gathered in the hall. They are whispering among themselves, looking for the altar in the middle of the room. It's the wand, headmaster. Sir, 
Cornelius' wand is gone. Fucking hell. Damn it. The client asked me not to lose track of it. Everyone looks at you, not speaking. All right, then. Who saw it last? I think it was you, right, Sir Maricus? You left the office, and then you must have walked right past it. But it was there at the time. That's if we can take your word for it. Do you have any reason not to believe me? Indeed, especially when it comes to the theft of school property. Do you think I don't know about your secret stash under the library? The only one stealing here is you giving away our heritage. Just admit you stole it and put it back where it belongs. I didn't touch it! Headmaster looks at the camera. We'll see if that's true, but for now, take note. I'm ordering a total lockdown of the school. No one goes in or out. And all the teachers present, and you as well, ma'am. And you too, quickly points at you. Definitely not you, former headmaster. All of you, start searching. Yes, sir, everyone responds. Yes, sir. All right, then everyone, get to it. I'm gonna check the surveillance camera footage, but that will take some time. I'll be in my office. If you so much as try to leave the school, I'll have the police after you. I'll be in my office. The crowd disperses. So now what do we do? We're going to find the wand. Okay, empty case. Let's see. Empty pedestal. Mm, nothing we can learn from it. A portrait is missing. Wow, pretty. Teacher. Stop right there. I'm just a janitor. The janitor? Janitor. Hmm. I guess the school really is out of money. See that teacher there with the glasses? Go tell them they moved this class to the room downstairs. You don't need to be a genius to realize that the students are plotting something. They're giggling and glancing around, and one of them is holding a padlock. Oh, they're gonna lock him in the basement? Help us play a trick on him. It's just a little fun. What do I do? He's asking for help and we promise to help everyone. I don't think this counts. They're clearly up to no good. Why are you thinking so hard? It's just a harmless prank. It's just a prank, Han. We're gonna lock him in the basement for like 10 minutes. I mean, just look at him coming in here all full of himself. He's planning to teach wizards, but he's not even a wizard. You don't think the man in the cheap suit looks particularly arrogant, but maybe it's more obvious to the students. I'll think about it. Hmm. Mikhail. You see a tall, smiling boy in front of you. What a day, huh? The boy seems entertained by everything that's happened. He extends a hand to you. My name's Mikhail. Etienne. Nice to meet you. You're the new janitor, right? More like janitor slash detective. The headmaster tasked me with finding the wand. You and me and the whole rest of the school, yeah. But I wouldn't expect the teachers to be in any sort of hurry to find it. Is it dangerous? Hard to say. We have no idea what spell was being held inside it. There was a spell inside it? I can explain it if you want. Yeah. When we want to summon a spell, he pulls out his wooden wand, we speak the name of the sign which draws the spell into our wand. Beritos. His wand starts glowing very faintly. Now I can use the spell at any time by just flicking my wand. He swipes his hand gently, almost like a paintbrush, and the slightest wisp of the steam rises from the tip. Whoa. Problem is, no one knows what spell was being held inside the wand. He puts his wand back. And since Cornelius studied the most powerful spells and experimented with combining them, it could be something incredibly dangerous. Thanks for explaining that. But hey, maybe he just had a spell to chill his drinks in there. <laughs> do you th who do you think stole it? To be honest, there's been a lot of weird stuff happening in the school lately. One of the old teachers is acting strange. This morning, one of the second year students disappeared. There's rumors going around about undead in the walls. All kinds of stuff. Did he say undead? Tell me more. What do you want to hear about? Mm, undead. I never said I suspected anyone of stealing the wand, although... Mikael rubs his chin thoughtfully. You're probably right. When there are no good leads, you have to look into everyone. Who did you ask me about? 
the undead. I think it's just a school legend. Mikael pa pauses, pauses, <laughs> but gathering his thoughts, then continues. But now that I think about it, people have been talking about them a lot lately. You should ask the students in the dorms, they might know more. Mikael shifts his weight back and forth. The old teacher. I haven't seen that teacher in a long time myself, but they say he stopped showing up for lectures and spends his time hiding in abandoned classrooms. Sounds suspicious. He has a daughter, by the way, who usually works down in the lab. She might be able to tell you more. Thanks. I'm afraid I don't know anything else about him. The missing student. It's nothing, really. Just some bad student no one can find. I think he probably ran away. It happens every semester. Why is that? The School of Magic isn't really all that prestigious nowadays. We could be studying to be lawyers or going to military school instead. Where do you think I should look? I don't know him, but I saw the receptionist putting up some flyers about the search. You should ask her. Nothing else, thanks. Okay. Mm, no. Could you help me, sir? Oh. A man dressed in a classic modern suit stands in front of you. His outfit seems very out of place in this old-fashioned school of magic. You met him earlier out by the reception desk. Who are you? I teach a programming class here. Hmm. A programming class at a school of magic? The city administration wants to start converting the school of magic since the symbols are going out. Right. My class is supposed to start any minute now, but I can't find my classroom. Everyone I ask keeps pointing me to a different one. <sighs> this poor guy. Send him to the second floor. Oh my, are you sure? So many people told me the basement. Trust me, definitely don't check the basement. Teacher looks over at a nearby group of students. Alright, thank you. See you around. You nod, not taking your eyes off the group of students, who look quite annoyed. The wand. Did something happen to it? Some nerd. So these are the three different... Ah. Um, groups. Like like Harry Potter, Gryffindor and stuff. Ooh, candy. Nice. Nothing else. Oh, and see me. The other girls should be back by now. Inscription on the crest says Baratus. Okay, I feel like that's important. Door number... Bookshelf. <laughs> Door number two. Another table. With goodies, I hope. Yes, thank you. Should find a workbench somewhere. Shady student. Why are you shady? What do you want? Shifty looking student. The frame of a giant portrait is sticking out from under his bed. <gasps> you took it. Say so you got there. Nothing. None of your business. Decided to steal a painting from the school? So what's with the picture? Get lost. I said it's none of your business. Splash him with water. This isn't the first teenager you've come across who thinks he's hot stuff. Rolling your eyes, you tilt the bucket and splash dirty water right into his arrogant little face. What's wrong with you? Are you insane? The insolent student is shocked, but still looks at you intently and blocks your way to the painting. Get the hell out of here. Alright, no one else has to know. Did you find something interesting? What's the deal with the painting? The student looks around nervously. Marty swore this painting would open some kind of secret cache. Secret cash? You have to hang the painting somewhere, but he didn't say where exactly. He didn't see the huge space in the wall of the main hall where the portrait was clearly missing. How about I go find where to hang it myself? But what if there's something valuable in there and I miss out on it? What if there's something dangerous in there? You can deal with it yourself. Fine. Tell me what you want in exchange for the picture. Oh, now you're talking. Get me a strong drink. You want me to get drinks for underage kids? I'm 25. Then why are you still in school? Figure it out yourself. I was held back a few times in my second year. I'll think about it. Yeah, you do that. Okay, a strong drink. Ziblick. Green Cross. Ziblick. And last one. Gryffindor. Imperial for the red flower. Okay, lit fireplace. Nice. He 
Heat from the fireplace assaults your face. It's so stuffy in here. It's summer. Why is it lit? Ordinary fireplace. Above it, you see a symbol that looks like a lion. I wonder what that means. Angry flames burn in the fireplace. A quiet girl. The girl shrinks back into her bed. Your appearance seems to frighten her. Don't be afraid. I'm just a new janitor. I look like this because... I never ate porridge as a child. She lets out a giggle. The undead. Have you heard about rumors about the undead? No, 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 no. There are no friends in the walls. She rolls around, then looks at the fireplace, then turns back to you. Friends? What was that about? Why did you look at the fireplace? Something there? She shakes her head frantically. There's definitely something there. We should check it out. Can I get anything? Nope. Um, we should get some more water. At least I'm assuming my bucket's empty. Let me see, because I threw it at the kid. Yeah. I'll go back and get some water. Where would I get a strong drink? Oh, maybe one of the boxes outside. But I haven't actually found a, a workbench yet, have I? I wonder if I can splash that on the fire. I'm worried that if I'll go to the basement, they'll lock me in there. <laughs> Papers on your head start to curl up from the heat and the sparks are flying dangerously close to you. You can't see anything beyond the bright flames. Hmm. Suddenly hear far off voices. How did they get here? There's someone there. Hey, can you hear me? Silence. All you hear is the pop and crackle of the unburned wood in the fireplace. We need to get inside. Use the water. It's just a fire. You have a bucket of water. Put two and two together and you have an unlit fireplace. A stream of murky water flows straight into the middle of the fireplace. The sparks, the flames spark and hiss, but don't go out. It's as though the fire is absorbing the water with no consequence. Is this a gas fireplace? A what? There's clearly something fishy about it. I'll give you a hint. There's a spell on it. Ah. You can use anything as long as it's not water. How about a fire extinguisher? A who? Never mind. I think there's one in my building. I should go back to reality and check. Hmm. Maybe the girl... Maybe it's her spell. Okay. Nice. We, we're doing good on items. Let's go find a fireplace. Uh, fireplace. Fire extinguisher. Yes, hello. Do you have the wand yet? I only just started the book. Well, snap to it. Client's been calling me and asking about it. Why such a rush? There's a lot of money at stake, Walker. A lot. Uh, this isn't something that could be should be hurried. It's better if I don't hurry. I need to be careful about what I do. You know what's even better? Hurrying and being careful. How's that for a plan? All right, I'll try and speed things up. Get going! Where would a fireplace be? Somewhere in the main hall, right? Sorry, I'm a little sniffly. <sighs> Damn. No rest for the wicked. I'll get you your wand, now leave me alone. Etienne? Oh, that's me. Mr. Quist, I'm calling from the writer's police department. Were you notified that you would be contacted for questioning? I was. I was notified. Well, more like, it's about your neighbor. Old Henry? Hmm, we can't reveal his name over the phone, but it's not anyone named Henry. I'm talking about the man who lived on the first floor of your building. What do I have to do with it? The writer's police, for that matter. Didn't you know? Your neighbor was also a writer. What? You never talked to him? No, all this time. He was a writer? He recently finished off his sentence and became a free writer once again. However, a few days ago he was found. I think it will be more appropriate to discuss these details in person. When are you available for a visit? I don't really have time for that right now. How about noon tomorrow? That works. We'll see you then. Hmm. Interesting. 
Now, let's see. Maybe somewhere here? Oh, so there is a hmm. writer here? Oh, uh, maybe it's there. Sorry to bother you. I really need the key to the storage room. Please, I can hear you're in there. I need the fire extinguisher, but it's inside a locked case. Time is running out. We're gonna burn alive! What are you shouting about? Oh, hello. I don't smell smoke. Where is this fire you going on about? In my apartment. It just started. I'm not lying. I think something's happened with the wiring. You want me to wait around while the apartment burns down? Will you believe me then? When the flames spread into the apartment in the hallway and your apartment catches fire too? Alright, you don't have to yell. Just bring it back later. Thanks. Aha! I got Zucky. Open. Nice. Heck yeah. Fire extinguisher, baby. Back to the book I go. Okay, let's try it. Mm, where is it? There. How's that for you, huh? Enchanted fireplace. Whoa, cool. Oh, who are these? Group of students. Let me quickly look around. Chest. Next to the old bed is a chest covered in a thick layer of dust. Crowbar or pick the lock. Okay. Hello. A group of girls stands by the way out, which is blocked off with the stones. Their hands and robes are dirty and dusty. Looks like they were trying to clear the way. Hey, what's going on here? The girls turn sharply to face you. Quiet! Did you steal the wand? How'd you get in here? Everything alright? Shut up. Suddenly you hear a noise behind you. You turn and see four dark silhouettes that are twitching unnaturally in the semi-darkness. Great, they heard you. Now we have to fight. <gasps> are those the undead in the walls that I've heard about? Yep. Stand back. I'll deal with them. The girls look at your ID badge curiously. What a combat-ready janitor we have. We can take care of, our s of this ourselves. We're from Baratas. From where? We're combat wizards. Oh, I heard something about you. Let me try and deal with them first. The girls move aside. The dark figures get closer. There are no, there's no retreating now. Okay, so these two are gonna hit. Stun all enemies. Nice. Okay. Uh, it did damage them. But it does take quite a bit to do it again. Let's try the shield. Huh, they both missed. Okay. Uh, slash. Hmm, let's do the big one. Oh, it's all of them. Nice. Ouch. Ouch! Oh, jeez. I should have stunned them. I didn't see they were all going in for the hit. Okay. We have... One hit now and one heal. Oh, stun that. I don't want them to heal. Good. Wait. Oh, is it just this main one? As long as that one's alive. Do I need to kill them all at the same time? Oh god. Oof. 
that took quite some healing. Is that... Yeah, now I'm full health. Okay. Good, good, good. Ooh! Nice. Got a lot of stuff from that. The girls look at you with interest. Not bad, but we would have been able to fight them ourselves. What happened here? Crazy girl brought us here to check out the abandoned classrooms and then she locked us in. And then these undead started coming out, but we, unlike some people, know better than to go around yelling and they didn't notice us. I think we need to have a serious talk with that girl upstairs. We do too, she cracks her knuckles. Okay. We're totally fine. We're just gonna catch our breath and then head back upstairs. Did you seal the wand? The wand? Oh, of course something interesting happens while we're stuck down here. So someone finally nabbed Cornelius' wand. Uh, yeah, someone nabbed it. We've been here since this morning. There's literally no way we could have taken it. Makes sense. That's one less suspect for us. Okay. Don't hang around here too long. I need to get back to searching for the wand. Okay, see ya. Looks like there's nothing else really to get, except for the chest, but... I can't open that yet. Tell me what happened. She bursts into tears. I just wanted to feed my friends. Feed? Friends? Did I hear that right? She wanted to feed the other girls to those creatures? I found them in an abandoned dormitory and they didn't do anything bad to me. I just wanted to do something to help them. Help. Wait, hold on. These definitely aren't the characters we should be helping now. Did you use Cornelius' wand to raise the dead? What wand? What are you talking about? Cornelius' wand. The girl looks at you in confusion. Another bad student who doesn't even know anything about her own school. Never mind. Seems like she's not our client. Let's keep looking. I think the girl will be fine. What happened to the girls downstairs? They're alive and really angry. If I were you, I would hide. Okay. Well, interesting. So we checked these places. We haven't been upstairs or downstairs. But let's go upstairs first. I'm worried that I'm gonna get locked in the basement and I don't want that. Although 10 minutes is not that bad. Found out about the undead in the walls. They really do exist. One girl made friends with them and she tried to feed them some other girls. What? That was my reaction too. What am I supposed to do about that? Thought people might have been exposed to ammonia ga- ammonia gas? I'll tell the headmasters about the girl and the undead. I'm sure they'll be interested to hear about it. Thanks. Nothing else. Do you think he did it because he's so helpful? I think this is the room. He checks the papers he's holding one more time and go goes into the classroom. Hmm. Anything I can get here? Pardon me, are you here for the lecture? Uh, oh, it's you, the janitor. Have a seat if you like. Sure, why not? Where did we leave off? He said that there's huge potential inside us and we need to realize that by becoming programmers. And I argued that there's no way for you to know what kind of potential is inside of us. Right, and you said it's like Cornelius' paradox. I'm not familiar with the concept. Cornelius' wand, the one that was stolen today, it's charged with... Hey, let me explain. I was the one talking to the teacher in the first place. Don't interrupt me. Please, I'm willing to listen to both of you, but since the young lady already started, let her continue. The wand is charged with a spell, but no one knows what spell it is. Maybe it heals every illness, or makes everyone immortal, or kills everyone. The wand is incredibly powerful, but also entirely useless at the same time, since no one dares to try it out to see what magic is held inside it. That's the Cornelius Paradox. Hmm, that may be relevant to our topic today too, but if I was in your position, I would be more optimistic. If one of you turns out to be charged with a spell that, that's not quite useful as other spells, many doors will still be opened for that person in the outside world. Programming is a new language that we'll all be speaking soon, and those who don't know it will feel like outsiders in society. That's nothing new for us. A few other students chime in, agreeing with him. I understand, but it's other one thing to be an outsider and have the ability to rely on your magic. 
It's another thing to find yourself in a world you don't understand and have to face it alone. To this end, he opens the folder, we're planning to start holding elective classes at your school that will help you transition into this world. However, if I understand the laws here correctly, this will need to be appro approved by both your current and former headmaster. Then I wouldn't count on it happening. Our last headmaster doesn't really respect this technology of yours. Yeah, I met him. The new city administration plans to reduce the power held by School of Magic headmasters, so I don't think he'll be a problem. Well, that's all I have for you right now. I'll see you soon in your first transitionary classes. Sparse applause. Short lecture. Maybe he was really late. Oh, a candle? Teacher is stupid and so is this lecture. I don't have anything to light the candle with. Check this desk. Not so sure about programming. Okay. Teacher thumbs through his folder of documents. You again. Did you enjoy the le le lecture? Did you steal the wand? You, someone who hates wizards, showed up at the school and the wand went missing the very same day. Pretty suspicious. Hold on just one second now, first things first. Why should I have to explain myself to a janitor anyway? The headmaster put me personally in charge of the search. Is that so? Then why do you think I hate wizards? You're, you aren't a wizard. Everyone who's not a wizard hates wizards. For your information, my grandfather was a wizard. He studied here and was the Imperial Guild. Guild. But my family's magical heritage stopped there. My father didn't inherit any abilities. And that's why you hate them. Not at all. In fact, that's the reason why I decided to do something far more important and study programming. Need to keep to the storage room. Odd that the janitor doesn't have his own keys. Oh, he just hands it to me. Nice. Thanks. Let's go in then. See what we can nab. A writing desk again? Hmm, looks like a secret door there. Hmm, maybe we would need to light candles? Well, that's it. For now. That's about it, I think. Two candles. S class schedules, Imperials have less than the others. Oh, I forgot, I haven't checked this classroom. It's quite convenient being the janitor. Like, you can just sit, tell people that you're cleaning. If they're wondering what you're doing. Hmm, can't look at anyone here. Teacher's desk, attic door. Ooh, workbench. Excuse me, teacher appears at your ID badge. No one called for the janitor. Mm, I can still sit down. Lecturer stares at you in the eye, trying to figure out what you're up to. You spend a few minutes under the teacher's stern eye, but eventually she looks away. Fine, let's continue. Time to check your homework. List the great wizards of the Bronze Era. Dory Mori, Rebus Nebus, oh, and Chedis Medis. <laughs> Excellent. Fortunately, the popularity of those names passes, passed along with the Bronze Era itself. And what is meant by the Bronze Era? A period after the first signs came to fruition. First through seventh generation of wizards. The period when wizards had immense power but only knew a handful of spells that they deciphered from the wall. Very good. And the most significant events of those years, Rayana? Uh, the creation of the Great Canal? The 40 kilometer wide river canal that separates the left and right sides of New Riverland. Dori Mori created it with splitting magic, which, signs, which sign is now shattered. At these words, everyone in the classroom, including the teacher, nods their heads briefly and respectfully. Next, we have the Silver Era. The Knights of Bright Lights. That's when wizards attempted to seize power. First was Royal III, 
Then there was a second attempt by Valax IV, and who was successful and stayed in power for three years. A light-haired boy recites these words quickly, almost automatically. And you can also tell us about the Golden Era, please. That was the period when relations between wizards and ordinary people started to be regulated. When magic clinics, Baratus' combat magic institutes, and other magic institutions, including our school, were built. Good. I'm glad I didn't need to pull the answers out of you word by word this time. That's all for today. Okay. Can I look around now? Ooh, yes. Everyone left. Great. Let's start with the teacher's desk, huh? Drawer of the teacher's desk catches your eyes. You pull on it, but it's locked. Hmm. The drawer is closed. There must be something useful in there. Probably. Let's see if I can make some tools. Uh, ooh. I don't have enough for both. But there were two things that I wanted to get with the pliers. So I'll start with that. Craft one of these. Okay. Drink that. Okay. Now we're good to go. Let's check this. Doors locked. Okay, so two things to lockpick in this classroom. But now we have pliers. And I remember there were two things. One was the boxes all the way outside. Nice. What's in it? Someone's belongings wrapped in paper. You find a few useful items among them. Huh. Okay. Not exactly what I was hoping for, but... I'll take it. I feel like there's another doorway here. Nice. With some effort, you break through it with the pliers. A ring, a bottle, and coins. The ring is just junk? Ah, oh, shame. Okay, at least now we've opened it. This room is done. No strong drink for the student. Okay, let's check the basement now. Hmm, boxes. Ooh, good. Barrels. The lab and the door to the cellar. Okay, I don't have a key apparently. Oh, this is, yeah, lab is locked. Okay. Oh, hello. Cute. Oh, sorry, the lab's occupied right now. She turns to you and freezes. One third of her concern is at your behavior, another at your appearance. Something else underneath. I've been tasked with finding Cornelius's wand and I wanted to look around here. Are you alright? Sorry if I scared you. No, it's fine. She turns around and pretends to be busy, but her hands are shaking slightly. Do you know anything about the missing wand? About what? Cornelius's wand. It was stolen today. Oh, no, I don't know anything. Stop pushing her. Fine. I can see something's worrying you. Maybe I can help? I won't tell anyone. You can trust me. The girl turns around and looks at you, her eyes full of doubt. One of the teachers here is... My father. He's been acting really strange recently. I'm worried he got caught up in something bad. I'd be grateful if you could find out what's happened with him. Hmm. Got it. Can I look into these things? I wouldn't touch that. What is it? Almonia gas. What's it for? Studying it. You're studying smoke in a jar? It's quite unique. It's the only signogen gas, gas that originates from signs on the wall covered in symbols that create spells. Not so covered now. They allowed us to create fireballs and lightning bolts, all those party tricks that wizards are so interested in, and boring strange gas. Practically no one has studied it. Okay, whatever you say, gas is gas. What's so special about it? You casually jab at the finger with a finger at the jar. The fact that it turns people into dull students. 
into the undead. Their skin gets all covered in something charred looking and black. Oh, they're overcome by a mysterious and highly contagious disease. And according to my calculations, it might even start a whole epidemic. Therefore, I'm petitioning for use of the Almonia sign to be forbidden. Just like the signs that have been shattered already. Hmm. How'd you get it? If it's so dangerous, then maybe you shouldn't... Haven't you heard enough reasons not to touch it? Okay. Uh, now I can make my lockpick. Nice. Crates. Thank you. Get that ready. Get another one of those. Oh, 99. I'm one short. Okay, just need crowbar parts now. Cool. I guess we couldn't ask her if she had a key. And we're free! We didn't get locked into it. Nice. Uh, what are you doing here anyways? I'm waiting for a lecture to start. Today there's gonna be talk about intersecting sign coordinates. Sure. Okay, uh, I need to go back to the classroom. Ooh, actually, no. This... Wait, can I... Oh, all right. I can hold right click. Hmm. There was a chest here that I can now unlock, I think. It's dark in here, but that's not a problem. You can open the lock by the sound. You work the lock pick into the hole and the lock opens with a click. Nice. Cool. Then now the classrooms. I haven't found anything yet for the boy. With the painting. Maybe one of the teachers has alcohol. Or something in the attic, an old wine or something. Lockpick won't be any use. Ah, oh, it doesn't fit. Okay, what about the attic door? Oh, what about the basement door? Locked. Oh, I'm not allowed to lockpick it. Okay, so for those doors, I actually need keys. Then let's check the secretive teacher. A hunched man in a teacher's uniform stands motionless by the door, whispering something incomprehensible. One extinguished, two extinguished, three, four, five. Are you alright? Just be careful. As soon as you touch the man's shoulder, he punches, pushes you away. I thought he punched. And quickly hides behind the door. How rude. You hear the locks closing on the other side. One, two, three, four, and five. With each click, the emblems depicting candles on your side of the door turn. Ah. The door looks more like a work of art with interwoven metal strips on it. In the middle of the door you see five emblems depicting candles. They're upside down now. Okay. He might be in trouble and you did say you wanted to help everyone. Could he have the wand? I haven't found that in the text yet so we should check. You find a small gold plated lighter. Ooh, take it. Yeah. Awesome. Okay, let's light the candles in here. That's one. Mm-hmm. Light it. You flick the lighter and the candle starts burning. Impressive. And then there's one in here. Cool. Oh! A bottle of wine! Ooh! Oh, uh, the lamp said if you can take food from a book, if you can eat it in the real world. Like I said before, everything I take out of books doesn't last. I remember, but you'll be taking the food out of the book inside you. It still worked the same way, it would just dissolve inside of me. Hmm. You've tried? Only with alcohol. Huh. Anything else here? No? Okay. At least now we have um, wine for the boy. We lit the candles.
Yep. So we just need five candles to light. Let's see if I missed anything in here. Yeah. Number three. Quarters. Oh, headmaster's quarters. Briefcase. Briefcase has to be here for a reason. Old habits die hard, huh? Seal the master's paper. Call it writer's intuition. Not every prop is Chekhov's gun. <laughs> you try to force the briefcase open with your bare hands, but it makes a traitorous creaking sound. Shh, do you want them to hear you? Okay. Nice. Just goodies. Another candle. And a box. Ooh, we can make a crowbar soon. Can we talk to him? The old headmaster is digging through papers on his desk and doesn't pay attention to you. Did you steal the wand? Nonsense. Why would I do such a thing? You didn't want the wand to be sold, and so you decided that was the best way to protect it. <sighs> Look out there. You see a densely populated city, full of tall buildings that almost block out the sky. High up in the sky above you, you can just barely make out lines that look like symbols. Those are the signs? Yes, and they're written there for us. Not for them. Huge letters in the sky that shine for us. But now they're trying to bring us down to the level of ordinary humans, to their level. It doesn't matter if it's the wand or the books or even the damn quill pens. I don't want to give them anything. Because we were made for great things and they were not. Damn. This was our world. Headmaster turns away from you and continues digging through the papers. What do you know about the undead in the walls? Just an old school legend. For made up creatures, there's been a lot of talk about them lately. Well, you know, on certain times, rumors start flying. Pay them no mind. The headmaster turns away from you and continues digging through the papers on his desk. Okay. Well, found a candle, found some goodies. I might have enough for the crowbar. Yeah, I think so. Uh, let's see. Nice, we have everything. And another potion. Ooh, nice. Nice, 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 great. Cool, cool, cool. Um, let me think. Let's go back. Before we do the last quarters and the candle, let's go back to the boy for the painting. Here you go. Took you long enough. Are you going to take it or am I leaving? Yeah, yeah, I'll take it. What was it you wanted? The painting? Go on. It's ugly art anyway. Thanks. Be careful with that wine. Let's hang it up on the wall and see what happens. Door to hall. Still have coffee. Been drinking this coffee for two and a half hours. Portrait slides right into place. Ooh! Secret room. Hope no one minds. You suddenly stop dead in your tracks. Ooh, undead! Quiet, don't make a noise. They haven't noticed us yet. I can fight them. Hey, are you those undead Mikael was talking about? <laughs> Why'd you do that? Undead are heading straight for you. Because I want to fight. Ooh, that's a lot of dudes. Okay, let's see. Let's slash this guy. Hey. Okay. Mm, I don't need to drain just yet. That wasn't too bad. I'll slash again. Oh, now they're all two. Great. Heal all. Okay, time for a stun. Do they still get to do it? No, I don't think so. Yeah, perfect. 
Um, I do need to restore that and maybe have an apple. Perfect. Now check the chest. Take the goodies. Nice. Anything else? That was it? Really? Oh. Thought it would lead to more. Hmm. Well, at least I got to do some fighting. It's fun. Okay, I think it's time for these quarters. Oh, candle. Table, teacher. Hello. The wizard glances up at you quickly. You a teacher here? Teach the first years to sign alphabet, and I conduct my own research in my free time. What's that you have there? Point at the strange device on his desk. Just an ordinary astral linograph. We use them to decipher the signs. Are you trying to discover new signs since the old ones are being shattered? It's more like I'm trying to combine them. Combine them? You see, it seems the wizard has been wanting to share his discoveries with someone. The signs are on the barrier, and I insist it be called a barrier, not a wall. Because the primary function of these structures is protecting the world inside from the destructive force outside. Some kind of creature or being is trying to break down the barrier of symbols and supposedly bring an end to all life inside. All nine planets will perish, including our own. So, I believe that all the symbols on the barrier are a kind of message, and it may be an answer to how we can stop the destruction. Our goal is to decipher this message and not just use its power letter by letter as we are doing now. And you're the first one who realized that the letters on the wall, barrier, the letters on the barrier might form words. No, there was also Cornelius, but I think most wizards are too busy studying what the symbols can give us right now in the moment. Long-term effects and tasks have always just been passed off to the next generation. Did you say Cornelius? I just so happened to be looking for his wand. Have you heard about its disappearance? Yes. Cornelius was the last wizard I can remember who was interested in the meaning behind the symbols. But I was never able to find his work, and his wand itself has no inherent value. It's a paradox. Um, what have you managed to find out? Firstly, that the radius of the barrier available to us is not all that big. We only see a small portion. The sun alone blocks half of our field of vision, and all the symbols beyond negative one degree can't be viewed without going blind. It's possible that the creators of the barrier were expecting all nine planets to work together to decipher the message. But despite all these difficulties, I've been able to decipher two words. Whoa! Property of. <laughs> is that all? Yes. Wait, is the barrier the cover of the book? Property of who? Hmm. Oh, he might just be like... The book might just be, like, under a lamp. <laughs> and that's their son. That's interesting. Wow. Oh, we can move this. <laughs> a box. Hello, secretive teacher. The man is on his knees amidst scattered papers covered in different variations of the same symbol. That's the healing magic symbol. I knew right away that you were from the Inquisition. Do with me what you will. I no longer care. I tried everything. Hmm. Tried shifting the coordinates of the symbol by the lowest possible degree. That's three years in wizard's jail. Tried using regeneration magic on the symbol. That was stupid, I admit. I have no idea what I hoped would happen. That's one year of community service. Damn it, I even tried to buy a wand with a healing spell inside it, but you can't find them anymore. That's two years of hard labor. The man raises his eyes to you and you see that his face is literally covered in strange, painful looking cracks. I never saw a disease like that in all my years of practice. You were a doctor? I believe so. The man notices your janitor ID badge and freezes. Wait a minute, you're not from the Inquisition? No. Then just who in the hell are you? Your daughter is worried about you. She asked me to check on you and see how you were. You, judging by all this, are not great. Out of all the damn symbols out there, the one that was keeping me alive was shattered. Uh, do you need help? There's no use. Do you steal the wand? 
He looks at you in surprise. What? The wand? Why would I steal that? I don't know. Maybe it would help you? What if there's healing magic inside of it? Even if there was, one spell would only last me a week. The sickness would come back. I finally found this chapter. He has nothing to do with the wand. He's a made wizard who dies at the end of the book. What should we tell your daughter? It's best if she doesn't see me like this. Tell her I left the school and nothing else. What's wrong with you? This is a process that affects a rare type of wizard. They call us made wizards since we weren't born with particles of magic in our blood. We obtained that blood through artificial means, and now my body is rejected in that blood, and there's nothing that can suppress the reaction. Can't you just drain the magic blood back? It's been inside me for 37 years. I can't get rid of it that easily. My whole body is infused with magic, and now I'm gonna pay the price. Try to cure him? It won't be easy, even with ink. The wizard sits down on the floor, eyes closed. You slowly approach him and sit down next to him. Give him some of your blood. I'm not sure anything useful will happen with these shackles on me. I can't do much. What the? Don't move, let me finish. Rewrite his illness. Does it kill me? You concentrate and stream of ink jumps from your fingers onto the teacher's hand where it's instantly absorbed. Suddenly the shackles around your wrists give off a burning coldness. What kind of magic is this? It's still not enough. He needs more. Are you sure you'll be alright? I hope so. Squeeze your hand shut and blood starts flowing along with the ink. You can feel all memory of this illness being wiped from the world. The cold emanating from your shackles is becoming unbearable, but you're finished now. What did you do to me? It's not important. I hope you get better. The wizard is still staring at you, shocked, trying to understand what's going on. You notice the cracks on his face are starting to dissipate. How are you? Are you alright? I think so. You, you did the right thing. I hope so. Hopefully, yeah. Eat the bread. Well? I don't know what you did, but I feel different. Ooh. At least we helped someone. That's good. Okay, so done. 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 We need keys, but let's go back to the daughter. Did you find out what's wrong with my father? I found him and he's gonna be fine. Where is he? The door with the candle emblems on it. He's in there. Alright, I'll go see him. What do you mean he'll be fine? Was he in danger? Some minor health problems, but he took care of them. Alright, I'll ask him for the details myself. This is for you. Thanks for your help. Okay, we didn't get that much from her, but... Cool. Uh, I guess since I have so many, I'll just drink one. Okay. So... We need a key. Okay. I can't do anything. I think I just need to make a round again. Teacher didn't do it. You found him? What was wrong with him? He was sick, but he didn't touch the wand. Mikael sighs in relief. Glad to hear it. One less suspect. Maybe you check the headmaster's quarters again? Is he checking the footage still? Peak. Processing video. 0.02%? Ah, <sighs> there we go. You look at the screen and see the number. It changed to 0.021%. <laughs> it's gonna take some time. <laughs> so you should probably get back to the search. Hmm. Well, and I looked everywhere here. It's a good thing we were there when it got stolen, because otherwise we would have been hella suspicious. Have you seen anything suspicious? Yes, a janitor poking around. <laughs> you said to help me find the missing student instead. Second year, right? I already heard a little. Do you know anything about his disappearance? What's his name? Mendes. Ziblik. What does he look like? 
ordinary student. What might you know? His friends are always smoking in the bathroom. Hmm. It's not my problem. My job is to keep unwanted types from walking into the school. Is there so anyone else who might have seen him? Maybe the movers are sight. Why are you so sure he's in the school? Because the school is locked down until we locate the missing wand. Right. Uh, questions about the missing student? No. Okay. Well, now I have a reason to talk to the movers. Have you seen a kid around here? A kid? His name is Mendes. He ran away from school and might have taken something important with him. The lanky mover coughs loudly. Nope, I haven't seen him. Students hang around out here sometimes. They go smoking around the corner, you see, but I haven't seen any today. Can I look in the boxes? Who's going to be held responsible if something goes missing? I won't steal anything. Yeah, sure. Not nah, paperhead. You can't touch the boxes. Hmm. Okay, let's check the restroom. Maybe now there's smokers. There they are. Several students are smoking in the toilet stall. Apollo is such a traitor. The whole school was talking about him yesterday. What'd he do? He lit the candle, if you can believe it, with his wand. No way. Even the headmaster can't do anything like that now. The new one, definitely not. Or he tied a match to a swan, more likely. Just like Mendes did, remember? Where'd he go, anyway? Mendes? He was in the infirmary, last I heard. Yeah, sure, I'll cozy under a blanket. I bet he got the hell out of there, like he planned. Uh, out of here. Haven't seen him since morning. I thought he was all talk, but I guess not. The hiss of cigarette buds being put out marks the end of the conversation. Press yourself against the wall and they don't notice you. Mendes, Mendes ran away. Hmm. I don't know. I feel like... If he was in the infirmary, maybe the receptionist knows where it is. Nope. This music sounds like Minecraft sometimes. I already got a drink. Oh, he hands me key. Oh, I thought this wasn't useful because we already got a drink, but... Oh, wine cellar? Door to the basement. Oh, thank you. So he has a little stash in the basement for drinking. <laughs> Thanks. I had to talk to him again. There we go. Nice. Let's have a look. Candlestick. Barrels. Might get some goodies. Yeah, crowbar! Nice, two breads. Can you douse that candle? <gasps> oh, I see. That's probably what the headmaster told me. Another bottle of wine. Hmm. Ooh, old notes. Student names. Some are crossed out. What? Wait, he hasn't been kicked. Didn't one go missing every semester? What if the headmaster has been, like, um, sacrificing them or something? Okay, she's done too. I can't talk to her anymore. Must be coming to the end of things. This is the classroom where I still need to do a couple things, but I don't have the key for this or the attic. Maybe I can force it? Oh, crowbar! Smashed open the desk. That's it? Ah, uh, I was hoping there was more in that. And that I really need a key for. Mental objects for a total of a thousand ink. Wow. Mm. It is the movers. Okay. Apparently I can threaten the movers to get them to agree with me looking in the boxes. 
Okay, so I could either fight them or um, threaten the, them, them with the headmaster, but I couldn't, I didn't get the option, so I'll just fight them. Beat them up. Well, I shall ask this guy because he has more health. Okay, I only took one, it's not too bad. Now slash him, because he has more health. Okay, now they're both idle. Um, let's heal in that case. Um, let's just do that, because he's idle anyway, and then... Ooh. So much for helping them. Oh, I just beat them up. Okay, whew. Fine, you win. That's better. The movers glare at you angrily from under their furred brows. You knock on the closed box, but there's no one in there. Not even if a child would fit in there. Boxes are taped shut, have been there for a while. Maybe here? <gasps> A long row of boxes sit alongside the truck waiting to be loaded. Examine them. Ordinary boxes. Hold on, look at that down there. You notice the tape on one of the boxes has come off. It seems to have been opened already. You look over at the movers. They're muttering angrily, but they seem to be leave you, leaving you alone. You move all the junk in your way aside and open the box with no tape. Don't give me away! Scrawny, scared-looking boy is sitting in the box with a frightened look in his eyes. His robes are covered with crumbs and sawdust. You're Mendes, I assume? How do you know my name? What are you doing in there? I'm hiding. I see that. Why? I want to get out of this school. You give him a repro reproachful look. All we do is waste time. Everyone else is doing real stuff. Going to college or work or whatever. Just my luck, I was born with these powers. Where's the wand? What wand? What's that got to do with me? Stop playing dumb. Why did you steal the wand? I didn't take anything. The student opens his robe and starts showing you his pockets, revealing nothing but half a loaf of bread. <laughs> Looks like he's telling the truth. He just wants to, a student who wants to drop out of school. Well, come out of there. Wait, why should I come out? Don't make me go back. You glance over at the movers. They aren't paying any attention to you and doesn't seem like they heard anything. Leave me in the box. Let them take me away from the school. Did you think this through? What do you know about it anyway? You've been here for two years and you want that all to be for nothing? Two years, three years, what does it matter? Even ten years here wouldn't get me anywhere. Do you have a kind of some kind of plan? I'm going to see my uncle. He'll help me find work. Okay, Mendes, it's your choice. Hmm. According to the plot, he ended up having a pretty good life outside the school. Oh, that's good. Well, so that's the missing student wrapped up. Two students are whispering excitedly to each other in the main hall. Did you hear? They found the wand thief up in the attic. Ah, it works. Okay, Whew. who was it? I don't know. I think it was one of the students. Both the headmasters are up there now. Let's go to the attic. Yeah. Truth is, you changed the plot a little with your actions, so I don't actually know how this ends yet. Ooh. Students turn to look at you. Up the stairs and into the classroom on the left. I know where it is. Let's go! The one door I haven't been able to get into. Yes, 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 yes. Let's go. Ooh, here we go! Anything I need to get? Nope. I don't see anything I can click on, so... What on earth were you thinking, you little idiot? Give me the wand. I'll deal with him myself, Mikhail. Let's just calm down for a second. If any of you take even a step in my direction, I'll break your stupid wand in half. I knew it was him, because he was too helpful. <laughs> You'll both get a piece. Except for you, Scarecrow. Hey, I thought we were pals. You don't know me. What's the janitor doing here? I heard noises. You may go. Your help is not needed here. I think I'll stay. Fine then. Those boxes back there are quite dusty. Get to work. 
I'm not a janitor. Who are you then? A plumber? Oh yes, are you here about the clock toilet? <laughs> I'm here for the wand. Another one. Why do you want it? Someone's going to pay me well for it. <gasps> Hold on. When you say they'll pay you well, how much is it? Clutches his chest. Shut up, I have the wand. And I'm the one who decides what will happen to it. All right. I was planning on deciding its fate quietly by myself, but now you're involved. Hang on, I understand us three, but why do you even want it? None of your business, stay where you are. Let's just calm down and- Nobody move! The old man suddenly pulls a revolver out from- <laughs> Fucking Gandalf with a gun. Starts waving it around in all directions. Either you give me back the wand, you little cretin, or you'll be sorry. Oh damn. Where the hell did you get a gun? Calm down, just calm down. I thought you were opposed to technology, old man. Give it to me. I would try and take the gun. Quickly take the revolver from his grasp. Mikael flinches, expecting you to attack him too. Stop waving that thing in my face. Hey, give that back. Mikael bends Cornelius' wand enough for it to crack slightly. At the same time, you hear an echoing noise ringing out from somewhere up above. Everyone freezes. Do you think this is a joke? I'm so sick of your sniveling. And your panicking, you little. And your weird head. Ah, <sighs> There's no more magic. We all realized that long ago, so stop clinging to the illusion that it's still around. I know why you care about this wand so much, old man. But it's time to move on. Stop being indecisive. Stop living in the past. And stop lying. Any last words from you three? You're gonna regret this. What do you think you are, you brat? Mikael turns his gaze to the new headmaster. I understand how you feel, and I also want to move forward, but can't we find a way to do that doesn't involve breaking wands? He only smirks in response and turns to you. Mm. Well, not the old one. He pulled out a gun. I guess, yeah. You should give it back. If magic is dying, then everything will happen on its own anyways. That's what I'm talking about. Why? I've had enough of this. Crack! Time stops. Your eyes fall on Cornelius' wand. First on one, then the other. They're both falling through the air. Why am I seeing two? Slowly it dawns on you. What are you talking about? The left and right halves of the wand land on the floor at Mikhail's feet. The old man stares at the floor, mouth open, unable to speak. The new headmaster sighs softly. Mikael looks at his hands where a few slivers of wood still remain. The wand is gone. So does this mean we failed the order? You start to hear a loud rumbling sound from somewhere up above. I don't know. The phone call from before pops into your head, the conversation about how it was absolutely essential that you complete this order successfully. The old man falls to his knees trying to piece the wand back together. You prod him aside with your foot and pick up what remains. Give it to me! The rumbling sound gets louder. What's happening? We need to go. The old man starts laughing loudly. The rumbling completely drowns out his laughter. We need to go! Mm. Did he destroy the whole world with that? Oh, the wand is gone. Hmm. Well, I guess we can deliver it broken. You taping it together? <laughs> well, that's one way to do it. <laughs> I would just deliver it broken, honestly. <laughs> that's funny. Awesome. Well, I sort of did it. Um. Because I had to look up what I needed to do to progress. I actually saw that it's basically impossible to get the wand not to break, so... I'm just gonna not overthink it too much. I can't explain what happened. You'd better see for yourself. <laughs> Bye, wand. My arm. Well, I guess that's it for that. 
<laughs> that was so funny. Well, here we go. Hello? What the hell were you thinking? <laughs> A month later. Yeah, they probably didn't like that, huh? <laughs> Trish facts. Oh, my head's killing me. Cornelius Paradox. What a heavy grunt. Got the lamp. Oh, phone! Hello. Leave me alone already. <laughs> me every phone call in my life. I heard you were having some problems with the client. Oh, it's you, Vince. Nah, nothing too bad. I can try and talk to him again if you want. I don't know. I feel like this work just isn't right for me. Hey, what are you saying? You have to do this and get your shackles removed. Your fans need you. And no, I'm just not sure this is the right path. It's bringing me nothing but suffering, and I'm not the only one suffering because of it. You just have to put up with this a little longer. Three more orders and you're done. Yeah, yeah. Hold on, did I ever tell you how many orders I had left? Yes, of course. Did you forget? Hmm, all right. Okay, I'll call him right now. Maybe he'll change his mind. All right. Don't call again. Wait, what's the question mark? Don't know. Thanks for joining me, friend. Ah! Hello? It's a shame you didn't even touch your drink. Oh, the, the painting. Fine. Hmm? I want to give you one more chance. You? I'm ready. Of course you're ready, you absolute moron. You're always ready. You failed me before and it's most unlike me to give you another chance. I still haven't gotten over your mishap with the wand, but I think we can come to a promise. A compromise. It's not an easy job and several of my guys ran into trouble there. I have to pull them out. They're not expendable, but you'd be perfect for this job. Judging by what you do in your spare time, you don't have much of a choice. So get going, the order is at your door. Try not to die. How do you know what I do in my spare time? Fine. Doorbell! Hello! Suitcase. Thank you very much. Okay, bye! <laughs> Put that there. A big old suitcase. Black River. Ooh. Oh, my lips really needed that. Um, let's check the mail in the door first. Bar tab. Red wine, cheese plate, broken wine glass, broken porcelain plate, broken decorative vase. What did you do? Broken bar stool? You broke everything. Did I get a new ability? Drain more ink, increase damage. Damage. Let's have a look. An excerpt from a review. However, drawing parallels between dogmatic faith and programmed AI commands is certainly an interesting exercise, especially for a subject that's already been done to death. Three out of five. Strange note, the contractor agrees to infiltrate Black River Drifters by Elena von Belro and extract an item. The sword Excalibur. The client agrees to pay the negotiated sum upon fulfillment of the contract. <gasps> We're gonna steal Excalibur? Are you ready to read? Ooh. Cool, cool, cool. Elevator lower deck. Ouch! Landing on a metal floor isn't all that great, I'm guessing. Oh, hi, Jack. I'm Roderick. Right. It's been so long. It's been a week, hasn't it? Like usual. Well, there was a little setback with the client. Is that booze I smell? Uh, no. I uh, just haven't washed this jacket in a while. Did you have problems because of the wand? Yeah, kinda. But we're back in business now. Today we'll be looking for Excalibur. The sword? Are you sure we're in the right book if we're looking for a medieval sword? We'll find out once we take a look around. Intruder alert! 
Identify yourself or you will be punished by the might of the seekers of the worthy. Uh, say your name. The voice is coming from a strange face on the wall that peeks out from the cables like a spider in its web. Etienne. Etienne, I shall hear the will of the worthy and decide your fate. Have patience. What the hell's going on? Short version is, this is a pilgrim ship. And they're very serious and strict, so cut it out with the jokes. I'm not making jokes. Shh. So where is Excalibur? And what's this worthy have to do with it anyway? What do you think the worthy is worthy of? Worthy of Excalibur? Mm-hmm. The worthy is the one who can pull the sword from the stone. They're flying around the universe on this ship looking for that person. I remember there was an old legend. Or tale? I think the new author was also working with the walkers to get the sword. And now it's our turn. The worthy has spoken to me. Finally. Tell me, Etienne, are you prepared to join us pilgrims sailing this black river in search of the worthy and give your life in pursuit of the goal? Yes. I, the navigator, greet you, Acolyte Etienne. Welcome to our temple and home. Now, get to work, as our ship requires constant inspection. Nice. Elevator, navigator, cells, cooling system. Where's the ship headed? We're exploring the vast reaches of the Black River in search of the worthy. Do you have any clues about where they might be? The sacred sword will lead us to them. When we find the worthy, they will draw the sacred sword from the stone and guide our people to a brighter future. So the worthy could be anyone, even me. Let me try. I know I'm the worthy you're looking for. First, you must prove you're worthy of attempting to prove that you're worthy. Uh, study truths, inspect the machinery, and help your brothers. That will guide you to gradual understanding of the truth that will unlock the path to the sword. No shortcuts for you. Can I see Excalibur? We cannot even discuss the sacred sword on the lower level of the ship. It is the most unholy part of our vessel. How do I get up higher? It's simple. You will ascend once you prove you are worthy. Ah. Okay. Cooling system. Cool. Cool that we're doing a sci-fi now. Container. Give me goods. Oh yeah. Thank you. What else we got? Hmm. Engine room. Oh, there's someone there. Oh, can't talk to them though. Cells are there. Another face on the wall. That's the engine. Or something else. Hang on. What's that sound? What's that? Oh! <gasps> Watch out! Damn! Acolyte Samsa, begin repairs immediately in the name of the worthy. Oh, elder brother, I cannot. What is your reason? I need help. You still have your limbs, that means you're able to do repairs. I can't stand. Is something pinning you down? I must have internal injuries, my ribs. I understand. You have lost faith in the worthy. May you not fear the disillusion on your path. Remove them from your brotherhood. Help the acolyte. Two steps bring you close to the wounded man. The acolyte's eyes are full of animalistic fear as he stares at the spot near the ceiling. Get his suit off. We need to assess his injuries. A bright red beam shoots out of nowhere, leaving a glowing glare on your retinas. When you manage to blink it away, you see Acolyte Samso's unmoving body has a clean hole burned through the back of his head. What the hell? Acolyte Etienne, begin repairs immediately in the name of the worthy. It will be done. He shot him. May the worthy gaze upon you and guide your hand as their own. You look at the panel by the ceiling that the beam came from, and your hands instinctively reach for the back of your head. Yeah, we should probably hurry with those repairs. Okay. Maybe the engineer has tools on him? Poor guy. You examine the body, trying to avoid looking at the head wound. You don't notice anything of interest. There's something in his hand. You unclench the dead man's hand and see an electronic access card. Unfortunately, the explosion damaged it. You take the still warm, partially melted access card. Can we activate a backup engine? All the equipment is decorated. 
You look at the glow inside the engine through a dense wave of heat. It's molten metal. You should hurry before the core melts. You lean forward and look into the engine's dark opening. Rubber hoses, metal pipes, pistons, and belts. Surprisingly, it all seems to be in good shape. Everything looks intact. So why is it heating up? I don't know. You reach for the closest moving part. As soon as your hand touches the metal, you pull your fingers back sharply and step away. Damn, that's hot. Maybe it's supposed to be molten hot? It's a spaceship engine, right? And that alarm is normal too, and these lights and flashing is just for the fun of it. Was it your hand that caused the engine temperature to increase? No. In the name of the worthy. Seems that the cooling system is out of order. Follow the lower hallway to the cooling center and try to determine the problem. Okay, so we go back. To the cooling system. Oh, this is on fire now as well! Hot steam is escaping from the broken pipe. Pipe is broken and the water is turned on. What do we do? Close the water valve. It's shut. Disconnect the broken pipe. Cools down fairly quickly and put it in your coat pocket. You'll have to replace it with a new one. Do I have one? No. Okay, we need to find a pipe. Or a workbench. Okay, we need to hurry. Maybe in the cells? Oh, there's a crate there. Maybe there's replacement parts in the crate. Nope. Okay. Maybe a replacement pipe in the cells? It's cool as a spaceship, but it still has like church like windows and stuff. Okay. Locked, locked. Repair module. Push the button. Put a broken pipe inside. Um, yes! Nice! Okay. It even recreated the rust on it. I guess that's how it looked before the explosion. Not bad. Ooh! The excess cart! Nice! Okay. Uh, you see a screen synthesis button. Object creation menu appears. Oh, that's my crafting thing now? So we can make a space multi-tool if we have five silver bars and then a bottle of ink if we find an empty bottle or more trash. Okay, that's different. Let's quickly put the pipe back in. Connect the repaired pipe. Uh, we need to open the water valve. Phew! So that should do it. Ah, yes. Okay, that's that fixed. Now we need to turn it on here, maybe? Let's see if that cooled it down. Engine isn't radiating heat like before. You can even touch the outer panels. Fix the cooling system, but it looks like it wasn't enough. Maybe there's some kind of button we need to push. You inspect the device with an experienced eye, but you don't see anything that even looks like a control panel, button, lever, or ignition keyhole. In the name of the worthy, I ask you to start the ending. Engine. It is not to me you should direct your prayers, Acolyte Etienne, but to the worthy. I am just their servant. Worthy, I pray start the engine. You clearly have not managed to learn the holy litanies yet, so I will help you. Repeat after me. By the will of the worthy, I pray for the flame to obey my will and activate this mechanism. Damn. Something inside the engine starts rumbling discontentedly, gaining momentum. Suddenly, a shrill noise fills the room. Acolyte, Acolyte Etienne, you do not have enough faith. Oh, come on. My faith is stronger than ever. I believe in the worthy with my whole heart, my whole soul, with every cell in my body. I believe. 
Suddenly a compartment opens on the side of the engine and with a soft hiss in a cloud of white steam, an empty compartment designed to hold a cylindrical flask appears. I speak of something else. Place a full vessel of faith in the compartment so that our temple may continue its journey. Is that some kind of fuel? It's something like fuel around here. Let's go look around. Maybe we can find somewhere to siphon some of this faith. Okay, we're not done yet. Gotta find some faith! Maybe in one of the cells. I have access card A. Okay. So we were just at door D. So this must be door A. Different weapons above it. Access granted. Ooh. Nice. Cryo capsule. A woman is lying in a tightly closed capsule, eyes closed and lips rapidly and soundlessly moving as she recites something. The woman looks absolutely exhausted, which makes it hard to guess her age. She could be 40 or, or, or 18. Oh. Wait, do they actually, by praying, fill faith capsules? Her outfit is an odd blend of medieval style and futuristic materials. Her hands are folded across her chest and she's holding something, but you can't see what it is. The capsule is full of electronic equipment and tubes leading from the woman to a glass vessel that is slowly filled up with a glowing liquid. Examine the liquid. This is what we're looking for. They call it faith. Is it coming out of her? Don't think about it. The vessel is almost full. You can take it. What will happen to her? You glance at the woman behind the glass screen. She'll be okay. You slowly pull the liquid out of the machine. The woman in the capsule pauses for a second. A new empty flask appears where the old one just was. The woman returns to her original state. I wouldn't disturb her. She's very busy praying. I think we can make that multi-tool now. Nice. Awesome. Cool, cool, cool. So whatever that multi-tool is for... You have absolutely no idea how this is supposed to work. Okay. <laughs> then we're on the same page. <laughs> uh, I got my bottle of faith. Try to remember the prayer yourself called the navigator. Do you remember how it went? Something about flame and mechanism. Oh, and don't forget the worthy. Let me just find that part. By the will of the worthy, I pray for the flame to obey my will and activate this mechanism. Wait, by the strength, by the will. Oh my god. I pray for the flame to obey my will and activate this mechanism. A roar starts building inside the engine, then suddenly bursts out. The piston starts moving. A steady hum fills the engine room. May the worthy bless you, Acolyte Etienne. The engine is working correctly again. Your work here is done. It is time for you to ascend. You start looking around nervously, bowing your head slightly. Ascension is to the right to climb higher to the middle level of the ship. You may use the elevator. And a sword, Excalibur. It's... The location of the sacred sword will only be made known to those who have proven themselves worthy of that knowledge. The navigator's voice is always cold and mechanical, but he says this phrase in an even colder voice. Well, let's go to the elevator then. Okay. Whew. At least the fire is out now. Oh, Nothing on them. Completely dead. So if we find access cards B, C, D, we should remember these cells. Do you wish to ascend to the middle level? Yes, I do. Now let's see what we can do here. Welcome to Earth, brother. Earth? We call the lower decks Hell, the middle deck Earth, and the upper decks Heaven? Correct. I see you have already studied our scriptures. If the will of knowledge guides you, visit the library on this floor. Okay, and is Excalibur there? Every acolyte who ascends from hell must first serve five human years on earth before they will permit it to touch the sword. What? 
Only after five years have passed can an acolyte grasp the higher, highest sacred truth, and then the worthy will permit them to ascend to heaven and touch the sword. Begin your service. Your five-year countdown has begun. <laughs> oh my god. Study truths, inspect the machinery, and help your brothers. Only routine will guide you to gradual understanding of the truth. We should look around and figure out a better plan. Okay. Fire extinguisher. An access card. Okay, nice. Maybe we can talk to the navigator again? <laughs> I really want to see Excalibur! I really want to! <laughs> <laughs> Was there a fire here? Oh, there is a fire here. Uh, use the fire extinguisher. There's damage here too. I guess the engine must have really flared up. Use the fire extinguisher. Nice. Compartments. Hatch won't open. Anything in there? The capsule is stuck, but you see a twisted chunk of metal keeping it from opening. If only you had some kind of tool. You find something on the multi-tool that kind of looks like a screwdriver and use it as a lever to move the piece of metal. Ooh. Nice materials. To hear the words of the past, recite the voice prayer. The, to lower the righteous sword, recite the sacrifice prayer. Okay, this is important. To alter the electric river's current, recite the spirit prayer. Took a picture of it. And there's a prayer there. If my hand, O worthy, prevents me from serving you, I will cut it off like a withered root. Let's write that down. I'll call it the sacrifice prayer. Are you sure you won't get them mixed up with such strange names? Can I look at them? Ah, uh, yeah. Okay, cool. Can I climb over this? No, I don't think so. Hmm. I'll definitely be able to get there somehow. But let's look around a bit more. So we came from here, and there's the cabins. And the round table room, cool. A controller. Another slot for Faith. I thought they only needed it on the lower level. Faith is what moves our ship forward. Without it, the search for the worthy would be impossible. It's needed on each deck of the ship, as well as in each stage of our lives. All right. Which prayer is this? May strength fill the part of my body that you require most of all, O worthy. Spirit prayer. Okay. Armory, kitchen, infirmary, and restroom. Okay, let's start the restroom. Ooh, another access card. Perfect. Toilets. Maybe there's something in there. Don't have to go right now. Get that fire extinguisher. Okay, I think that's it. We have A and B. Okay, cool. Wait, I thought I picked up another one. Oh, we have A, B, and C. Infirmary. Locked. Insufficient energy. Oh, so these will all be locked then. Okay. Well, we can go check out B and C in hell. Oh wait, I haven't been to the round table yet. Oh shit! Use the fire extinguisher. The device connected to the prayer chamber is on fire. You won't be able to get the vessel of faith. Use the fire extinguisher. Whoosh. The man inside shows no sign of life, just like the equipment surrounding the capsule. The flask of faith was filled up before the fire is almost unscathed. Nice. It really is a miracle that it's intact. <laughs> Whew. So this is the round table. That's so cool. I love this kind of stuff. I love that they add like a sci-fi twist to a classic story. 
Does one of them happen to be... No. These swords belong to the ship's crew. Excalibur isn't here. It's supposed to be sticking out of the stone, remember? Oh, right. Empty capsule. The chamber is empty. This is a hot... Youngest crew member you've seen so far is writhing in pain inside the chamber. The panel showing his vitals is blinking red, as is the panel showing the temperature inside the capsule. Use ice to cool the chamber. Okay. Examine the sensors. On the side panel, you notice that the thermometer is set automatically. It says controlled by the navigator. I guess the navigator has problems understanding what room temperature is. Okay, I'll have to... Elderly woman, she's dead. The flask that holds, that usually holds faith is empty. Old man inside the capsule. His whole body is shaking and his hands are grasping the chest of his suit as though he's trying to rip it apart. There's a phrase flashing on the panel. Heart failure, stabilizer injection required. A syringe, okay. A dead man lies motionless on the, in the capsule. The flask of faith is completely empty. Looks like the crew started to lose faith on their mission. After so many years of fruitless wandering, I'm not surprised. He's holding like a film reel or something. You open the capsule and as steam escapes, you can see that that dead man's hands are grasping a tape reel. Nice. Oh, just to listen to, okay. Middle-aged man, the flask that usually holds it is empty. Okay, so we have a couple things we need to find. Let's go try out our new access cards. Maybe if I help the people in the the cryo cells, I I get their experience, their years. Use card B. Unknown error. Access the night. Oh, what about C? Access granted. A locker, take those. Anything else? Completely empty. I don't think anyone's lived here for a while. Hmm, nothing else? Rope, this is all just ink. Oh, what's that? A rag. Good for wiping dirty hands. We do have a flask of faith. So we could go... Oh wait. We should do this. Nice. Um, we can go power the other rooms. Or at least one other room. Maybe the kitchen to get ice? Kitchen and armory. And infirmary. You must say a prayer. Uh, words of the past to lower the righteous sword to alter the electric river's current. So we need the spirit prayer. The worthy only talks to you. Why can't I hear straight from them? You ask the wrong questions, acolyte. acolyte. You must ask why you are not yet worthy. Worthy of the worthy. Does the author know what a tautology is? I don't. I specifically was created in the supposed image of the worthy, and therefore I received signals from them. You were created. I thought you were human. The worthy has declared their will. You may activate the device. Okay, thank you, oh worthy. Insufficient energy, energy limited functionality available. Let's do kitchen first. Nice. Let's go in there. Ooh, lots of food. That looks nice. Ooh, ice. Yay. Nice, nice, nice. Anything on the shelves? <gasps> A bottle. Yes. Frozen door. You see a huge metal door frozen shut at floor level. Looks like a freezer. You pull on the cold handle with your, all your strength, no result. Maybe there's a knife somewhere? 
A knife? Are you joking? You need a sledgehammer and a chisel to break this ice. Or an ice pick. Sure, there must be an ice pick around here, right? For all the space cli space ice climbing. It doesn't have to be an actual ice pick. Uh, how about your multi-tool? I think my neighbors all hate me now, but I'll try. Can't use your mirror. I guess I'll wake up. The game says we need to ask our neighbors. We probably have to ask our neighbors. Hello. Sorry, but I just remembered I forgot to give you back your key and I know we had an agreement, but I just had so much going on. Oh, I hear you again. It's my fault. I promised to bring back the key a really long time ago and I only came by today and it's also kind of broken. Tell the truth. The place where I work, if I bring outside objects in there, it's hard to bring them back again after. They sort of change and when I come back here, they dissolve. I knew he was a no good drug addict. Do you hear me, child? I told you that writer, he's a drug addict. Can't wait to move away from here. Hmm. Maybe this guy who wants his sledgehammer. Who's there? Etienne. Who? Etienne, your neighbor. <laughs> I see. Looking for a pickaxe. Do you happen to have one? A pickaxe? What the hell is going on in your apartment? Renovations. More renovations. Where's my sledgehammer anyway? And my shovel. They're fine. I just... I'm knocking down a wall and your sledgehammer got stuck in it. I borrowed your shovel to dig it out, but the shovel got stuck too. I think a pickaxe is just what I need to fix this. What an idiot. Let me go look. How do you have a pickaxe? Thank you. Ah, uh, color me surprised. Wow. He just has a pickaxe. And a sledgehammer. And a shovel. Well. The neighbors got it all. Let's try it. Here goes. Ice block. Ice is broken into tiny pieces. There's nothing useful inside. Okay. You break the ice, but all you find is frozen food. That might come in handy. What for? To cool something down later. You'll find out. Yeah, use the pickaxe. Swing it behind your back. Winding up, you release the pickaxe into the ice. You hear a loud cracking sound and a hefty chunk of ice flies straight at your face. Ow! Okay, well, we have our ice. Somewhere. Okay. Is it gonna run out of power or can I divert it again? Uh, infirmary. Not receiving the required amount of energy. No excess. Okay. Need to reduce the ship's energy consumption. What about the armory? Okay. So infirmary needs more power. Whoa! Ship's cannon. What's that? Ventilation shaft. Nice. Which prayer is this? And the voices of their disciples will resound along the Black River, from shore to shore, from source to mouth. Voice prayer. Okay. Lasers. Access card. The way forward is blocked by buzzing beams of energy. Okay. What if we go through the vents? Ooh. Part of a note. It underlines the fact that there was a sharp increase of suicides on Earth after our crew took Excalibur off the planet. Oh. Oh, so much stuff. You push the unlock button. <gasps> Cell B! Ah. We don't have card D yet, right? No. 
Okay, didn't exactly leave where I thought it would, but definitely cool. Flask of Faith. On the side of the massive cannon, you see a control panel. Fingers slowly reach towards the velvety looking black surface of the control panel. Are you sure that's a good idea? The tip of your finger slide across the screen. For the first second, it seemed like nothing is happening, but in the next second, a substantial static shock runs through your finger. Ow. As soon as you pull your fingers away, a message appears. Insufficient faith. The panel is inside a decorative metal frame with a floral motif. Motif. Runs on face. Yep. Cool. Okay, let's go bring the ice to the steamy cell or container or whatever. What is this? Cryo container? This guy. Yeah, cryo capsule. Use ice to cool the chamber down. You pour ice on the capsule. The ice sizzles and quickly starts melting. The temperature slowly starts to fall and as soon as it reaches a normal range, you open the capsule. The man's eyes are still close, but at least you saved him from suffocating in the heat. Let's let him get a little air. Take the flask. Nice. Thanks. Cool, we saved him. And we have another flask. I guess we could power the gun, but I, I don't see why we would want to do that, but... Let's try it. I mean, what else are we gonna do? Maybe we can actually use faith to turn it on and then to really shut it down. With a hiss, the flask of faith settles deep into the cannon. The panel starts flashing almost immediately. Blue and green symbols form patterns and then fly apart, forming several rectangular buttons. Try touching the words. That seems to be how they do it in the book. Touch the message and say a prayer. These greenish-blue rectangles are lit up on the weapon control panel. Status check. As you choose the second option, the screen goes black for a moment, then a chart appears on it. This cannon, cannon uses more than 20% of all the ship's energy. That's why we're going to turn it off. What's that number mean? The weapon's firepower. If it's to be believed, this weapon can destroy planets. Ooh. We should turn it off quickly. We need energy. Deactivate. As you choose the third option, you see a huge message that sh covers the whole screen. Prayer required. Which one should I say? Hmm, hard to tell. I'll look for something about the weapon or energy. Uh, hear the words of the past for the voice. Lower the righteous sword. Maybe? Maybe sacrifice. You hear a hiss and the control panel goes dark. The cannon has been deactivated. Yay! See, it wasn't that hard. Please be card D. Nice. And there's a crate there. Awesome. Container on the shelf attracts your attention. Is it just me or does it seem like there's something valuable in there? Should I check the text? It'll only take me 10 minutes. I'll do it myself. Use the tool. You examine the multi-tool looking for something that will help you, but you accidentally hit something that causes a red laser beam to shoot out from it. Whoa! Blinking, you see that the lock on the container has melted open. How'd you do that? What the heck did I push? You try examining the multi-tool from all sides, but you can't find anything that looks like a laser. Huh. Hey, we got our first bottle. Nice. Ah, we're on the other side. Awesome. Another audio reel. Maybe we can listen to it here. Can't open it. Jam. Empty. Okay. To activate the playback device, insert faith. Why is it always faith? I wonder if we can take it out of the gun? Deactivate it until a better time. Hmm. I guess not. Oh, this is a shortcut. <laughs> Let's make a bottle of ink. Nice. 
two bottles of ink. Nice. What have we got here? A container. Red light starts glowing on the device. Another one, exactly identical, lights up on the chest. Ah, how convenient. <gasps> A med kit. Nice. Big heels. Can't move those again. I was wanted to check the... Oh, wait. Yeah, someone had... Heart problems. Maybe we can use the med kit to help them. I haven't been to the infirmary yet, but oh, we do have enough power now actually for the infirmary. I wonder if this dude that was struggling. Oh, we need a syringe. Okay. And this one was dead, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's put power to the infirmary. Thank you. Ooh. Container, panel. Near the wall is a locked container labeled medicine. You find a long probe on a multi-tool that you might be able to use as a lockpick. As soon as you insert it into the lock, something clicks and the lock opens on its own. It picked the lock itself? <laughs> Another med kit and an empty bottle. Medical chair stained with something red. You're standing in front of a huge shelving unit. The control panel next to it is illuminated. The first thing you notice is three blue numbers in the middle of the screen. Okay, first number. Oh. Inside is made up of neat square compartments with different types of bottles in each one. Pick up the closest one and read the old fashioned paper tag. Dandelion leaf. Full medicine in the space age. It's empty. Okay, let's check the other ones then. Second number. Beep. Ooh, a box. Relics of the great martyr Reamer. Don't think it's a good idea to touch sacred rel relics on a ship where there's a crazy head that shoots lasers. <laughs> okay. Oh, I do want it though. Okay, we need to fix it. Sacred truth. Isn't that what the navigator was talking about to get to the top floor? Ooh. Okay, and then let's hope there's a syringe in the third compartment. Dozens of mean-looking metal syringes. Yeah! Stabilizer. I don't know how to inject people. You're lucky I'm a doctor. But actually, I guess you're not that lucky since I don't have hands. Oh, you remember something new about yourself. Yeah? Oh. Anyway, I'd feel more confident if it was some kind of spray or gel. Looks like you'll have to learn a new skill today. Fantastic. You carefully lift off one of the caps and take a syringe. It cools your skin and fits comfortably in your hand. Let's go back to the old man in the capsule. Okay, cool. Um, I think we have everything we need then. So let's go to him. This one? Or this one? Use the syringe. You're all ready to save the old man. Inject him quickly. I've never done this before. I don't think the needle can pierce the glass. There's a catheter there to the left under the panel. Just stick the needle in there and push out the medicine. A shiver of relief runs through your body as the medicine disappears into the capsule. The old man's condition starts improving before your very eyes. You cross your arms over your chest and wait. The old man's convulsions gradually stop. His breathing evens out and his fingers stop tearing at his clothes. He's at peace. We saved his life. Now can I take the flask? All right. We did well. Nice. 
Uh, let's go fix the tape. Let's see if we can fix it. Nice. Now we can listen to it in the library. Start that. Craft that. Nice. Awesome. Things are going well. Yes. To activate the playback device, insert faith. There you go. One faith. Uh, you must say a prayer. Okay. So to activate... Oh, words of the past. So that's the voice prayer. Thank you, O Worthy. It looks like we can use this machine to listen to audio reels recorded by members of the crew. There might be useful information on them. Just an ordinary audio player. Wasn't there anything like it in your book? No, although considering where we are now, nothing should surprise me. Let's start with one. You hear an old woman's voice coming from the crackling speaker. I remember reading an article criticizing our mission, even before we set off. I want to record the author's thoughts before I forget. He wrote about how the sword, which he blasphemously called a hunk of metal stuck in a stone, led to the idea of dividing us into worthy and unworthy. Gradually, people who understood that their chances of being found unworthy were extremely high found ways to avoid the test, coming up with crazier and crazier excuses to keep from being stigmatized as unworthy. This hunk of metal, which allegedly got stuck because of shifting stone slabs, caused a general acceleration in the development of interplanetary travel, which eventually led to our departure. However, sometimes I, even I begin to wonder. The recording cuts out. Number two. Warning, the material you're about to listen to was recorded on Earth, and we consider it to be against our faith and our mission. You hear a middle-aged man's voice coming from the crackling speaker. <clears throat> in my attempts to analyze the influence of faith on our technology, in lights of recent events, I came upon an interesting detail. After all, behind all technologies stands the Lent machine, which has a proven 2% error rate. That means that there's a 2% chance that the base algorithm that every machine, every computer is built on is capable of making a mistake or failing. The uncertainty and unpredictability that this fact imposes on seemingly faithful and reliable machines creates space for superstition. What if I pray and the mistake doesn't happen? What if I perform a ritual, cross my fingers, and the mistake doesn't happen? The recording ends. Okay, restored reel now. You hear an old man's weak voice. O oh, worthy, I pray to you. It is not your strength I desire. All right, you write the words on a piece of paper. But the responsibility that fails on one who is bold enough to raise a blade above themselves. The voice cuts out, then you hear the sound of the elevator opening and the navigator's voice from far off. Is this the sacred truth that the navigator was talking about? If it is, then we won't have to work here for five years. All right, let's go to the elevator. I think we'll be allowed to go up to the sword now. Ooh, amazing. I think I did everything. We have the reels, the prayers, the cards are done. We have med kids, healing. Damn. I think I'm good to go. I hope you... I believe I have grasped the sacred truth. I'm listening, Acolyte. Clear your throat, glancing surreptitiously at the paper in your hand. Oh, worthy, it is not your strength I desire, but the responsibility that falls on one who is bold enough to raise the blade above themselves. Silence. That is indeed the sacred truth. It must be understood by those who decide to touch the sword and be declared worthy. I am amazed that you were able to grasp it in such a short time. I am prepared to uplift you. Are you sure you're ready? Nothing left undone? I'm ready, yeah, I think so. It shall be done. I feel like I got everything and I... There might be some ink that I haven't processed, but... Ooh, chapel gate! Server room. Looks locked with the red light, but let's check. Door's locked. Sign on it says, Supreme Navigator. 
Oh, I'm so excited. Let's see it. Oh. Acolyte Etienne. What now? You said we could touch the sword. That is true, but you have given a more important task right now. Go to the navigator's cabin. You notice a panel sliding back on the wall to reveal a weapon hidden behind it. That looks familiar. I'm going, I'm going. Oh, the wet. He's gonna shoot you in the head. Oh my god. Ooh, server room. What is this? Um, navigator? This thing's huge. Why did you summon me? Well, besides to kill me, obviously. I need you to change the ship's course. Change it? Can't you do that yourself? I do not have the authority. Only the crew members can confirm the decision to go back. Go back? But what about the search for the worthy? Most of the crew has lost faith in our goal. Is that why you killed them? I simply made several harsh decisions based on purely eco economical reasons. To reserve food and oxygen for the most useful crew members. Listen. The only thing I'm interested in is the sword. I'd... I permit you to touch it if you confirm our course change. It, yeah, it doesn't affect me anyway. What do I need to do? First, confirm your bloodline by stating your ancestral code. Code. Uh, none of the characters ever say a code in the text. Hold on. Uh, I, uh, forgot my code. If you do not remember your code, state the name of, of your ancestors and I will confirm the code from the database. I doubt I'm in there. Then how did you get on the ship? If you are on the ship, you're part of the crew. You are an acolyte. There can be no outsiders here. If you're part of the crew, the computer starts to give off a wisp of smoke. You must have a lineage or else you would not have been accepted onto the crew. Uh, fight? Can't there be an exception to your rules? There are no exceptions. The conclusion is simple. You are a member of the crew who refuses to confirm their lineage. That means you're in opposition to our mission, which therefore means you must be eliminated. Well, I'd say that's not far from the truth. Oh my god. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. You have 20 health. Okay. His next thing is summon, so let's just start with a slash. Three, nice. Oh, oh my god. Okay, three are set to hit me. Let's do a stun, so we hit everything. Okay, good. Electrify. Let's do another stun and then a drain. Nice! Oh, this is going so well! Now slash. Oh! 10 health down! I haven't even been hit! <gasps> Do a stun quick. Awesome! I need to drain though. Oh, or. Yes! Ho ho ho! Let's slash him. Let's see what Electrify does. I have healing items, so. Okay. Oh, we're doing so well! What if I just finish him off now? Oh, the guns are still alive. Wait. One damage to others. Nice! That was everything. Wow, that went so well! Sinner, the worthy will punish your soul. The navigator's core flares up from within. Sinner! Sinner? Sinner. Sin. The navigator's voice cuts out in the middle of the word. Suddenly a siren starts sounding. Get to the sword now! He awakened the whole crew and they'll be here soon. Reserve power activated. Total system reboot in three minutes. Hurry! Nothing there? Okay, go, 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 go. Yeah. Go, 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 go. Warning, Sinner on upper deck. He's already back up. No time to waste. Head for the sword. Go, 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 go! Ooh. Oh my god, get it, get it, get it! Control panel. Can we... Uh, locator system to find life in the universe. Ooh. Pull it out. Use your multi-tool. <gasps> They'll break through any minute. Sword draws your full attention. 
The majestic hilt gleams in the light, and the sharp blade disappears into the thick stone. I'll try and use my hands to pull it out first. Right, maybe out of all the people in the world, you're the worthy one. You lower your head, take a deep breath, and walk up to the stone. That was sarcasm. Find another way to get the sword out quickly. Your hands feel like they're filled with strength and light seems to flash inside you. You're wasting time. I am worthy. What are you mumbling over there? Can't we use a laser or something to cut it out of the stone? I am worthy. Your legs lead you forward of their own accord. Your hands grab the sword's hilt and it fits perfectly. It's your sword. All you have to do is pull it out and damn it. Your muscles burn but the sword doesn't have move an inch. Try jiggling it. There's no way it can be stuck so tight in this damn stone. You jump up onto the stone, grabbing the sword's hilt. You use your full weight to try and move Excalibur back and forth. They're getting desperate to blow up the whole ship. High-pitched squeal from behind the door drowns out the siren's wail. They remembered that they have an automatic chainsaw. Now we really don't have time. Damn it all. Use the rag, use the metal parts, or a pickaxe. <gasps> I would use a pickaxe, but I'm worried it'll break it. A rag? Metal parts doesn't make sense. The rag doesn't make sense. I would use the pickaxe to break the stone. A big ragged chunk falls off the floor with a crash. That's kind of unfair, but pretty efficient. Shouting get behind the door gets louder. Pickaxe striking. The sword lurches forward. You throw your pickaxe aside and manage to catch it at the last second. There are still bits of stone on the blade, but all in all, Excalibur is free. You're fast! Seems like the stone got pretty worn out over the course of the journey. You try to raise Excalibur triumphantly, but it's too heavy. Besides, the saw sharp teeth are tearing apart the thick steel door right before your very eyes. Time to get out of here? Time to get out of here. Woo! -hoo -hoo, we got it! What does it look like? With bits of stone still on it. Oh my god! <laughs> I mean, yeah, if you're not worthy to... Nice. I mean, they can take off the fine bits, right? Oh my god, we did it. That was awesome. That was a really fun one. Okay. Let's go deliver it quick. No phone calls, please. I'm busy. Delivery! I sure did. Awesome. <laughs> there you go. I need to get some sleep now. I'm exhausted. Does anyone know if you're watching this and you know of like a cool book that combines like classic with sci-fi let me know hello i've read um oh god i always forget the title i've read one where it's like titanic in space it was so good i think it was dead silence yeah dead silence by barnes is really really good i know titanic in space sounds crazy but it was so good etienne you called did something happen i called you yeah, I was away for the weekend, but when I came back, there were 15 missed calls on my machine. I figured something must have happened to you. Oh, you were drunk calling. I'm sorry, I don't know what came over me. I apologize for bothering you. Don't worry about it. Goodbye, I guess? Yeah, goodbye. Hmm. Oh, time to... Oh, the order has been accepted. You may go. There was no envelope. What envelope? You know, the one with money inside that you usually give me? Last time you ruined an order that cost me 600,000 pounds. How much? And you think I'm gonna pay you for that? Think of it as compensation for my losses. Hold on, you paid me a thousand per order. That still leaves you with so much money. That's all I have to say. Ugh. Time to sneep. Put the lantern away. Yeah. I still think someone's gonna be standing in that window at some point. In the other building. 
Complete book four. Nice. A week later. <sighs> hmm. What a wonderful day. How do you know? You can't even see the sky. I'm coming, I'm coming. Hello? Hey, I moved my desk. There's a job. I'm ready. Anything else? No. The order's at your door. Sure is strange today. <laughs> One sec. Hmm, increase damage on the stun or interrupt enemy action. Well, doesn't it already interrupt the enemy action? I think a bigger interrupt. That's why I use the stun. Nice. Mr. Quist, I would like to congratulate you on your purpose purchase of an apartment. You were not the best of renters and were constantly late with payments. However, when you told me you were prepared to purchase the entire apartment, I was overjoyed. I'm delighted that you have a new source of income since, as far as I understand, you no longer write for a living. Seems you made the right choice. I wish you good luck. Huh. But they didn't pay me the last job, did they? It's easy to get a new one. Yeah, everything looks a little nicer. Ah, that's what I was looking for. My, <laughs> I'm waiting for a notification on my groceries to be delivered. Excer excerpt from a review. Fresh and original as always. Nowadays, there really aren't enough authors who are this original and can also release new books so fast. Timeless Mansion? Oh! We going into a spooky one? Strange note, the contractor agrees to infiltrate Timeless Mansion by Helena Roberti and extracts an item, the Cursed Clock. <laughs> the client agrees to pay the negotiated sum upon fulfillment of the contract. Oh, let's go! Spooky time, spooky time, spooky time. Yes, yes, yes. Abandoned Mansion. Oof. Finally, I landed on something soft. Ahem. <clears throat> Maybe too soft. Ew. How did it go? I think successfully nabbing Excalibur really redeemed me in the client's eyes. So now you'll get an easier job? No more killer robots? I hope so. We're supposed to find a clock. That doesn't sound too complicated. Ready to get started? Oh, -ho -ho! <laughs> Dude, this is so excited! Show me the house. Whoa! Hey, it's cute! Etienne? Are you okay? Yeah. Oh my god, I'm so excited! <laughs> Amazing! Basement door? Is it open already? What the? Oh! Somebody just ran out! Oh god, oh god! A woman runs past you without even glancing at you. I trapped him! I trapped the monster! Run away! Monster? So the jobs didn't get easier. Should we try the front door first? Locked from the inside. Okay, basement it is. Whoa, ruined staircase, door, water pipes. Steps collapsed under their own weight. Old rusted pipes run along the walls. One of the pipes is dripping. Actually, the water is full on flowing out of it. Hmm. Are you the monster? Damn, girl, get back here and let me out. I'll find you and your friends, too. Do you really think this cage can stop me? Is this the monster? Who are you? Damn. Etienne? Wait, Etienne. The man's eyes seem to burn through you. You look away, but not before noticing that the man's hands are trembling with anger. I think we should get out of here quickly. Stop right there, you bastard. Answer me, what did you do with Amanda? Where is my wife? Hold on, what does this all mean? Yeah, wait, what? How does he know you? Cell door. Let's go up the stairs. Bye.
The window is boarded up tight. Door to the hall. Locked door. Do we need a crowbar? Key. Okay. Ooh. Hey, isn't that the guy in the cell? Can't go up there. This is a clock. Why does that fellow in the basement know you? This book! I wrote it! Oh, <gasps> You're a horror writer? Nice! What do you mean? I created this mansion, but I was arrested before I had a chance to finish it. So how did your client get this book then? But we've only been stealing from books that are on the market. I imagine the rights to it went to my publisher and they decided to have another writer finish it. So that's why the dreadful man in the basement knows you. You created him? Yeah, but not like that. It was the story of a generous aristocrat who lived in a beautiful mansion with his wife. You definitely wouldn't catch me writing about a murderer in a blood-soaked basement. Do you think the new author changed a lot? I think so, yeah. Who is this Amanda he mentioned? Is she here too? She's not here anymore. It's better if we talk about that later. This clock wasn't meant to be here either. Let's take a look since it's what we're here for. See an ancient clock. The steel frame around it is covered in small inscriptions, some of which are impossible to make out. There's something written here. The clock master's lifetime, something something, with the time on the clock itself. Too bad it stopped. I'm guessing we need to bring back a working clock? Etienne? Yes, a working one. You notice three huge holes in the mechanism. Three gears missing. We'll have to search the mansion. Well, you should know your way around here pretty well since you created it. Are we at the end of the book? That's right, the plot ended and the heroine managed to lock the monster in a basement and escape. Nothing else happens in the plot after this. Happy ending! We need to go back to somewhere on page 150 or so. That's where the mansion will be in the best shape for us to search it. Even the staircase is in ruins right now. I didn't know you could do that. Are we going to jump between pages? Jumping is the easy part. The hard part is landing on the same spot on another page. If I miss or land up or end if I miss or land uh, land up between pages without my powers it could end badly. Should we risk it? Not yet. Let's look around. Okay, we're working our way towards crowbar parts or a lockpick, pliers. Okay, so these is, this is the usual uh, portrait. Portrait of the house master before he changed. This was the room for entertaining guests. Looks like the master of the house became less social and his definition of entertainment changed too. Nice. Cut the twine. Old dusty parcel is lying on the table. Okay. That's a big portrait. I think it's hiding a door. Hmm. I guess we can't do that yet. Can we unlock the entrance? Nice. Can we go to the side of the house? No. Okay. Um, I guess we won't be able to get there. Yeah. This has not been- time has not been kind to the staircase. We really should check the second floor. That's where the monster has his study. So the gears we're missing might be there. What do we do? I think the easiest way to prevent the staircase from collapsing in the first place, since we can move between pages. Hmm, that's what we'll do. Okay, let's jump then. I think it worked. We're on page 120. It's a little more pleasant, don't you think? You don't want to keep doing this, do you? I can't just cancel. Don't really have a choice. 
Do you think the client knew this was your book? I don't think... No, I don't think he would think about it. Help me, let me out. Who's that? Another victim? Let's go find out. Okay. Maybe someone else in the... Hey, anybody? Jonathan, guys? Uh-huh. Cool, so much stuff now. Hmm. Cool. Is anybody there? Help me, Jonathan? Voices coming from behind those shells. I hear it. Windows boarded up tight. Young woman. Who are you? Here to help. My hands. Handcuffed. How did you end up here? My brother and I were looking for something. Oh, Jonathan, he's still around here somewhere. Promise me you'll find him. I promise. By the way, you haven't seen any gears around here, have you? Big ones for a clock? Hmm, no, sorry. It's okay. Although, when I was searching the study upstairs, I found a secret compartment in the desk, but it was empty. What do you mean, searching? Did I say searching? I must have misspoke. Alright, I'll check it out later. Hmm. Oh, I took off her handcuffs. Nice. Well, I think it's time to get out of here. I'll take care of your brother. Girl nods briefly. She looks around the room for a second and with, with barely noticeable disappointment disappears behind the door. More of your characters? They seem fairly well written. Really bad at lying, though. I don't know her. Plain writing desk. Nothing of interest. Not in this time, at least. Ooh. Okay, well, the girl's free. Check the basement. No one in there this time. And a locker. You look at the empty cell. The scratches on the floor and chain hanging, chains hanging from the walls make this a frightening place. I wonder where our monster is in this time. I think we're better off not running into him. It looked like he was ready to kill you right there and then. Do you think the new author made him like that? Nothing's changed there. Oh. But he's not supposed to hurt the other characters. And this change in him bothers me. Nice. Hmm, crowbar. Okay. Stairs are still broken. Here's what's ruining the staircase in the future. It looks like there is a water pipe leak. The pipes are indeed leaking badly. The smell of the dampness lingers in the air. You examine the small crack in the pipe. You instinctively clench your fist, preparing to yourself from the... Okay. Yeah, sure, you sink. We just need a little bit. It's not a huge hole. You place a small drop of your ink on the crack in the pipe. The ink slowly takes on the appearance of properties of metal. Come on, faster. I think that's it. The crack's gone. Whew. Are you alright? Yeah. It's best not to show what you see to Roderick. You push your sleeve, wet with blood, back into place. We should go check the staircase in the future. I hope this works. Ooh, nice. Okay. Did I finish checking everywhere, though? I might be able to make the crowbar or the pliers. Hmm. And a kitchen. No, I still need more. Okay. Can I go here? Ooh. Oh, this was the kitchen we were in. Okay. Burned papers. Pick the lock. Ooh, okay, so we need everything. Lockpick, pliers, and a crowbar. Master's clearly not a most modest man. Okay, well, I don't see anything else. 
Wait, the cabinet is still interactable? Oh, right. Because the lockpick. So... Clock again? Oh, no, wait. We haven't been up here. Nice. Box. Empty box that smells like tobacco. One of the master's letters. It's an invitation to a ball hosted at his mansion. He's a vampire. This is the mansion's ma mansion, mansion master's study. It's so sparse. Apparently, whoever rewrote your book didn't know much about creating pleasant settings. Hmm, I don't think it's all that bad. Oh. <laughs> the gears won't fit the clock. Nice. Anything there? Ooh, good, good. Okay, lockpick again. Search the desk. All documents are scattered across the desk and the desk's only drawer is completely empty. Nothing here. Secret compartment. You notice the bottom of the drawer has a strange edge. Press lightly on the bottom and discover an impressively large secret compartment. This could fit a gear. It could if someone had put one in here. Oh, so later. Yeah. Interesting. Anything else? No? Okay. We have a bunch of new supplies. That's good. Now I can surely make something. <gasps> All of them. Okay, there were two lockpick things. So I think I'll start with that. Oh, and I can still make the crowbar. Nice. Okay, so crowbar and lockpicks. Let's see. Let's start with this. Goodies. Then up here. And then the crowbar, I can't really remember. It was maybe the basement? I know there was somewhere I could get it. Not there. Maybe the boxes? Yeah. Nice. Bread and mushrooms. And now I have more tools, so I might be able to make the last thing. And then we can time travel again? Because now the stairs shouldn't break in the future. Nice. That was a ton. Oh no, we still need metal pieces and tools. Gotcha. Go to 2000. Hey, look, it worked. The staircase is fixed. Let's go see what's left of the second floor. Cool. That's so cool. Okay, pieces of metal. Very good. A small table. Ooh, yes, yes, yes. Rubble. We see an old chest of drawers. Pry apart. Nice. Got some stuff. Let's see. Another cabinet. Ooh, yes. Now I might be able to make pliers. Examine the secret compartment. Press lightly. Open it. Bingo! Take the gear! Nice! Our first gear! Let's put it in the clock, and then we'll look for the rest. Also, we have to save the girl's brother, we should, who should be somewhere in the past. So much to do. This is awesome. Spooky mansion? <gasps> oh! Who is this? A man is standing in the hallway, holding a strange walkie-talkie and flipping various levers on it. Maria, come in! Damn it, Maria. The only sound coming from the walkie-talkie is static. The man taps it angrily, as though hitting it will help. Damn, I think he's... The man suddenly turns around and you see that his face is made of paper. <gasps> Stop right there! Oh shit. Breathing heavily, measuring you with his eyes. He raises the walkie-talkie to his face. 
For the record, during routine patrol, Sergeant Kiko Brights encountered an unlicensed bookwalker. To hell with you! Mm, how can I help you? State your name at the very least and remove your disguise. Why the hell aren't you saying anything? State your name! Hmm. My name is Robert Potter. I mean, James. Yeah, James Potter. I mean. <laughs> For the record, the unlicensed bookwalker refuses to state his name and is lying to the officer. He also is concealing his face behind a mask. Take it off right now. Maybe it's best if we do what he says. If he finds out who I am, he'll find me in reality and that'll be the end of me and you. I think you would have to fight him. Keep lying. I don't know what the problem is, officer. I'm a licensed walker. I'm here by order of my publisher. Oh yeah? And who is this publisher that sends their employees into books that haven't been pulled from stores? Well, we have a special kind of publisher. The man starts striding towards you, unbuttoning his uniform jacket as he approaches. You raise your fists, preparing to defend yourself. It's too bad Mariah's not here. She really loves beating up thugs like you. For the record, commencing neutralization. Oh, disable skill. Yeah, let's not let him do that. It. Maybe shield that? Did that still hurt me? No, I don't think so. He's gonna drain my ink. Well, there's not much to drain, buddy. I'm gonna drain you! Mm. Strong hit. No, let's not. Sorry, buddy. The man looks at you angrily. Damn you! Fine, Maria will deal with you later, thief. The man instantly disappears as though he was never there, but the bruises on your body say otherwise. Damn, this is really bad. I can imagine. Disobeying the writer's police is one thing, but fighting? Attacking a police officer plus stealing from a book that is still under license? It's not 30 years, of course, but you could get definitely up to six, five or seven. So not even close to what you were accused of. What in the world did you do, Etienne? Hold on, you also said you hadn't finished the book when they arrested you. Which means something happened here in this mansion. And it has something to do with the mansion's master and someone called Amanda. How about we get down to business before the policeman gets here with backup? Uh, oh yeah, wait, no, I've been here. There. We can put in a gear. Oh wait, let me create some stuff first. Nice. Oh, now we have everything. Oh, where did I need the pliers? It was like a bundle of boxes? I think it was... Oh wait, insert it. Nice. Furious cries of the mansion master coming from the basement. You think that will help you, Etienne? You don't even know what the clock does. How did he know we were... We need to find the other two gears, but let's speed things up a little. I feel really uncomfortable here. Thought you'd be glad to be back in here. No, I'm not. And this isn't my book anymore. They twisted and destroyed everything they could here. I wish I could burn the whole book to ashes. Ashes. All right, let's start with the girl's brother. Maybe he knows something, since as far as I can tell, they investigated all this already. We didn't see him in the past. Can you jump even earlier? Yeah. One sec, though. I need to remember where the pliers were. Oh, here. Whew. Found it. Think there's something useful in there? Yeah. Pretty useful. Okay. Now we can go. Now my mental checklist is done. Uh, yeah, let's head to 9090. Let's go earlier. Whew! I guess today's our lucky day. So many jumps and we're still in one piece. Maybe it's because you're skillful? Hmm? Stop it. Sorry, I'm just trying to lighten things up a little bit. Thanks for trying. Okay. 
barrels. Let's have a look there. Smell like wine. Hmm, can't go upstairs at all. Anything here? Nice, thank you. One of the master's letters. It's charred and it's addressed to his lover, Amanda. A niche. Thanks. What's this? There is supposed to be a passageway here. I guess the master is building a secret room. The mansion's master wouldn't tear down this wall himself. He's a well-off aristocrat. His servants should be around here somewhere. It's probably their work. I don't see any servants in this time. Looks like the new author took them out of the plot. Do you think they put them in another book? Of course not. No one in their right mind would take a character out of a book. That breaks one of the most serious writer's law. They probably just got erased. Whoa. We need to search this place in different times since there might be a secret passage here. Alright. Take the planks. Nothing else? Okay. Then... The hallway. Oh, no basement door there either. Hmm. Cut the rope. Nice. I like me some healing. Locked from the inside. Huh, not much I can do here. What's the outside look like? Locked. Mm. Uh, let's go back to 1995. Maybe check the painting. Painting caught my eye right away. I figured there must be a hiding place behind it. Why didn't you say something right away? I don't know. Well, we definitely know what's hiding behind the painting. Now, how do we open it? You look behind the painting and see that it's mounted on vertical runners that set into the wall. I think it slides upward. You push gently and the picture slides upwards. Ooh. Easy. Oh, Jonathan? Teenage boy is standing in the middle of the room, covering his face with his hand in fright. Hey, let's talk. Don't kill me. We're not associated with your kidnapper. Are you Jonathan? Yes. Kid lowers his hands. Well, we kind of are, but not in the way you think. Damn, that's a cool mask. I told everyone we should wear a mask for this job too, but they just laughed at me. Sister asked me to find you. I don't have a sister. Hmm, that's what she told us. Hold on, was she a short girl, Samantha? She's still here? No, we helped her get out. It was her idea to rob the mansion. She promised us there was a ton of loot inside, but all we found was rotting walls and that psycho. How many of you were there? Six, but three ran away right at the beginning, and we saw him kill one. Whoa. I'd say they definitely did some work on your character here. He's not mine anymore now. You can still fix him, right? I'm afraid not. So you're thieves? Ah, uh, not really. We're more like... Hmm. Well, yeah, we're thieves. Okay, I'm something of a thief too. Whoa. By the way, have you seen any gears? Big ones around here? Gears? No. Are they valuable? Not really. If you check the desk with the secret compartment in the storage room already, then check the master's study. I think he hid something in both places. We actually already found the gear in the master's study, but not in the storage room. He got this crazy thing set up with double false bottom. A double false bottom? First you open the false bottom and then there should be another one under that. Ah. Oh. Time to go back and check out the double false bottom and quickly. You untie the kid. Thanks! Okay, so we need to check the desks again. He was keeping a lot of people here, wasn't he? <gasps> no, not again. Familiar dark blue police uniform. However, the woman in this uniform seems completely calm and collected. I'm Sergeant Maria Glowitz. Oh, you're under arrest on suspicion of plagiarism and attacking a police officer. I advise you to stop resisting and come with me. And if I don't, then I will have no choice but to use force. Well, in that case, I apologize for making you use force. <laughs> 
Okay, let's not let her disable a skill. Mm, a strong hit is fine. Because we have full health. Let's just get it done quick. Oh, missed! Nice! Lucky me! Oh, two. Okay, well, let's do that. Maria's breathing heavily. She's leaning to the side but manages to somehow keep her balance. This isn't over, thief. The whole police force will come looking for you. Before you can blink, Maria disappears from the book. Are you alright? I've been better. Uh, let's eat a bread and have an ink. Perfect. Let's go check out that desk. With the double-double. Maybe I should make another uh, ink bottle if I can. Yes. Okay, let's go to the study. The double double. Nothing of interest. Hmm, you sure about that? Oh, maybe this desk. No. So we need to be in the other time. I guess we did fix, fix the desk, yeah. Or the stairs, I mean, sorry. Yeah, because that's the basement. Uh, 2000. Oh yeah, it's a hall with a locked door and then a basement. We can also check the kidnap room. The prison room in this time. Nothing of interest? But he said there was a double-double. Double trouble. Double bubble. Painting was taken down from rusty metal runners and is now leaning against the wall. You see a door behind the painting, but you won't be able to open it while the painting's in the way. Move it. Extremely heavy. Can't pick it up, but you managed to pull it forward and move it to the side. Nice. Anything here? Ooh, herbs. Metal. Ooh, stack of letters. Etienne Quist. Oh! A charred love letter addressed to Amanda by Etienne. What? What happened here? Still smells like pine forest. So we can use the wood somewhere. Ooh, maybe we can um, bar the door. In the basement. You watch the man hit the door of the cage over and over with bare hands. Each blow injures his hands, but the wounds quick quickly heal. He didn't have powers like that before. It's the clock. Remember what the inscription said about how it's connected to its master? While the clock is stopped, nothing can hurt him. Ah. Either that, or he was born with inhuman regenerative abilities. Soon, Chen. This door isn't as sturdy as you might think. Soon we'll have a nice little chat face to face. You'll pay for everything you've done to me, for Amanda, and for abandoning me here. Well, I guess I can't do anything else. What about here? Because we can't get in here. Oh. Yeah, we can in this time. Oh, this desk. Oh. Yeah. False bottom bottom. Check in the past. Okay. Okay. But I was wondering about the basement. So I've checked everything here. Locked. Okay, so in the other times we can't get outside. So 
So what time are we in right now? 99? 95. Uh... I don't... I thought I was locked in the other times, but let me see. Locked from the inside. Oh, window with balcony. <gasps> Can we use the plank? Can you jump it? You look down through the hole at the dried up thorn bush. Fix the balcony. Hope it holds. Nice. So that's where we use the plank. Plain writing desk stands against the wall. So if we assume the author rewriting someone else's book is part isn't particularly intelligent, then it's obvious. Another false bottom. You feel around inside the drawer, but you don't find anything. Check another time again. Maybe we should search the other rooms. We haven't checked them all. Examine it more closely. Remember what the kid said about the double false bottom? Ah, there it is. One lesser gear to find. Let's put it in. I think we should take that. Yes. Nice. That's how we get the key. Ah. So now we can get in this room in the latest time. 2000. Let's put in the gear. We should go to the latest time to, so to put the gears in. Okay. Then 2000. Insert gear. Now we just need to find a third one. Okay. You asked about Amanda, the wife of the maniac in the basement. But there's some things I was able to figure out using my powers of deduction. Hmm? So you created Amanda and her husband and the cute little story of their cozy backwoods mansion. And then you and Amanda started to get, well, close. What gives you that idea? Back when we were in the car, you told me you always tried to make your characters realistic and well-developed. And my guess is that Amanda turned out exactly that way. Hmm, your powers of deduction or whatever you said are pretty good. But then you took Amanda somewhere, and that's the part I don't understand yet. Where could you have taken her? There's no trace of her in the book. You didn't. You took her out of the book? I'm... I get it. The thing you thinks you do for love, but... Do you realize you're not just messing with writer's laws, but with more serious laws, human laws? I'm paying the price for that now. You raise your shackled wrists. In any case, we both knew what we were against, what we were up against, and what would happen to us. So that's what they arrested you for? 30 years for what you did? Broke one of the most serious writer's laws? Extracted a character who then turned into a real living human? <gasps> Where is she now? Do you live with her? In the end, we broke up! Despite everything you went through. Indeed, so getting back your ability to write. It's probably the one thing in my life that I can at least try to fix. So that's why you agreed to take on these jobs. Uh-oh, did the cell door break? Oh no. Lose something, Etienne? The mansion's master is holding the final gear. Damn it. So where's Amanda? The man is trying incredibly hard to stay calm, his head tilted. Oh, that's the one we called! The lady we called on the phone! <gasps> Where is my wife? The man pauses for a second, tilting his head to the left. I can't be forgetting her. I can't. We don't need to bring up Amanda. Just let me try and help you. Let me try and rewrite you the way you were before. Are you sure? What about your shackles? Damn, you're right. The man continues to rub his temples, his eyes unfocused. I remember her, with you, and now I can't find her anywhere. At the same time, his minor attack of confusion passes and his anger rises up in its place. Bring her back! I can't. You stole Amanda from me and left me here alone. Then someone else came and did something to me. I didn't want to kill anyone, but this, this is a different part. You notice his clothes are stained with fresh blood. Wait, why do you have... That girl, did he get to her? Clenching his teeth. Damn thugs, I'll never forgive them for what they did to you. You're supposed to be... The blow hits you in the chest. Oof! 
Etienne! The man tucks the gear away in his shirt, then he starts cracking his knuckles. Let me try, maybe I can rewrite at least something in you. Oh, don't worry. I don't need help. I certainly enjoy my newfound powers. Ooh. Okay, he's trying to disable a skill, so let's stun him. Ouch. Slash him. Ooh, let's heal. <gasps> Dude. He's doing another... Mm, yeah. I should be able to survive that. He heals? Well, I guess I heal too. <laughs> oh, he's... Oh, he missed. Oh, thank God. He missed again! Please do three damage. Yes! Is that all you got, bastard? The man's injuries start healing before your very eyes. At the same time, you hear the gears in the clock making a clanking sound. It's as though they're trying to start working, but can't because the last gear is missing. What the... Remember what I said about the inscription on the clock and how it's connected to its master? I figured that out. While the clock is stopped, nothing can hurt its master. You spot the last gear lying on the floor between you and the reanimated monster. It seems to have fallen out of his shirt. You raise your eyes to the man and he looks back at you with a venomous smirk. Just try. Charge forward, but the instant your hand touches the gear, the man grabs you, and you soon find yourself in a tight chokehold. Drop down. You drop sharply out of his grip and grab the gear from the floor. Damn it! In an instant, you're standing by the clock. Put it in quickly! Without a second glance, you push the gear down. Fortunately, you got it right in the correct spot. Whew. The clock immediately starts ticking. No! The man grabs the empty air in, the f in a final attempt to stop you. Etienne! He grabs his head as a shudder passes through his body. He begins to age rapidly and the injuries from his previous fights, not only the one against you, start reappearing all over him. No! He swings his arms helplessly, then starts dissolving into dust. You watch it all happen silently, until there's nothing left of the monster except a pile of ashes. My god. But now what? Nothing. You walk up to the character's ashes, digging around until you find a small crumpled piece of paper. You quickly rip it in two. You just... I've had enough. You pick up the clock and get ready to jump out of the book. But you can talk about all this, Etienne, if you want to talk. So how big is the clock? Does it fit in there? Ah, so you picked up the top part. Oh, cool, and the gears of eyes. That's so cool. It wasn't as spooky as I thought. I was hoping it was like a ghost or something. But... Oh, and that's why the picture of the author was blanked out. Nice. Hmm. Hmm. Smells wonderful. Hmm. I didn't realize. Not as spacious as I expected. Is it hidden? It's enough for today. Didn't realize I can interact with some new things. Go deliver this. Well, the clock is intact. <laughs> Shove it. <laughs> Here you go. Well, then one more item should do it, I think. Are you exhausted again? Hmm? What's happening? Taking a seat? Can't keep this up anymore. Hmm. Two minutes later. <gasps> what the? Your incessant phone. Who closed the door? I didn't. Now I do. Hello? There's an urgent job. I'm not... You're taking it. 
I think I've had enough. I don't want to do it anymore. Etienne, it's your last job. You knew what book that was. And you specifically sent me to steal it? I'm just the middleman, Etienne. I don't pick the jobs. I don't care. You can take your job and go to hell. Calm down and listen to me. Finishing these jobs is your only chance of getting your abilities back. I know you know this. You can't work off this sentence. 30 years is just an impossible amount. Your publisher betrayed you. Your lover left you. It's time to take back what you're owed. How do you... You're only a single step away from freedom. Fine. Excellent. Excellent. The order is at your door. Oh, we're doing it without resting? We're just looking to go for it? Let's put it down. That was definitely the most interesting chapter, though, that we just did. Sand! Like Dune! <laughs> okay, before I read any of it... Oh, heal on use. Ooh. Yes. Upgrade your fi skill five times. Nice. Um, can I rest? I guess there's no rest for the wicked. So, The Heart of Sand. Author lady. Review. And so it was expecting a significant emphasis on classicism. Classicism, yeah. <laughs> on the difference between the lives of people in the upper district and the train dwelling nomads. However, in writing the upper district as a sort of retirement home rather than an upper class sector, the author avoids these themes, which I found immensely disappointing. Contractor, contractor agrees to infiltrate Heart of Sand by Samantha Murray and extract an item, the weather controller. Client agrees to pay the negotiated sum upon fulfillment of the contract. Weather controller. Ooh, here we go! The last job. Locomotive. You decided to keep working? Seems I don't have a choice. After everything that happened, how did they manage to convince you? Or has another month passed since I last saw you? They spent a whole month convincing you? Not quite that long. You literally had to erase your own character. I'll write a new one. Ah, yes, I forgot about your feelings towards characters. I don't have any feelings toward characters. Just because Amanda left you doesn't mean that all characters are now bad. She has nothing to do with it. I really thought about giving it all up. But the client is right. I need to finish my last job. Even if what we're doing makes me feel sick. If they get rid of my shackles, I can write my own book. Putting this all behind me. Looking at the floor. Tired. Just help me finish this. One last time. What are we looking for? A weather controller. A device that can control the weather. Wait, and we're on a train! Snowpiercer? Seems so. It would certainly come in handy here, you look around. The air feels like it's at least a hotter- oh, it's opposite. Because wasn't Snowpiercer as well that they tried to control the weather and it went bad or something? A radio. Small light is blinking on the radio panel next to a worn out accept call button. Push it. You hear static. Lindef Jr. speaking. I'm talking over for the senior meteor meteorologist. Too soon, unfortunately. The voice belongs to a very young man, but sounds confident, as though he's been given commands over the radio his whole life. Anybody between lines 10 and 40? Is that us? I think we're in range, maybe? You're breaking up. What's your number? Oh, I have no idea. Oh, 42. Neither of these. 26 was destroyed by a firestorm last year. Are you sure that's the right number? Are you sure 17 is here right now at the station in town? You notice the steel plate with the number 42. 42. Got it. Pete Jenkins, correct? Not exactly. I don't think Pete will be making radio contact anytime soon. Is his body nearby? There's a skeleton in the chair. Thanks, I've noted that in the log. Must have been the dry storm last week that got him. What kind of storm did you say? 
Congratulations, you're the new operator of 42. I'm obliged to inform you that. There's a death storm forecast between lines 10 and 40, so you should head towards town. You can take shelter there. Uh, a death storm? You may not be able to see it from your position yet, but it's showing up on my instruments already. What'll happen if we get caught in it? What other kinds of storms are there? Try and get the train moving. What else is there? Death storms are quite rare in your area. You're more likely to see a fear storm or a madness storm. Great. But there are joy storms too, although they most often happen in town. What happens if we get caught in one? Are you not from around here? Are there no storms in your zone? You could say that. I'm not from around here. If you get caught in the death storm, you die. <laughs> okay, I'll get it moving. Let's see what's going on here. Start to train. We need a key. Examine the old photo. A photo of a woman with blonde hair and a ponytail. Could be the former operator's daughter or maybe his wife. Train con control panel covered in levers and buttons. Okay, so we need a key. Anything on the man? Oh. Okay, that's easy enough. Do we want to look around? Great. We're in a desert. Oil tank. Oh no! <laughs> what do you see? There's an oil bug inside. It ate everything. Something skitters around inside the tank. Can we skip the bugs? Is there no way we can get to town without the train? Are you afraid of bugs? Knock harder on the tank. Suddenly an oil, e oil eating bug jumps out of the tank. Grab it. The bug's three sets of legs scramble at your hands. It's clearly displeased. Ew! Drop it! I might need it. You put the bug in the most secure pocket of your jacket. You doubt you'll actually need it, but you're enjoying Roderick's reaction. <laughs> okay, so we need oil. Gotcha. Anything else we need to check out here? Guess not. List of names. There's a long list of names scratched into the wall, and each one is in different handwriting. Sharp nail hangs on a chain nearby. Looks like this is a list of the train's previous operators. There's dozens here. Is this some kind of cursed train? We're probably just in a dangerous place. Look at the end. The last one is a Ronald Miles. What about our dearly departed Pete Jenkins? Probably didn't even have time to add his name. Add, add, yeah, add Jenkins' name. Poor guy deserves this at least. Well, probably. We didn't know him. You take the nail from the chain and scratch Pete Jenkins' name on the wall. Not bad. What about yours? You're the operator now. Do you want people to forget about you too? I'd rather not. Yeah, you don't want to leave a sign that it was you. In this book, if they ever investigate. I don't want the book police to come after me. Hmm, okay, I need a crowbar. Yes. Okay. Well, we have a long way to go. <laughs> we have nothing. We have the keys, though, and a bug. Jenkins' journal. Wait, did I read it? Oh, unknown language or in really awful handwriting. We have oil. Let's start by putting that in. Tank is small and the canister fills it almost to the brim. It's definitely enough to get you to town. If you say so. Do we know how far town is? I don't. Think it's running. Great. Let's go! Train journey! Boop boop! <laughs> Heck yeah! The death storm is approaching. Hurry! Anyone out past 10 miles? Train 42, what's the problem? You're barely moving. He's right, we got the train started, but it is barely moving. We'll figure it out. Fuel panel. All indicators seem normal except one. Cylinder three pressure. Great. Creasy note on the side. Whoever gets this train next, I hope it's not you, Pete. You moron. <laughs> pressure on cylinder three has some stability issues. Sorry about that. Uh, by the time you're reading this, I won't care anymore. Deal with it yourself. Just kidding. Try hitting the panel. That usually works for me. Good luck. Uh, 
Um, hit it with measure force. Something inside clangs. Something cracks. Train starts slowly picking up speed. Well, that wasn't so hard. Hey! Pick up the radio. Great work! I can see you're picking up speed. The weather has been all sorts of crazy lately, even here in town. Yesterday, a sorrow storm almost slammed us, and we haven't had one in, one of those in a hundred years. Do the storms usually miss the town? Of course! Only the joy storms make it here. The rest usually passes by. Like someone's controlling them, right? You can almost feel Roderick winking at you. Hmm... What could affect a weather like that? I don't know. This all started after a senior meteorologist died. Come on, asking about the weather controller. It's obviously in town. Have you ever heard of a weather controller? A what? It's a device that controls the weather. <laughs> Is this a joke? I don't think he knows anything. I guess the senior meteorologist had the controller and everything started getting messy after he died. We should ask around about him in town. If only we had something like that, my god. We'd certainly be well off. Alright, I see you're pulling in now. Good luck in town. Until next time, jokester. Ooh, let's see this town. Exciting. Uh, okay, so we have a workbench here if we need it. In the train. Ooh. Gate guard. A guard is trying unsex un unsuccessfully to open the door of the train. He notices you. Hey there. He glances briefly at your face, but apparently decides not to ask about it. The guy here is causing a little traffic jam at the gate. Poor man got caught in a fear storm on his way here. I'm not getting anywhere with him, but I have to make sure everyone is in town before the storm comes. I'll try and talk to him. Go ahead and try, but be gentle. It's not the poor guy's fault what happened. Hey friend, you there? Calm down now, I'm from train 42. Jenkins? Is that you? I'm his friend. Uh, I'm his brother. <laughs> Force the door open. You lean your whole body into the door. You hear the mechanisms inside start grinding against each other. Just a little more, come on. Clunk. I think the lock's open. The door easily slides to the side. A thin man is sitting in the corner of the locomotive, arms covering his head. Let the guard deal with him. You step away from the door and motion to the guard. Hey, Max, how you doing? Come with me. Easy now. After a few minutes, he leads the man out of the locomotive and they disappear behind the town gate. Good thing that guy didn't see your face. The guard comes back. He looks pleased. Awesome. Thanks for the help. I took Max to the infirmary. They'll look after him. Will he be okay? Probably not. People can't usually go back to a normal life after a fear storm. Damn. They won't transfer his strain yet, but stay in town if you can. You may be able to pick up some of his stuff when they sell it off. I'll move his train along and then yours after. In the meantime, go up to customs and get your paperwork straight. Paperwork? Uh, can I just walk by everyone? inspector. Oh, maps. Different maps of the area. Okay. The inspector is sitting in the cold, dark office. He looks up at you in a bored voice. Zess says, train number 42. The inspector digs through some papers. Are you Ronald Miles? No. Did you find the body of Ronald Miles? No, I found the body of Pete Jenkins. So after Miles, it was transferred to Jenkins. And now, my name is Chen. Oh, should I? I should have said Bob. Wearing a shabby coat with a strange rusty cage hanging around his neck. It's not shabby. His face is apparently disfigured. <laughs> oh, ho, ho. you aren't too good looking yourself. The inspector doesn't react. Here's your ticket. Uh, he hands you an old yellow ticket, which looks like it's been passed around for years. One standard town visit, two hours. Can I say longer? You must sell all possessions belonging to the train's former operator before you leave town. Make that your top, top priority. I thought they were mine now. The inspector looks at you silently, trying to understand whether you're joking or you really don't know how things work around here. The train is yours. The possessions are the people's. 
And what happens if I can't sell them all in two hours? The items will go to the people. Okay, thanks. Go on through. Nice. Something on the table. Ah, bread. Nice. And some glass. Oh, wow. Train district. A young woman is talking to one of the travelers who passes her passes her a strange half-empty bag. I also realized I think this is the first time the whole screen is like filled in the top-down perspective. Extend my time by one hour, please. Hold on. The man freezes, tilting his head. Just who do you take me for? There's not even enough sand here for 15 minutes. Red sand. Are you up to your old tricks again? Do I need to call the guard? No, 50 minutes is fine. Let me just catch my breath and I'll be on my way. The woman turns to an empty hourglass in one of the niches on the walls. Oh yeah, it's all hourglass. Damn beggars. Then she picks up a radio and you hear a crackling sound coming from speakers, echoing all over the town. Peters, train 124, 15 minute extension. She puts the radio back on her belt and reaches out a hand to you without looking. Give her your ticket. Yellow. She takes out a new hourglass and pours in enough red sand to reach the second mark on the side. She puts it in one of the empty niches on the walls. Two hours, starting now. Good luck. Thanks, I guess. So cool. The train life. Look at all the trains! An inspector is standing by- it's not, not at all like Snowpiercer right away. <laughs> That's what I thought. But. An inspector is standing by the train. His assistant is inside, rummaging through possessions. Huh, you again. Is everything okay? It, this is that guy's train. What was his name? Max, I think. Max, is he doing better? We can sell this. I'd say there's enough to live on here. We'll split it up, I think. Max is resting right now and we're keeping an eye on his stuff. You look over his shoulder into the train car. Don't look in there. You know what? He hesitates for a moment, then reaches into his pocket and takes out a bag of sand. Take this. You're a good guy. You help Max. Take. Let us take care of things here. Hmm. Yeah, they're up to no good. The inspector turns around and loses interest in you. But I am only a passerby. I don't have time. This merchant's def this merchant is desperately trying to get your attention. His smile reminds you of a late stage insanity. Hey man, hey, come over here. Got any sand? Plenty. Hear me out. Buy melons, sand melons. They're delicious. Sand melons? The name sand melons seems to describe them quite accurately. Small shriveled fruits that look like they're covered in a layer of dust. Too much dust. Delicious? Looks like no one's buying. They're scrumptious, I tell you. You think I would sell them if, if they weren't? As for these, pay no mind. There won't be a single one left by evening. Sure. Woman doing laundry. A middle-aged woman is resting on a stoop of her train. A basin of laundry, children's clothes sit at her feet. She stares at your train for a moment. She sighs, then leans against the train door, which buckles slightly under her weight. So you're from train 42, huh? She grabs a cigarette. Did you know the previous one? Jenkins. He was my husband. Oh shit! She gets up heavily and starts hanging the laundry as if nothing had happened. I'm sorry. Are your hands clean? Take off your dusty gloves. Pass me the clothes. She nods at the basin and the diapers inside. Her nod sends ash flying from a cigarette into a pair of men's pants hanging on the line. Uh, I forget what she said to give her. You glance at your hands for a moment. This is the first time in a long time that they've looked human. All that's left are the thin scars stri striping across your palms. They probably won't ever fade. She takes the pants. Sheet? What's your business in town? Got stuff to sell? Yeah, your husband's possessions. Random things, nothing interesting. The woman's woman ashes her cigarette and you see her glance quickly at you as she takes the sheet. So, Jenkins' possessions, do you need me to... 
sniffing. You pile a few socks from the basin together and give them to the woman. But the woman doesn't turn around to take them from you. She stands there with her back to you, not speaking. I'm really sorry. When I found him, there was already nothing I could do. She nods weakly a few times. Turning halfway around, she passes you a cigarette. She already has a fresh one in her mouth and lit. Take it. You sit on her train stoop. I found a journal on his train. I guess it belongs to you now. Customs won't let me just give it to you, but I'll figure something out. She smiles. A journal? Jenkins didn't even know how to write. He probably robbed or killed someone. Those aren't his things. These thoughts seem to have put her in a better mood. As she finishes her cigarette, she, she packs up and heads inside her train. A child's joyful laughter greets her. Hmm. I guess it's not actually all his stuff then. There's a quiet woman up here. The greenery on the train's roof is quite striking. By local standards, you're looking at a very well-kept train. Hello, do you? The woman sharply puts a finger to her lips. Shh. You manage to get a look at her face. She's incredibly beautiful, even with the deep shadows under her eyes. It looks like the train has been washed recently. The metal and glass are gleaming, and a thin layer of newly settled dust just looks like an elegant decoration. Green stems sway from the roof. You see plants that you don't recognize. <laughs> I'm sorry, did you need something? I wanted to ask, do you know how I can get into the upper district? I heard the meteorologist lives there. You can only get in once you retire, and well, I think you still have a while before that happens. How do I get in there now, today? The woman shrugs silently and looks towards the way out of town. Running your eyes over the locomotive, you notice an old trailer with dried up branches sticking out of the leaky roof. Uh-huh. Ask? Aren't you afraid your old trailer might fall right off? The woman continues to look towards the way out. Yes, the trailer is quite old. If it falls off, it falls off. The corner of the woman's mouth turned up and she shakes her head. The meteorologist. Do you know anything about him? He tells us when storms are coming. That's it? Do you know anything else? The woman turns her head to look you straight in the eye. You can't read her expression. I won't keep you any longer. Thanks. What's in the trailer? Things, old things, ancient things, toys. Why are you carrying them around? Thought it was better to travel light. I don't know. Rather keep them with me. What do you do? It's as though the woman doesn't hear your question. She just stares silently, watching. Just when you think she's not gonna answer, she starts to speak. I'm making it through life, day by day. I meant the plants. Oh, plants. I used to enjoy nurturing life. Hmm. You see all the muscles in her face tense for a split second, but in an instant, the illusion passes. You turn to leave, but suddenly feel something crawling across your neck. <gasps> An oil eater! It seems that the oil bug in your pocket is finally trying to escape. Escape. Flick it off. Swat it. Um, flick it. Stop! Huh? Leave it with me. Okay. She walks over and opens the door of her train, picks something up, and returns it to you. Here. She's holding two old, dusty bags of sand in her open hand. Huh. You won't hear me complaining. You carefully remove the bug from your neck and pass it to the woman. She gives you two bags of sand. Thanks. The woman nods gently to you and you turn... And then turns her attention to the bug. Well, I guess that's lucky. Nice, that's good stuff. So many places to look. Get out of here. Junkyard? The music is nice. Salvage worker. Sewer grate. Ooh, sewers! You see a tall woman digging around in a pile of scrap metal. She picks up something that looks like an old computer case, then rakes out the microchips and wires as if they were parasites. She tosses the cleaned out computer into a pile to your left. 
Did you want something? Then she picks up a new one, not paying any particular attention to you. You got a lot of computers. Yep. She's concentrating hard at her work. Where'd they come from? Jenkins brought them in a week ago. Ah, oh, he dug up a whole warehouse full of electronics. Oh. Was Jenkins a nice guy? Was? Oops. Oh. Did I say was? I meant to say, I heard he's a nice guy. No idea where you might have heard that. But definitely not in town. He's a real jerk. I hope he dies. Do you need any help? For money, actually. For sand. The woman smiles. I'm getting paid pretty well for this. I don't want to share my earnings with anyone. Who's paying you? Do they have more work? Maybe something a little less dusty. I'm not sure. She looks you over. I don't think they'll have any use for you. But you can go ask Mr. Nariano yourself. He lives in the middle of the square. Nariano, got it. Thanks. How do I get to the upper dis district? Dixtrist. Do you know anything that might help? I don't know anything. Hmm. What's that pipe on the wall? Where does it go? Secret. She gives you a quick glance and continues ripping apart the computer. I'm great at keeping secrets. So am I. <laughs> That's what we're looking for. We can crawl through and go straight to the upper districts. There's a passage there. Now we just have to figure out what to do about this sewer guardian. Do we need anything to open it? It doesn't move. Hmm. Okay. Trash can. Take those. Nice. Got some goodies. Mr. Nariano. Maybe we can get sewer duty. Oh, this train has a little clock on it. That's so cool. A safe. Someone hid a buried safe under a wooden pallet. The safe door is locked. Ooh, we can pick it. Okay. Just need to find either our train or another workbench. The woman looks at you unkindly. Two guards are sitting at the gate, playing with a strange game with stones. The guard on the left pretends you not to notice you. Guard on the right isn't good at feigning indifference. You see him casting quick glances at you. What do you want? What are you guarding? Did you get blown in here by an idiot storm, pal? <laughs> the guard on the right grunts. Don't bother us. I need to go to the upper district. Are you over the age of 60? No. Are you visiting your wife and newborn? No. The man looks at you silently, lowering. I'll just be on my way. I don't really want to fight. We'll go through the sewers. This... No, this wasn't our train. Open suitcases are strewn, up, strewn about the train car. A man is washing something in a metal basin full of dark red water. He's washing so intently that you can hear the fabric ripping. He's an impressively large fang from some unknown animal hanging around his neck. He stops washing and shoots you a mean look. A cage around your neck. Is that some kind of new trend? Let's just keep going. You don't need any more problems. Is he washing out blood? Who cares? We're just passing by. Keep going. Maybe I should tell. Hey! Suddenly you feel a powerful yank down your neck. You look down to see a man's wet hand grabbing Roderick's cage. I had a trendy friend once, always bragging about his sand bear fang. Damn it. But I taught him some manners. One punch, two... He looks at you with bloodshot eyes. The cage's hinges start to make an unpleasant crunching sound. Or is it your neck? Try and knock him off his feet. The man easily dodges your attack and pushes you away from him. It appears a real fight's about to start. Oh! I don't have that much yet. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Strong hit coming. Let's start with a stun. Oh yeah, my shield heals now, right? Hell yeah. Okay. Almost got him. Oof. This should do it. The 
The man flies into the basin, which turns over with a crash, splashing its contents into the ground. What a sick bastard. Are you okay? Next time you're going in my pocket, or even better, walking on your own two feet. Breathing hard, you carefully touch your neck. The string left an impressive welt on the back. I know it's none of our business, but we can't just let that psycho roam free. Look for rope. You look at the suitcases on the ground and notice a photograph. Two smiling men are standing in front of a locomotive. One of them, your attacker, has his arm around the other, who looks pale and tired. His shoulder is bandaged and he has a fang pendant around his neck. You toss the picture aside. Ooh, some rope! He suddenly comes to, tr comes to and tries to stand up. The anger is gone from his voice and now he sounds scared. Everything already happened. The man spots the photo on the ground, then his eyes move to the bloody clothes nearby. Suddenly his face changes. Henry? Oh no. Did I do this? And for what? He looks at the two bags of sand on the ground, which fell out of his pocket during the fight. Get these away from me. I can't look at them. You pick up the bags of sand. The man falls to the ground and starts crying. Oh, what happened? Best to leave him be. A bookseller. The sound that reaches your ear seems impossible in this desert world. Rustling pages. Hundreds of pages. The table next to the woman's train is full of books with well-worn covers. Each one looks like it was taken out of an antique bookshelf. Hello. Hi. Are you new to these parts? I've never seen you before. Her attentive but slightly unfocused gaze slides over you. Your paper face doesn't seem to bother her. Do you know everyone here? No, of course not. It's just that generally, the same people bring their trains to the same station every time. Were you looking to choose a book? Show her the journal. I have something that might interest you. The bookseller tries to look uninterested, but you see her fingers trembling as, she, as you hand her the journal. Notes, interesting, very interesting. Are these someone's memoirs? Wow, this is an absolute treasure trove. Have you read it? I thought it was just the old train driver's journal. Let me read some of it to you. Don't bother. I just want to sell it. I'll buy it. How much do you want? Hmm. She's definitely hooked. Time to collect your sand. Let's collect sand for your work. Uh, what did we get from the... We got two bags for the bug. Maybe five? I'd be glad to give you five, but then I'd have to leave town. Two, then. I wasn't planning on spending so much, of course, but that's a fair price. Nice. Thank you. You should, found, should have found out what was in the journal. It might have helped us understand the world better. I thought you could help me with that. I haven't heard much useful advice from you recently. <laughs> okay. I guess I'll, f I'll work my way in. I'll just... Do the outer line and then the next line. Not buying anything. Leave. Prospector. Hey, are you a digger? A what? Someone who digs. My hearing is fine. I'm asking you what that means. The man looks at you without blinking for 10 seconds. You're attracting suspicion again with your unnecessary question. I'm not a local. <laughs> man continues to look at you. This is the only town on our continent, possibly the whole damn planet. Where the hell are you from? I left for a long time and now I'm back, but I don't remember. Someone who digs up buildings in the desert. Ooh, that's so cool! Do you know what the desert is, or is there no desert where you're from either? They just called them different back in my day. I was one of the best back when. Find that hard to believe. Need work tomorrow? I want to dig up a building on Malta Street. Ooh, what's our plan? I started digging from the top, got from 20th to the 7th floor, but the lower floors are hard work, the sand's packed tight, it's a pickaxe job. I want to round up a few more people, then we'll move out at sunrise. Is there anything special there in that building? The man peers closely at you, it seems he's not sure you can be trusted. There was a gun store on the first floor of the building. 
The work is all that should concern, concern you. I'll pay you, and what's in the building is none of your business. You in or not? I'll think about it. Think then. Is he gonna start a riot in town when he gets his hand on weapons? No, he gets caught in a firestorm out on the road tomorrow. Okay. I guess we don't need to worry about him. Whose crate is this? Pliers. Ooh. Oh, this is my train, right? Then who is this? Finally! The man sleeves bears the letter CS next to it. And you are... Custom service. I just finished going over your stuff in here. You need to sell everything that belonged to Jenkins before your time in town is up. Anything you don't sell will be confiscated. Yeah, they warned me. And that? He points at the cage. That's mine. Can I see the tag? Why would I put a tag on my own things? An item with no tags belongs to no one. If it belongs to no one, then it's not yours. <gasps> Sell it. What the hell? I'm not selling my friend. He reaches for a radio on his belt, then looks at you questioningly. Let's try and solve this peacefully. Mm. No. Train 42, penalty. He watches for your next move. Can I say I'll sell and just not do it? Customs officer tosses a folded up trading tent at your feet. Have you done this before? No. Unfolding the tent signals that you're selling goods. People will come and buy from you and you make what profit you can. Hand in half the sand at the entrance. Do what you want with the rest. Good luck. Hmm. Let's get back to the workbench. Oh, I'm an exhaustive. Oh. Ooh, okay, I have two. Enough to make both of these. Oh, but not both of these. What do I want? Lockpick or pliers? I think I'll go with pliers. Oh, I also need to heal. Okay. Nice. Ah, there we go. Cool, cool, cool. Nice. Now we just need some tools and then we have oh, everything. Nice, nice, nice. Nothing else here. Okay. Let's see what we can open now. Dismantled counter. Hmm. Trading tent is ready. Time to sell off Jenkins junk? Not yet. I'll look around more. Awesome. No tools, though. Is this the washing lady? Oh, okay. Then we've already seen most of this. Nice. Ooh, container. Awesome. Finding lots of money. Ooh, we haven't been in the flashy train. Is this where he lives? Nariano. Door slowly opens. A middle-aged man appears on the doorstep. He looks a little too clean for these surroundings, holding a glass of something orange. Oh, stylish! He nods silently and lifts his glass slightly in your direction. I'm trying to find a way into the upper district. Aren't we all? I don't plan on living there. I just have to take care of one thing. What could there possibly be for you to do, do there? Why? Looking for an old friend I lost touch with a few years ago. The man awaits you, waits for you to continue. It's really important for me that I see him again. How important. Ooh, a man of business. I'd say about one bag of sand important. That's nothing. Five? Hmm. Seven? Hmm. Ten. Ten. Now you're speaking my language. I love it when a person wants something that badly. In a flash, the man transforms from a reserved aristocrat into a jolly businessman. 
Not a bad start to the day. Helping those in need, you might say. <laughs> uh, okay. I'll be back. He bounds cheerfully up the stairs and sipping from his glass disappears behind the door. How much do we have? Oh, we have ten! Oh, I've been doing good! Oh, I haven't spoken to these two people. Oh, and the safe. What did I need? Lockpick? Hmm. Okay. An old man is waving at you so furiously that it seems like his hand might fall off any second. Get out of here! What do you mean? You were calling me over. Go on, get! Up close, I can see that you only have 30 minutes worth of sand. He doesn't look particularly dangerous, but he probably knows a few dirty tricks. Yeah, let's leave him alone then. Woman waves you away. Okay. Seller? Did I talk to her? Oh yeah, no, she, she was mean. Well, I do have 10 bags. We can try and sell some stuff, get some extra money. You brush sand off the tent and notice passersby starting to look over more frequently. What do we have to sell? Everything left in the bag. Some weird gas cylinders, empty. Just put them on the counter anyway. Hmm. Some rags and a cup. Some kind of map. You notice a customer approaching. Listen carefully and remember this. The man is quite clean cut, probably from the upper district. Are you listening? Say that this map leads to something important. Treasure or whatever. What are you selling? Say anything, just push the map. I have something special. The old man doesn't react. He probably hears that same story every day. I hope you don't mean these helium cylinders. They're empty, by the way. Show him part of the map. Hmm, continue. What more can I say? Ten bags of sand and the map is yours. Can't just pour out ten bags for a map that leads who knows where. At least a treasure. Which treasure? Hmm, you tap on Roderick's cage. I'm thinking, I'm thinking. A map to water, a pile of sand, food, shelter. Uh, a map to a shelter. You know about the shelter too? Ooh. Huh? There's a lot I know. Ten bags, you say. I'll give you five, but if the shelter isn't there, I'll come back and give you five more. Right to your head. With this, he shows you the small club on his belt. It's a deal! I got five bags for that? Damn. Um, I still don't have... Yeah. I don't... I can't make... Um, the lockpick, unfortunately. Shall we give the dude the ten bags? My dear friend, wonderful. Jumps down from the entryway like an excited child. May I? Go ahead. He counts the bags. He counts two, which he hands back to you. Give these to Janine, the woman who does the salvage work. Tell her Mr. Nariano sent you. Ah. Hold on, so it only costs two bags? You're just keeping the rest? It truly is a biz pleasure doing business with you, my dear friend. Oh. They work together. They're in cahoots. Well. I don't think I can get anything else. There wasn't anything here that was locked? No. The woman has cleaned out at least ten more computers since she were last here. She notices the two bags. How is Mr. Nariano doing? Uh, he's eight bags of sand better now. Hasn't lost his touch. Let's get to it. Once we leave, we won't be coming back here. Are you sure you're ready? Yeah, sure. You, cost two, you toss two bags of sand at the woman's feet. Let's get to it. Train 42, your time is up. Prepare to leave. Looks like you're too late. Is that a joke? I already paid you. Damn guards are about to come looking for me and you're... She looks at you silently, smiling. I'm kidding. Let's go. 
She clears away a small heap of scrap metal from against the wall to pull a lever. <gasps> it's open. I'd hurry if I were you. Thanks. Woman smiles again. It seems that the whole situation strikes her as comical. A little advice for you. Trust a bag of bricks. Huh? What? Trust a bag of bricks? Did I read that right? No going back now. Needless to say, it smells awful inside the pipe. This is just a drainage pit for the square. It's not the sewer system, so it could be worse. That doesn't make me feel better. The way forward is blocked by a pile of trash, boards, and rags that almost look like a barricade. Uh, take it apart. There might be something in it. The boards. You grab one of the boards and try to move it. Stuck right down to the base. Kick it. The board springs back into place. You aren't able to move it. What about the trash bags? The contents are too heavy. Dust pours out of the bags and gets into your eyes. Ooh, I guess we just climb over. You poke around the support with your foot. One of the trash bags seems to be full of a full rock of bricks. Oh, trust it. You put your weight on the bag, then throw your other leg over the barricade. But your pant leg gets caught on the nail. No! <laughs> For you one of your hands and carefully unhook it. That's what I would do. You shift your weight to your right hand and try to unhook it. I can't get it. Damn it. Come on, you're so close. Whew. Your pant leg is free. You jump the rest of the way over the barricade and land on your feet. Final warning. ATN, operator of train 42. Your time is up. Leave town immediately or your train will be confiscated. You were right. There's definitely no going back. <laughs> Eh, we're only here for a little bit anyway. Hmm, this one has tons of broken glass scattered around it. Painstakingly pick up the shards or get a running start. Probably a running start. Are you sure? Sick of digging around in this trash. Ooh. Not yet. Keep running. Why aren't you jumping? I don't know. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Are you alive? <laughs> he broke down the whole barricade. I felt it. Are you in one piece? I'm not sure. Damn. I think my shoulder is... hurt? Well, I have no healing. I should get some ink at least. Well, it's not like I can get any dirtier. <laughs> A joy storm is approaching. It will hit us in five minutes. Ooh. After this junkyard, even an ordinary storm would make me happy. The pile in front of you doesn't look particularly big. I don't care anymore. Charge right into it. Examine it carefully. I feel like you can probably just step over it. He's right. Carefully lift one leg over the pile and quickly find yourself on the other side. That was easy. Three minutes. Let's see what's in the upper district. A door, a door, a tired man. Door number one. Locked. Door number two. Ooh. Joy Storm has arrived. Dad, is that you? You hear the sound of sand pouring out. It's getting closer. Soon it envelops your whole consciousness. You're suddenly overtaken by such a strong emotion that you involuntarily lean forward. It's like you're drowning in a calm, relaxing sea. Peace and quiet. You turn your head to the left and see your sister standing behind you. You're happy. She's not in danger anymore. You turn to the right and see your brothers. They're sitting next to you. All ten brothers and you. They're wearing strangely colored armor. You look down and see that you have the same armor on. You touch it. A piece flakes off, burning your hand. The image starts to fade. The vision passes. And in its place you're filled with an unbelievably nostalgic sense of longing. Etienne? It's evening already? How long was I out? A pretty long time. Long enough that I started to worry. We need to hurry. How was it? Strange. Like I was home. I'd do that again. <gasps> Damn. Nighttime, huh? Someone inside is making soup. Poor guy sitting on the ground leaning against the wall. An idiotic grin is lighting up his face. Hey, you okay, friend? Marie, you're such a good girl. He's still in his joy storm. Mm, wait. 
The man opens his eyes finally. Need something? Thanks for not interrupting me. I really got caught up in that one. Why did your visions last so much longer when mine ended 10 minutes ago? Your first joy storm? Yeah. Here's some advice. Try not to move or look around too much. Concentrate on one thing and don't use up all your strength. It helps the visions last longer. Oh. So what was it you wanted? I'm looking for the meteorologist. Looking for the sail, huh? Head straight south to the square. Okay. But I wouldn't count on much if I were you. Okay, thanks. One more locked door? Yep. Resting woman. Looks over you, <laughs> looks you over suspiciously. Man hasn't come out of the storm's clutches yet. Hmm. Meteorologist's wife's counter. You see devices lined up on a dusty counter. Are you out of your mind with prices like that, you old hag? Tired looking woman is behind the counter and you see the slightest flame of hope flare up in her eyes when she sees you. Another one. If you're just here to look with no money, get lost. Counter is still surprisingly full, considering the meteorologist died a whole three years ago. Are you selling his possessions? Examine the counter. Covered in devices of all different sizes and complexities. Which one controls the weather? I don't know. Tex says it's a device covered in switches and dials. They're all covered in switches and dials. How about we look at the most worn out ones that look like they've been used every day? There are two that fit that description on the left and right. How much for this one? 100 bags of sand. How, how much? My price is firm. My husband didn't make all of these devices or whatever hand just f by hand just for them to be given out for free. I paid 10 bags of sand as a bribe just to get in here and for that I had to crawl through the sewer. A bribe? And you want 100 bags for just some piece of junk? Just grab it and jump out of the book. We'll figure it out later. Where are you seeing junk here, you jerk? Get lost. I'm calling the guards. Oh. Grab the device. Damn it, Etienne. Do it. You're the one who deserves to be arrested. A hundred bags. You're insane. That's what I said. She's insane. <laughs> Hands up. You turn slowly and see two guards with their clubs raised and ready. That's him. He tried to steal my husband's possessions. Arrest him. I was just looking. Don't worry, miss. We'll handle this. Uh, grab the first device you see and try to use it. You grab a random device off the counter and start pushing every switch and button you see. The guard and the meteorologist's wife watch you in silence. I don't think this is gonna help much. Just run! <laughs> watch out! Bam! Etienne! Silence falls and darkness. Mmm. Did they just... Um, throw me out of the city. Oh, they took your lantern. Did anything else happen while I was passed out? Roderick? Looking for the cage. The cage is gone. Damn it. Where do I go? Oh, train tracks. I guess I'll follow them. Oh, a dead body. A motionless body lying face down in the sand. Another disturber of the town's peace. Oh! <gasps> the man is wearing a coat. The tag is sewn to the chest. Examine it. W204 Red Rem. Hmm? Was he serving time too? What else would he be doing here? Nothing in the right pocket. Left pocket you find some cash and some old faded checks. One of them is for phone service. Hmm. Weird. Nice. Can use that bread. Is this where I entered the city? They already raised the ladder. 
Who knew? Ooh! Metal plate. You notice a slight glow coming from between the loose wall plates. You see a barely noticeable inscription. Trust a bag of bricks. <gasps> I already know that. You notice that the wall plate isn't completely attached. Maybe I can move it. <laughs> cool. Old wooden crate. Crowbar! Apples! Thank you. And let's have a look. Crowbar! <laughs> Bread! Still, but I can still eat it. Stale, but I can still eat it. <laughs> still, still. A path leading out of the sewer. It won't budge. Keep shaking it. Nothing happens. Shake it like a psycho. <laughs> Nothing happens. Well, this is just great. I was so close, but looks like this is the end. Oh yeah, you have ink. <laughs> oh right, I'm a writer. <laughs> right? Ink envelope. The ink envelops the bars on the gra of the grating and they start to slowly rust. Bang! You easily knock them out of place and clear your path. Done. I'm coming. Oh, we're here! Uh, oh, we can't go that way, so I guess I should keep going. I'm back! I guess I shouldn't announce that I'm back. <laughs> uh, but what should I do? Am I gonna break in? Where do, where are the guards? Where where do they sleep? Is that the hide around the corner and peek out the tent? Nariano, I'm sure he was looking for that exact thing. He called it the weather controller. Mr. Nariano is carefully twisting a device in his hands, trying to figure out how it works. Damn, he's already here too. If this thing really can control the storms, do you think my husband really created something like that and didn't tell us? All these years. All those people who died in the storms or who went insane. He might have been responsible for all that. I wouldn't jump to conclusions. We don't actually know what the device can do and maybe your husband didn't ev did everything he could. I hope so. Thank you, Rhonda. Thank you for telling me this. It would have been terrible if such a valuable object fell into the hands of a stranger. I think we should... Read Poems Radio. Crash! Your hit shatters the radio on, radio on the pole. The woman runs into the house. Give me that. Can it really control the weather? Mm, and what if it could? I feel like if I lie, he, he knows anyway. I can't just give you the controller. This thing could decide the fate of the whole town. I'm sorry. Ariana takes a step back, grasping the controller tightly to his chest. It looks like he's prepared to fight for it to the very end. You notice a familiar object around his neck. Hold on, that's mine! When the hell did you manage to steal it? You sharply yank the cage off his neck and stuff it in your pocket. Mariano flinches, not expecting you to act so suddenly. We need to run! Now! Huh? Attention all residents, this is Lindef speaking. There's a death storm coming. I repeat, a death storm is approaching. Start evacuating, we have ten minutes. Did you push something? I didn't touch it. We need to stop the storm. Give it to me now! Not a chance! Tell me how to work it and I'll stop the storm. I don't actually know, but I can try and figure out. I'm looking for instructions. Then what use are you? You're, you're just going to let people's life depend on your attempt to try and figure it out? Let me at least look at the display. I can see what it means. Seven minutes. Hurry. Anyone with an empty train, take on upper district residence. Train 12 is causing a jam up at the exit. The wheels fell off. Get that car off the tracks. It's blocking the way. I'm gonna see. I'm gonna go see Linda. If he and I will figure this out ourselves. Get out of my way. Grab him. You try and grab him, but out of the corner of your eye, you see an object flying right at you. Oh, again? Right before you hit the ground, you see Nariano climbing the stairs to the tower. 
You open your eyes and get up with some difficulty. Get up the tower quickly and grab the controller. I don't know anything about a controller. My father didn't tell me anything. Darn, wrong button. I need to check the stormometer. Two minutes. I don't know either. Just push something. Let's go. One final push. This has been such a long day. Oh god, go up. Nariano is arguing with a young man, the controller in their hands. A wild wind blows through the window. The storm is almost here, we're out of time. Oh, I have to knock him unconscious. Before Nariano can react, you punch him in the jaw. Can't have you interfering. The young man watches in silence, slowly pressing himself against the wall. Take it! You had your chance to stop the storm. Now it's my turn. The young man presses himself against the panel of instruments. Red lights are flashing all over it. 30 seconds! Dozens of buttons and switches and not a single one is labeled. What an egotistic asshole. Look, the look the young man shoots you is filled with 10% understanding and 90% fear of dying in the storm. There are three big switches above the display. Start with those and I'll check the text but there's not much about it here either. Okay, three big switches. One, two, three. Switch makes no sound as it moves. It seems to be completely broken. Second. There are two buttons next to the light. Uh, I have no idea. Alarm set for 4 a.m. <laughs> His shred of hope that he might be saved seems to have just evaporated. The whole panel goes dark and the device looks just like it started. Third one. It starts vibrating, whatever that means. The switch clicks loudly as it moves, then a multitude of indicators and buttons light up on the display. Let's see... The wind coming in through the window picks up and a strange metallic taste starts filling your mouth. You smell burnt metal. Okay, here goes. Pray and push a random scream and scream and push a random button. Oh god! Still getting closer. It's moving away! Oh my god! You put the controller down with shaking hands and you hear cheers from the people outside getting louder. That was close. Way too much going on for my first day. Hmm. A large crowd is gathered in front of the tower. The people around you are loudly discussing what just happened. I saw the storm move away at the last minute. I saw it with my own eyes. And it was just about to reach the town, but then it stopped. The storm is gone. You can go home now. What if it comes back? Well... We'll just have to hope it doesn't. Why did it move away at the last second anyway? And why did it get so close to town? That's never happened before. It's a long story. We drove it off, don't worry. We? Who's we? It was the young meteorologist. You put your hand on the young man's shoulder. Lindef, the young meteorologist, meteorologist, that's such a hard word, did an excellent job of proving himself. He managed to neutralize the death storm at the very last second. The crowd starts cheering. Hooray for Lindef! What do you mean, neutralize? That's not important. What's important is that you're not in danger right now. Time for me to go. You look out at the uncomprehending crowd before you jump, and your eyes slide over the people until they meet Lindefs looking straight at you. Are you... that... He gestures at the controller, which you've already tucked under your arm as you prepare to jump out of the book. Um, listen, kid. This is your moment of truth, Etienne. I need it. You'll do just fine without it. Uh, I need it. It's hard to explain, but I need it more. Are these storms where you're from too? Definitely not like these. Then maybe... Maybe you can just leave it with us? The device. Since the next time a storm comes, we won't be able to. Sorry, I can't. This device is the only thing that's keeping me from... Keeping me from something dear to me. You thump your chest with your fist. Oh. Alright. Lindef backs off defeatedly. Think about it. Damn it. You look around at the uncomprehending crowd. The people have gone quiet as they listen to your conversation with Lindef. Think on it some more. Damn you, Roderick. It's not that simple. All you do is sit there in my pocket. It's nothing to you. Whispers start running through the crowd. You hear snippets like insane and talking to himself. I can hand it this damn thing and get my shackles off. Do you understand how much that will change things? Do you understand how valuable it is to me? All the suffering I went through for this. Just look around. 
Again, you sigh but decide to look around at the whispering crowd. Are these real, pe real people you see in front of you? You examine the crowd. Some are whispering and watching your performance, but it seems as though everyone knows that something important is happening. Even the guards, who practically cracked your skull earlier, are, are standing off to the side and excitedly discussing something. Elderly men and women, women peer out from their windows, trying to see what's happening in the darkness. A mother leads her child home. The child trips over a cable sticking out of the sand, and his mother quickly helps him up. Well, oh god. I mean, it's technically the characters. But I would feel bad, yeah people i mean if you especially if you pulled your lover out of a book then they're people <sighs> fine damn you you shove the controller into lindef's hands if another storm comes flip the switch first then press that button right here i'm not sure how the rest of it works lindef who seems to have accepted that you're a crazy person who talks himself suddenly beams with joy he gives you a hug with his free arm and you feel the warmth in his touch lindef looks out at the people in the crowd they still don't understand how the Death Storm, this odd device, and the man with the paper face are connected. Thank you. Alright, let's drop the sentiment. Time for me to pay what's due. Farewell. Well, we have nothing. <laughs> Here it comes. Hello? Is the order ready? No, it won't be ready. Are you turning down the job? Yeah, I've had enough. I won't put any more innocent people at risk. So it's people. Very well. What do you mean? I mean, I made a decent bit of cash off of you. Besides, walkers like you usually break much sooner. So you actually did quite well in comparison. You may not have finished your last job, but I think you've earned your freedom just the same! My shackles expert is on his way to you right now. Thanks. I don't... He'll be there in a few minutes, so... See you soon, Ichen. <gasps> oh my god. Um... Stay down. Oh? Where do you think you're going? Who is this? Where's the rope? Tie him up. Hey! After him, quickly! Oh! I went in the book? Oh, was it police? fall onto the cold sand and your pursuers land nearby. So you want to do this the hard way? It's so cold here. Where's Vince? He's waiting in the car just in case. Vince was on your side this whole time? That bastard. Deal with him quickly and I'll get the book ready so we can get the collector. Can you handle this? Anybody want to help me? I just saved your city a minute ago. Come on! <laughs> your voice echoes through the empty square. It seems like everyone is in bed asleep already. Fine. Mm. Okay, we're not gonna let them disable a skill, so let's stun everyone. <gasps> What's next? Ooh, more disable skill. No. <gasps> we're not doing that. Okay, one disable skill. I have one more stun in me. And then I can ink up. Let's hope it works out. <laughs> this just stunned them the whole time. Okay, I might be able to... Oh, him I can't... I could have maybe killed them, but... Okay, now they're close to getting killed, so if anyone has a disable skill, kill them. Okay, only one damage so far, so that's good. Uh, if I slash it, should kill them both, I think. Oh, I'm out of ink. <gasps> ah, shit. I need to drain him. That's good. And he missed! Haha! <laughs> Got him. Are you okay? Relatively. What book did they want to take you into? One second. You pick up the book that one of the thugs dropped and look at the blank black cover. The name's been erased. They said something about a collector. Is that your boss? My former boss. You open the book and flip through the pages. You want to go there? I have this idea. If you're sure about it, 
Wait, we're jumping in another book? Ooh, our face is appearing. Incomprehensible. What? Why? Everything's blurry and there's no color. We've gone too deep. We're inside the book, inside the book. I can barely breathe. Me too. We need to find the collector as soon as we can and then get out of here. What's wrong with your face? Why? What's... <gasps> we need to hurry. Oh god. Can I get anything? You notice a familiar looking briefcase. A tag is visible on one of them. Rich A. Item X. What are those? Harmony Publishing. Briefcases for stolen items. I give the collector his orders in briefcases like these. So there are objects from other books inside. Think there's something you could use in there? You open two of the briefcases in front of you at random. An old rag doll is inside the briefcase along with a set of rusty pins. Is that what I think it is? I don't know. What do you think it is? A voodoo doll? What's in the second one? Leather bound book lies on its velvet. Is, is it the death book? <laughs> Something written here. Al Azif? Al Azif? I don't know what that means. Mm, I'm interested in the book. You swear you feel its leather binding through your coat. There's something else here. Next to the briefcases is a bag stuffed to the brim with a note attached to it that says to be sorted. Inside you find a folded up cloak, an opaque glass capsule, and a small wand and an old broom. Is it the wand that we stole? Examine the cloak. You try and unfold it, but as soon as your hands slip inside, the cloak disappears. So does your hand. <gasps> Invisibility cloak. You carefully pull your hands out, and it's instantly visible again. Hmm. Take everything. Throw the folded up cloak on your shoulder and grab the broom. You're really kitted out. I hope I can use all this. Let's go find the collector. So, are we invisible now? Hides whatever is underneath this. Just don't lose the cloak itself. Toxin capsule. Fear toxin. Inhalation causes prolonged panic and hallucinations. Magic wand. Polymorph wand. Transform the target into an Ovis Ares. Whatever that is. Trembles impatiently, almost like it's trying to break free. It's the Necronomicon? The only book you never want to jump into. <laughs> oh, shit! <laughs> okay. Hmm. So, what am I gonna do? How do I get past these guys? Bookwalker briefcases. Wait! Three walkers are standing around a table in the brightly lit room. They haven't noticed you yet. Damn, so this is where they handle the briefcases for the orders. Put on the cloak. It's working. What's next? Mm -hmm. How it sneak past. You tiptoe past the room with the walkers in it. Better to avoid any more fighting than is absolutely necessary. Can I get past these guys? You see two walkers standing in the passageway. They seem to be guarding another set of boxes. They're discussing something quietly, completely unaware of your presence. I don't think you can squeeze, squeeze past them. You should take off the cloak. It's going to be... It's going to get in your way. Oh, I'll trust him on this. You take off the cloak and throw it over your shoulder. The walkers haven't noticed you yet. What's our plan? Throw the capsule. You wind up and throw the fear toxin at the walkers. It falls right between them and shatters. The men turn around sharply. Hey, stop! You... you... You see both men's eyes widen in horror. You're a monster! Help! Both men look around in terror, then jump over the railing into the darkness. I hope that's not too far down. Okay, he's a librarian. Hmm, books stack of books, including the ones I've been in. Oh yeah, because they have to send you to those. Librarian we may be able to talk to? Busy arranging book and probably wouldn't even notice an atomic bomb. Hmm. The briefcases. Anything in them? 
Should we start with some kind of weapon? Don't swap out the Necronomicon. Yeah, I want to swap it out. Lying on black fabric inside the briefcase is a honed sharp scythe that radiates coldness. Death is out there in some book without a scythe? I bet. What in the other one? Small box inside the briefcase, surrounded by a flickering blue aura. What is it? You poke it uncertainly with one finger. The blue field instantly surrounds your hands, making it tingle. Some kind of energy shield. It might help in a fight. Let's do that. Okay, so no more Necronomicon. They would all be interesting to try out. Ooh, maybe we can fly over with the broom. Don't go too close. What's the noise over there? Is there a problem? Use the wand. You take the wand out of your pocket and point it at the closest walker. Ovis Ares! Beam of blue energy bursts out of the wand and hits the walker in the chest. In the next instant, the sheep is standing where he just was! Oh, scientific name for domestic sheep! I thought it was a spell! The other walkers have already dropped into a fighting stance, ready to attack. You point the wand at the closest enemy, but nothing happens. A large crack is now running through the crystal. Oh. So only one spell. Only the spell that was trapped in it. Uh, that was the paradox. Cornelius' paradox, right? The other walkers simultaneously drop into fighting stances. The E-shield. What does it do? Oh, I have no ink. Well, they can't drain ink right now. Two damage shield for one turn, heal on use. Yeah, let's start with that. Hmm, my stun. Don't know how long. Oh, two more turns, maybe? Okay, he's idle for now. Let's drain him. Oof. At least I have three bread. Oh, he has a strong hit coming up. Me. Oh, I don't need to heal though. Oh, five damage shield. Persistent. Nice. Cool. Okay, so my stun is back. gonna heal. Ah, oh, and I can't stun right now. Mm -hmm. Let's hurt him. Although I should focus on one guy, right? Oh, he healed him! Oh god, that hurts. Dirty ink. Heal I use. One turn. can't stun right now. I can slash. Yeah, I should... I should just really try and get one of them down first. Damn, that was a, qu a big drain. Who are you gonna heal? Ah, the one dude I was trying to get rid of. He's gonna heal again. a big hit. Damn it! Oh, I missed. Nice. Uh, I'm gonna try and finish one of them off. Now there's no heal, so I can do it. I think? Oh, god. I can take three damage. That's not... I don't have enough. I need to shield. Kill him. Okay. Haha. -ha. No ink to, to drain. Okay, we're doing pretty good. Should drain. Who are you gonna heal? Whoever's lowest. Okay, strong hit incoming. 
could stun. And then drain. Okay, we're getting there. This is a tough fight. Strong hit. I can take it. Oh, it's a hit and a strong hit, though. I can't take that. It's too much. There we go. It's gonna heal again. Shit. He's just gonna keep healing. Slash him. Damn it. Okay, now he has one health. And he's gonna hit, so he's not gonna heal. And he missed! Oh. oh. I can't stun. I don't have enough. But let's kill him. We can take the hit. Okay. This heals as well. Let's heal. Okay, strong hit incoming. Now we're full health again. Good. And kill him! Boom. Nice. Okay. Awesome. Came out on top. Used all my healing items though. But... Whoa! Look at all those cables! That's so badass! Is this the boss? All right, I give up. Just don't hit me, he smirks. Take off my goddamn shackles. There's a slight problem with that. My shackles expert took, them, took the day off today. His daughter is sick. He's lying. I know. <laughs> How about I call you when he's available? It'll only be a few days. You hit him. Do you think I'm an idiot? Well, if you really want to know. <laughs> you promised me you'd take them off, so hold up your end of the deal. But you didn't hold up your end. I'll hold it up right now, he squeezes throat. Calm down, you idiot. No one except the writer's police can take them off. Do you really think my own men would be walking around in shackles if I could take them off? I would build a literal empire stealing objects if I could do that, not the stinking warehouse. Wait, I thought you had proof that he could do it. A friend told me about him, but Vince told me about you. And then I found out he was one of your thugs. Was that all part of your plan? Well, this thing that that's happening now wasn't. You're gonna take off my shackles. I don't know how, but that's your problem now. Or what? Are you gonna kill me, a character? But you've turned into such a nice guy now, haven't you? You squeeze his throat with all your strength and look him in the eye. Let's find out right now just how much of a nice guy I am. That doesn't quite inspire fear, to be honest. Let's finish this up quickly. I have things to do. Some important people will be here soon, and I'll be offloading a huge lot today. You turn around and see a stack of containers through the open door. Yes, that's right. Did you think I was just sitting here twiddling my thumbs? I'm about to close the deal of the century. Are those containers full of stolen items? Fit to burst. I can only imagine what'll happen when it floods the market. He glances briefly at the monitor, where you can see henchmen running in your direction. You're right, it certainly is time for us to finish up here. Grab him by the essence. Ooh. You push your hand deeper in, trying to touch not the collector's neck, but the very essence inside him. You feel a scrap of old paper. Your fingers run across the text written there in old ink many, many years ago. Start pulling. I can call the shackles expert, let's say tomorrow, okay? That's the only time frame I can give you. We'll get your shackles off and you'll be set. You can write as much as you want. His henchmen are almost here. I'm not letting that happen to me again. You grab his paper with both hands and start pulling it towards you. What are you thinking, Etienne? Don't worry, I've done this before. Oh no. You see the client slowly separating from the book's environment, becoming something foreign. Aren't his henchmen gonna come for us? They don't have a direct route to the book. Besides, they won't like what's waiting for them here. Oh, there? You keep pulling the paper, it gets more and more difficult to pull. What's going on? Now is not the time to give up. I'm not giving up, this is as hard as I can pull. They're right outside already. 
Now we add another force. You bend your knees, ready to jump upward. You push off the ground. You hear an unbelievably loud crunching sound, so loud that it feels like the whole world must be able to hear it. With a ringing sound, the paper in your hand separates itself from the book and flies upward with you. We took him out. Whoa. Whoa, okay, so we pulled him out of the book into another book. I think I twisted my knee again. What on earth was that? Where the hell am I? What have you done? You'll find out soon enough. The collector suddenly jumps up and aims a gun at you. It's an antique decorated with a swirling pattern. Take me back. Calm down, just calm down. Etienne? Hand over my, the book. Now, where's my book? I'm afraid nothing would come of it. Hey, don't joke around with him. That thing I just did, they'll hear it. The police? Riders police, nobody move! <laughs> hey you, drop the gun! Not another step or I shoot him. Boss, that's... That's Leroy Russian. The collector? What the hell is going on here? Etienne, how are you mixed up in this? Oh, hello, officer. Hold on, how did you recognize me? You came in for questioning in that same coat. Ah, I disguised my face, but I forgot to put on a different coat. I'm warning you, I won't surrender alive. He aims the gun at the police, then back at you. And hold back your little pet rider there. I see him. Smirking. He puts his hands up and looks at the officer, waiting for a signal. We'll come to an agreement and everyone, everything will be just fine. Where's my book? I don't think we'll be coming to an agreement with you. Thief? Quiet. No, we're going to make a deal and I'm gonna walk away. You're accused of stealing thousands of objects and now that you're in our hands, you're not going anywhere. That's enough. Suddenly turning to you, this is all- oh, suddenly turning to you. This is all because of you, you bastard! The sound of a shot rings out. Etienne! You close your eyes. Did it hit the lamp? Damn it! You open your eyes and look down. The metal of Roderick's cage protected you from the bullet. There's not much left of it now. You see a small, ragged scrap of paper inside. Derek, you moron! I told you to stop talking. Sorry, boss. Are you alright, Walker? Now it's your turn. Hands up. You look at the remains of the paper in your hand. Don't make us use force. Cool it. He's just in shock. Etienne, it's best if you came with us now. We'll talk about all of this at the station, okay? What's that in his hand? It's a character, and not one from his book. Etienne, are you out of your mind? You're carrying around a stolen character, even your new current situation? I can't take an isolated character. Call for a backup. You shove the officer. His head slams into Derek, who staggers backwards, eyes shut. Whoa! Whoa! Oh! Get him! <gasps> Holy shit. <laughs> what happens now? I'm still shack shackled, aren't I? Leroy Roshan, also known as the Collector, was detained by the writer's police. He was later sentenced to execution by... Ah, I didn't read it! Tyre Neckers, who was served by civil rights from books, were also detained, and those criminals received sentences ranging from 5 to 15 years. Etienne Quist was detained five minutes after his escape. The unknown stolen character was not found on him. <gasps> so he, bought, he brought Roderick to a safe place. 28 years later! Hmm. Well... I think this is the house, so you did your full sentence. You run a hand over your face. <gasps> That's what I look like! Alright, I'm ready. Empty carriage. Is it Sherlock Holmes? Is this where you wrote him? Did you write him a home? <gasps> Man. <laughs> okay. Let's talk to him. Sir? Watson? 
How can I help you? My name is Etienne. You probably don't remember me. We worked together a long time ago. I can't seem to recall that. Are you sure you're in the right place? I'm sure. I'd even say we were partners. I don't... I just wanted to see how you were feeling. Uh, I do believe I'm quite alright. Should I be worried about something? Do you remember your name? Of course. And where you live? Baker Street. <gasps> That's good then! I had to make a few changes because of your injuries. Injuries, sir? Although it seems everything worked out. <gasps> Sorry to keep you waiting. I'm back. Watson? He nods to the man by the window. Holmes. And you, sir. He looks questioningly at you. I'm on my way out. Someone you know, Watson? I'm not sure. Are you quite certain you're alright, sir? Yes, my apologies again for disturbing you. Oh my god, so we had Watson with us this whole time? He was a doctor, yeah. Time to head back. I'm glad you're doing well, friend. Wow. Oh, you found... <gasps> you found the book that it was missing from? You saved the scrap of paper and you put them back in the book. Oh my god, that's amazing. I had to revisit so many books before I found the right one. Wow. The whole place is boarded up. Congratulations on your return to the ranks of the writing profession. Morak Publishing Agency has confirmed that your 28-year sentence has been fully served. You may visit the Central Writers Police Department to have your shackles removed. Please find a sheet attached with detailed information on how sentence time served was ca calculated. The final calculations of time served are below. 30 years, assistant in capturing a particularly dangerous criminal, minus three years, fleeing from police officers, plus two, willfully turning self into police, minus one. <laughs> so you still did 28 years. Ooh. What's this? Are you gonna write again? Happily ever after. Complete the epilogue. The. Ah, <laughs> uh, yay! That was awesome! That was so good! I really, really enjoyed that. Ugh, that was so fun. All the little stories were so good too. Like, I would have liked a whole game of each of those stories. It was so fun. And so cool how they like took classic elements from like stories that we all know, but like put it in a whole new setting. So cool. Like the style of it as well, going from like 3D, the apartment, to like the top down for the books. Cause that's kind of how it is as well. When you're reading a book, you're kind of like the observer, right? You're not, at least how, unless it's, no, even when the book is written in the the first person perspective, I still picture everything as an observer. So for me, it really worked well. When I got the sponsor deal for the first video as well, um, this is one of the nicest ones I've done. Normally, people are like, um, she has to say this, she has to do this, you know, like all the standard stuff, and it's totally fine. Like, I'm, I don't mind it. But for this one, they were just like, the creator was like, I just wanted to enjoy the game. <laughs> just play it, have fun. That was the only thing they said. <laughs> Hope you like it. It was so nice. And I really enjoyed it. I'm glad I got to finish it and see how it all came together. Really, really well done game. It kind of gave me vibes of, um, it kind of reminded me of Disco Elysium. I haven't played it myself, but I've seen Sean play it little bits at a time. And the top down kind of reminded me of that. That seems like a great game as well, but it's not really good playthrough material because it's fully voice acted. So I feel like I would be barely saying anything. I wouldn't get a word in if I played that, but uh, it does seem like a great game. This was awesome. I enjoyed it so much for like this. It's just a little indie game full of flavor it was awesome. I hope you guys enjoyed that too. I was so glad I finally finished it. Thanks so much for watching and leave a like if you enjoyed it.